So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto half fox op x fem haku. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Naruto frowned slightly as he stood in the blonde Hokage's office. When he received word he was getting a solo mission that was possibly air rank. Well hell Naruto was ready to throw a party. Never want to turn down a mission unless it was D rank, Naruto hauled ass out of his apartment, fell down twice because he was still putting his orange pants on, then became a blur of speed as he zipped to the Hokage's tower. But now that he was here, he was not so sure he wanted to go as he looked at Tsunade over the folder he was reading. You're joking right? This is a joke. Tsunade frowned at him as she began tapping the fingers of her left hand on the desk. Naruto looked back in the folder and picked up the lone sheet of paper and looked at both sides of it before peeking around it at the Hokage. Is it possible this is a joke? He said with a hint of hope in his voice. Tsunade only scowled at him now. Her fingers beating a much more rapid tattoo on the desk. Naruto looked at the paper again and read the contents for the third time before looking up at Tsunade, who was now wearing a pattern in the desk shaped like her fingertips. She was drumming the desk so hard. In a higher-pitched squeaky voice Naruto looked at his surrogate sister and stuttered. Could it be a joke? Tsunade leaned forward across her desk, eyes smoldering as her fingers stopped their repetition. Would you like me to show you the joke Naruchan? Her voice while well, fairly even held the hint of immense pain and discomfort in store for his immediate future. In the same squeaky voice Naruto whispered. When do I leave? Tsunade sat back and nodded her head in a satisfied manner. Understand Naruto. This isn't a standard mission, and if there is a threat to the city, you are not to engage. Naruto nodded his head glumly as he looked over the paper again, trying to commit the boring assignment to memory. At least he would be in wave. It could be much worse. Bachin. Not arguing with you. But why would you send me on a mission like this? Wouldn't Kibar Niji be more suited for a scouting mission? Tsunade ran a hand through her hair before she nodded. You're right. But I thought of you because they may need a heavy header on hand until reinforcements arrive. Naruto felt his chest puff in pride as she continued. They needed my best. And Naruto burst into a grin that would rival a kid in a candy store. They need a ninja among ninja. Tsunade said as her voice hit a peak as Naruto stood from his chair, a proud faraway look in his eyes. But you were all I had available so off you go. She said with a grin as Naruto fell back in the chair deflating like a popped balloon. Bachin. He shouted in indignation, but she shook him off with a grin on her face. I'm just teasing Naruto. Truth is I do have confidence in you, but I have no scouts available for this mission. Now this could be nothing. But homes on the outskirts of Wave have been getting raided. But it looks like the only things that have been taken are minor things. Naruto frowned as he blinked at her. A petty thief. Tsunade shrugged before she crossed her legs. So it seems. But whoever is doing it is only stealing baubles, knickknacks, food. Money or valuables have not been found missing. Naruto grumped as he closed the folder and sat it back on her desk. So we're dealing with a stupid petty thief. Tsunade frowned, then shrugged her shoulders. That is what you are going to find out. The problem before you ask is the local militia can't seem to catch the culprit. Whoever it is enters without disturbing anything, then departs the same way. The only hint they got at all was a piece of torn and tattered cloth. Tsunade reached into her desk and pulled out a plastic bag, and Naruto looked at the material inside as she handed it to him. Whoever it was, it was very dirty. The cloth looked like it had been drugged through the dirt. It appeared to be a tan color. But Naruto couldn't tell because of all the dirt. With a shrug he tossed it on the desk on top of the folder. Okay. I'll go talk to the old man and see if he has any leads. Is there any time limit on this or is it until it's solved? Tsunade frowned as she thought about it, then shrugged. I'm assuming they would like it finished as soon as possible, but I want daily updates on your progress and your discoveries. Leave as soon as possible, no later than tomorrow first light. Naruto nodded as he hopped up out of the chair but stopped at the door and looked back at Tsunade who wagged a finger at him. Don't let me down Naruto. Remember do not engage in hostels. Naruto grinned as he gave her a cocky salute as he walked out of the office. Don't worry Tsunade Bachin. I've got it all under control. He said just before stepping in the Wastebiscuit and tripping himself, knocked Shizun over as she was about to walk into her mentor's office. Scattering papers everywhere. Tsunade just put her head in her hand and grumbled. That's what I'm afraid of. Naruto jogged down to the shopping district, a grin on his face, despite the mission parameters he was going to be forced to follow. But at least it was a higher rank than C. Truthfully, Naruto had gotten spoiled. 
after learning his parentage, moving into the Namika's estate, and doing mostly A and B rank missions, going back to C or Shudder's D rank would be like a punishment. There had been so many changes in his life in such a short period. Turning 16, being recognized by the village as a strong ninja, and the last surviving heir of the Namikas, as well as the Uzumaki clans, even the Kaiubi settling down and talking to him like he was human. Good but weird changes. Unfortunately, there was also pain that he tried not to think about. Loss of comrades, Asuma, Lee, Shino, but the one that hurt the most, was Hinata. Telling him she loved him, almost destroyed him when he finally beat pain. And he held her in his arms, pouring all of his sorrow into her still form. Hoping and wishing that there was still a spark of life in her. To no avail. At the time, no one could get near them. Naruto in his grief had gone completely feral, and anyone that came near them had a choice, die by Naruto's hands, or leave them the hell alone. He remained there holding her for 18 hours, and not even that could get close enough to him, until the most unlikely person was the one that broke through to the grieving boy. The Ashi Hayuga actually stood next to Naruto, talking to him in a quiet but insistent voice, and eventually rested his hand on Naruto's shoulder. After a few minutes of everyone just staring in surprise, Naruto nodded, and with tears still in his eyes, stood and carried Hinata's broken body towards the remainder of the Hayuga estates, Hiyashi leading him with a hand still on his shoulder. Both men, with heads down as the weight of the world settled across their shoulders. Kanoha was rebuilt. Was actually still being rebuilt, and life moved on as if none of it ever happened. But Naruto remembered, he would always remember. I hate to break up this little stroll down memory lane, but weren't you going to buy something from that shop we just passed? Naruto blinked at the fox's interruption, then looked back and nodded. Yeah. Naruto didn't say much else, he and the fox had an understanding of sorts. That all happened after the fox had to change certain aspects inside of Naruto. If he hadn't, Naruto's body would have burned up. Literally when he went eight tails against pain. Thus far. Nothing had changed other than his ability to use a massive amount of the fox's chakra. Well his strength, dexterity, and chakra reserve shot up too. But he was worried about more obvious physical changes. While he was more in sync with the majority of the village, there was still the occasional holdout that refused to let go of the past. He didn't need another reason for the idiots to hate him. Fortunately, the fox told him nothing like that would happen until a certain set of stimulus was present. When asked, the fox merely shrugged. Since the chances of it happening are slim and none, I wouldn't worry about it. After a few more attempts at that information failed to produce results, Naruto filed it in the back of his mind as unimportant and left it at that. Standing in the weapon shop now, Naruto grinned as he saw Tenten behind the counter. Hey Ten. Got the goods. Tenten looked up and grinned at Naruto before putting a bag on the counter. Of course. Naruto grinned as he looked in the bag before dropping some bills on the counter in pleasure, but a nudge from his resident made him turn and look at the wall behind the counter. At his glance, Tenten looked too, then frowned. Naruto. Don't tell me you're into that stuff. Naruto's attention was focused on one item in particular. A leather collar, with metal studs all along the outside, ending in an overlapping piece with a metal ring in it. Naruto reached out and grabbed the collar and looked at it curiously before looking inward and having a quick conference with his prisoner. Okay. This caught your attention, why would I want it? The Kayubi chuckled softly as the red eyes glittered. It amuses me. In time I am sure you will find a use for it. And the leash. And a lock. Naruto had learned not to argue with the fox. He had helped him quite a bit in the past. Without argument, Naruto pulled the leash next to it down as well and looked at Tenten. Ahem. Do you have a lock for this? Tenten gave Naruto the fisheye before she reached under the counter and pulled out a lock that would fit the small metal ring before saying to him in a quieter voice. Um. Maybe you should get out more Naruto, being cooped up in that mansion all by yourself all of the time can't be good for you. She almost whispered. Tenten knew about all the latest things. Especially on the questionable side of life, but Naruto just didn't fit the personality type to her. But as they say, it was always the quiet ones. Although Naruto wasn't very quiet in his youth. Naruto grumbled at her as he took the items and his bag, threw some more money on the counter, and fled the store before any awkward questions could be asked. After a quick pack of clothes and necessities, Naruto got on his way to wave, wondering still why the damn fox asked him to buy a collar of all things. He didn't own a dog. He didn't even want a dog. Ayubi snickered in his mind as this thought passed him. Oh. Naruto's arrival in Wave was without fanfare. Until he got to old man Tazuna's house that is. Inari and Tsunami broke into tears and hugged Naruto until he thought they were a part of him. Tsunami kept pulling back and looking at him, while Inari kept slapping him on the back in between hugs. Naruto grinned and put up with it until it was out of their system. He hadn't seen them in quite some time and he wouldn't begrudge them and he wanted to catch up with them too. 
The day waned and eventually Tazuna came home and the greeting and excitement started again until it was time to eat. After supper, Tazuna settled down to the business of why they called for Kanoha's aid. Honestly Naruto, he began. No one has been attacked and there has been no damage to any of the houses that have been burglarized. It just seems a little odd. I wouldn't even say it a burglary if it only happened once or twice, people misplace and lose things all of the time. But 11 houses. That is just too much to be coincidence. Naruto thought for a moment before he looked up. And nothing of substantial value has been taken. Azuna shrugged as he took a sip of coffee. Nothing substantial that has been reported. It's just odd as hell. With a look of surprise, he pulled out a list and map and pointed to the areas that were marked with excess. Before I forget, here. These are the houses that have been burglarized and where they are located. The list is the items that have been taken. I didn't put on their food because that is sort of self-explanatory. Naruto smirked as he looked at the list, then laughed. Seriously? This is all junk. Naruto said with obvious incredulity in his voice. Who would want this stuff? A broken picture frame, a box of Christmas ornaments, a blue foam ball. What is someone trying to do? You know this stuff is so odd I can't even think of some crazy way to describe it. It's so nutso. Tsunami laughed from the sink where she was doing the dishes, while Tazuna chuckled. Agreed. But we would like it stopped just in case the person doing it is testing our defenses for something bigger. Naruto thought about that for a second, then nodded. You're right, that could be a possibility. After a couple of seconds Naruto got up and stretched before leaning down and pointing at the map. Well according to the houses and where they were hit, I'd say our odd thief will strike here next. And according to the pattern, I'm thinking sometime tomorrow. Azuna nodded as he leaned back in his chair. That's the way the pattern looks. Anything you need to help you? Naruto shook his head as he looked at the map one last time. No. I think I have everything I need, just keep everyone away from that house tomorrow. Azuna nodded as he folded the map and listened again. Already taken care of since we had the same conclusions. We didn't want anyone in the area in case this person or people were dangerous. Naruto nodded as he yawned before he reached up and scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Sorry. Long run here. Wore me out I guess. Azuna chuckled, then waved it off. Whatever brat. You got the same room as last time. Just make sure you are careful out there tomorrow, we would hate to lose our national hero. Then we would have to rename the bridge. Before Naruto could say anything, a soapy sponge smacked Azuna in the neck courtesy of Tsunami. Naruto laughed before he mounted the stairs as the man's daughter began to rant at her father about teasing Naruto. Like she would let him rename the bridge. Naruto grumbled slightly as he sat atop the roof of the house. He had been here since 5 am and still there was no sign of trouble or intrusion. He had expanded his senses and waited patiently, but so far other than a rabbit, there was nothing in the area that made him think twice or blink. He wondered quietly why he felt nervous. Something seemed to be making him feel jumpy and he was having a hard time remaining calm. Damn fox didn't help either. You need to get laid, boy. Once you clean your pipes once or twice. Or even better, an unwilling female, you'll be good to go I say. Naruto grumbled internally but didn't comment. There might be something to what the fox was saying though. He had never had sex. Sadly he knew more about it because of Iro Sanin's teachings. But he still hadn't had any with anyone. He just didn't have the nerve he guessed. The very thought of it, while giving him a massive heart on at times, embarrassed the bejesus out of him. One of the problems was his head had been so full of crap when he was younger, and then his earnest discussions with Yureya during his three-year hiatus only confused him more. And to be honest, Naruto had a traditionalist point of view. He thought sex was only for married people or at least people that were promised to each other. Unfortunately, Naruto was of the mind that he would never be promised to anyone, so in all likelihood he would never be married and at this rate never have sex. Of course there were other alternatives. Miro Sanin did try to hook him up with a hooker once. But all Naruto did was lay there and talk to her. She didn't care. She was paid for the hour and she made sure he got his full hour, but the only physical thing that happened was her hugging him at the end of the session. Still. Naruto wondered a few times what it would have been like. A slight pinching feeling in his right ear made him stop and look in that direction. Curbing his excitement because it might have been just another rabbit looking for food, Naruto waited patiently until he saw a bush rustle ever so slightly before it stopped again. With a frown, Naruto held very still and waited, breathing shallow as a figure stepped out of the bush. Lied looking, with straight brown hair that reached to mid-back, Naruto wondered at the gender. It looked like it could have been male or female at this point, and Naruto was still holding his position until he blinked in surprise, and the Kaiubi perked up noticeably. Naruto frowned as he took a deep breath as he saw the appendage curl behind the figure, then seemed to wag. Naruto blinked again, then used a minor enhanced vision to see the figure clearly, and froze in shock as the Kaiubi seemed to laugh in pleasure. 
The figure had triangular points on the top of its head that seemed to swivel back and forth as it crept forward. But the appendage behind it was the most obvious as it would curl then wag as the figure got closer to the house. It was a tail. Naruto turned inward the most obvious question on his mind, and the Kaiubi laughed again before it made its thoughts known. Most excellent. Boy, look at that figure again, then smell it using my nose. Naruto frowned, but then did as he was told. And almost fell off the roof as he was suddenly overcome with a powerful need. His nerves got even more jittery than before, and his hands curled into fists as he fought for control, just as he began to see red and got the most painful erection he ever could remember in his life. Turning inward with some difficulty Naruto screamed at his captive. What's happening to me? The Kaiubi merely laughed again as he nodded to the image of the figure below them and growled in pleasure. Your body is finally waking up. Be happy. A whole new world is about to open up for you. Oh. I suggest you not fight it. It isn't something that you can turn off now that it is awake. Naruto looked up at Kaiubi and growled back in return. What is it? The fox lord laughed as his tails waved behind him in excitement. This, my young kid is the mating drive. When you come within range of a female in heat, you will feel the quickening. Your blood will boil, your heart will pound, and your mind will turn a page without you if you do not go with it. Be warned though. She will not give it to you the first time willingly, she will fight, and you will have to subdue her. Oh how I wish I was in your place. Naruto blinked as his fangs began to elongate and his fingernails grew into claws of their own accord. But I'm not a rapist. I've never even had sex. Ayubi shook his head, but it was without pity. It doesn't matter. This is one of the changes I told you about. But I never expected it to happen because a fertile female would never be around you. Now there obviously is one. Blinking as he doubled over in what seemed like pain Naruto screamed at his captive. But I've been around women all the time. This has never happened before. The Kitsune Lord only laughed again as he began to pace in front of the door to his confinement. Wrong. You have only been around human women. Now if you had encountered another demon or a Hanyu. Then you of course would be going through this earlier. Why do you think I told you it was unlikely to happen? Naruto shuddered visibly as he was physically trying to stop himself from stepping forward. No. I can't do it, I won't. I won't rape her. Myobu growled and the words only filled Naruto with dread. You have no choice. When the time comes, a hand you must mate. If you don't, you will die. It is part of the cycle. All demons experience it. If it soothes your hurt feelings this isn't rape. You and she are Hanyu. Half demons, and this is the normal part of the mating cycle. This is demon courtship if you will. You find a suitable female that entices your senses, you challenge her, and then if you are victorious, to the victor the spoils. Now. Go. Capture her. Make her yours, you have no choice. Against his will, Naruto nodded, then sprung down off the roof at the woman below him, colliding with her bodily. With a yelp she rolled with him, then sprang to her feet in front of him as he rolled to his. The woman, because he could now clearly see the shape of her breasts, sniffed the air twice near Naruto, then bared her fangs to him, growling and snarling. If Naruto had been in a clearer state of mind he would have noted she was in a low crouch, and whenever he tried to go near her, she would turn her back away from him and back up, tail curled protectively between her legs. Naruto's nostrils flared as her scent brushed his olfactory nerves like a lover's touch, maddening him until he dove forward and grabbed her arm, but her other arm came around at an incredible speed and clubbed him on his head. Where the hand had touched, frost formed on the side of his head, but he shook off the blow and pulled her against him. Her teeth found his shoulder and sunk in deeply, causing him to howl in pain before he picked her up off the ground, then slammed her face first into the earth, stunning her. Naruto catching sight of her prone form was overcome with lust as she worked her way shakily to her knees. Huffing at her vulnerable position and seeing what his whole body screamed for, Naruto grabbed her hips and thrust forward, but with his pants on he got absolutely nowhere. The female, not out of the fight yet, kicked back and upward, catching Naruto in the family jewels, bringing on another howl of pain from him as she scrambled away from his now prone form back into the underbrush. Ayubi grumbled, then screamed at him. Baka. Don't just crouch there holding your balls. Your vixen is getting away. Tally ho. Growling in the back of his throat, Naruto took off after her, hot on her heels until she dove down into a hole. With no hesitation Naruto tumbled in after her and grabbed her leg, making her stumble and roll down into the hole until she was again laying with her back to him. Naruto with enough presence of mind this time, tore at his pants until he was free of them, then grabbed the woman by her shoulder as she turned and leapt at him. Naruto hissed in anger as her teeth sank into his other shoulder, and now her claws also found a purchase in his flesh as they sunk into his sides, but it was for naught as Naruto pinned her to the wall and thrust into her in one smooth stroke, practically nailing her to the wall. 
her head went back, and her mouth opened in a piercing scream as they now held each other in a grip that would kill ordinary folk, but in seconds, her demeanor changed. Her eyes dropped to his, and she seemed to grin as her legs wrapped around his torso, pulling him deeper into her as he grunted in pleasure. Soon, a rhythm was established as they both grunted and groaned in beast-like pleasure, neither giving the other a second of respite as the fight turned into something different. Naruto felt his mind coming slowly down from the bloodlust he was feeling, and the woman in front of him latched her teeth onto his throat, but did not pierce the skin as she tongued and sucked on his exposed flesh, now purring in deep pleasure before she started yelping at each thrust. Naruto grasped her hips and began to drive her down as he thrust up, and soon she howled in ecstasy, and Naruto could feel the orgasm rippling through her until his own climax triggered in him, leaving them both breathless and mostly spent from something it seemed neither understood. Naruto slowly collapsed to the ground with the woman on top of him, who purred happily, her tail every now and then flicking into the air for absolutely no reason, before settling against his leg again. Feeling a light scratchy feeling against his neck, Naruto moved his eyes downward and could see the female now lying content against him, licking along his jawline. As if sensing him looking at her, she opened her eyes and smiled at him, with a purr coming from her throat. It took a couple of seconds, but he suddenly sat up, taking her shoulders in his hands and looked closely at her. She blinked in surprise at first, ears flicking back against her head, but stayed still as he stared at her intently. Naruto, a deep frown of shock and surprise, could barely hear his voice as he whispered to her. Haku. The woman merely smiled at him again before she buried her head in his chest, nuzzling with obvious affection, arms going around him as she in turn whispered, Master. Before he could say anything else, she purred again with a content sigh. Naruto was unsure how long he lay there holding her, but after some time, he looked around and saw what looked like Christmas ornaments, food and against the wall, was the missing broken picture frame. And a savage blue foam ball. Naruto didn't know what to make of it, but he was sure of one thing, if this was indeed Haku. She had changed. It wasn't the same girl he met all those years ago. Looking down at her now, he could see the clothing matched a piece they received with the mission brief, and it looked like it was the same clothes they had buried her in. But how was it possible that she was alive? And living here in this warren? Naruto tried to get up, but he was still inside of her, and she refused to let go. He tried to gently push her aside, but she had a death grip on his chest and whined when he tried to push her off. Grumbling to himself he stood up with the help of the wall and looked more around the cave. From the piles of trash and small animal bones, she had been here for some time. He wasn't sure what to make of it, but she definitely looked like Haku. And her voice sounded like Haku's despite the purring. After a few seconds though, Naruto began to feel dizzy. Shaking his head as he leaned back against a wall again, Naruto began to feel the fire building inside of him, and his manhood stiffened. Quickly turning inward Naruto began to get frantic. What? Again? How am I supposed to sleep if this keeps happening? A snickered. Well that is a problem. She is still in heat, and your body can sense it. Your drive will keep kicking in until you have sated her body's need to mate. Naruto frowned deeply as she began to move against him, light moans coming from her parted lips. How long will that take? The fox lord seemed to take on the look of someone in deep thought or severe constipation. Usually, a demon's heat will only last a few days if she does not get sated. Since we don't know how long she has been in heat, I can't really say. As I see it, you have three choices. Knock her up, tie her up, or ride the storm until it passes. Naruto began thinking and wondered if he could reach his ninja pouch to grab the capture wire. Sadly the damn fox had other ideas. I wouldn't choose the tie her up option. Remember you have to sate your desires also or you will go into bloodlust. Although we should probably call this pussy lust. Either way, if you try to ignore the mating drive, it won't be good for you. Unless you like the idea of banging every woman that gets near you until you can satisfy an urge that only one person could satisfy and you left her tied up somewhere. Naruto growled as he began to match Haku's rhythm and the sounds of passion filled the warren once more. So what you're saying is even though we have already done it, we have to keep doing it until she's happy. They laughed before he smirked down at Naruto. Exactly. His face contorted in fear for a second as he considered his options. I can't get her pregnant. I I don't think I'm ready to be a father. The fox grinned at him. He really seemed to be enjoying Naruto's predicament. Fool. I told you previously you can control your sperm production and wipe the living ones in your body out with a thought. At least that way you can enjoy her body until her heart passes. Naruto's eyes crossed briefly when he felt Haku tighten up around him before he performed the trick he had taught him months ago. Feeling the red rush of the fox's chakra going through his body, Naruto hoped it worked as he grumbled inside himself, but on the outside began panting as he thrust harder and harder into Haku, who had started yelping in pleasure once more. Naruto watched her face in the throes of passion while Haku pounded her hips against him. Next you'll tell me I have to take out the trash and cut the lawn. 
The fox snickered at Naruto. Well now that you mention it. Shut up. Naruto screamed internally as he prepared to ride out the storm. Naruto woke up with a splitting headache. And his ass hurt. He wasn't sure what that meant. Maybe he fell on his tailbone at some point. Naruto reached back to scratch his butt and at the same time his other hand went up to rub his head. And screamed like a woman as soon as he touched them. His hand kept patting his head where he kept touching something that kept twitching. And something was stuck in his pants and under his jacket as well. Naruto undid the remainder of his pants and reached back to discover the one thing he hadn't thought of. He now had a tail. And his ears felt funny to him. Like they were numb. Naruto reached to the sides of his head and felt for his ears. And they were still there, but it was like they weren't working. His hearing was more enhanced it seems, but he was sure it was due to the new ears atop his head. Without thinking about it, Naruto's tail waved behind him a few times, and with some effort he was able to figure out how to swivel in different directions. It took a bit, but he realized his feet felt uncomfortable in the sandals. Bending down and smacking himself in the face with his tail a few times, Naruto took off his sandals and blinked at his feet. They looked strange to say the least. They looked more slender in the middle, and when he pulled the bottom of one of them to his face, he noticed thick dark pads on his heel and the ball of his foot as well as his toes. Surprisingly he also had thick but very soft hair on his calves, parts of his arms, and of course the hair on his head felt different. In the low light he looked at it and was happy that it was all still blonde, he was just hairier than he was. Or in this case furrier. Surprisingly, Naruto remained calm and turned inward to his unwilling companion. Okay. I think it's time you explain all of this. The fox jumped at him before opening his eyes and staring at him. What's to explain? You're a go fuck your mate, raise kits and enjoy. The fox tried to close its eyes, but Naruto reached through the bars and grabbed one of the great lids and held it up. Oh no. I don't think it's so fluffy. You start explaining right now, or are you no better than the villagers who left me uneducated most of my young life? Naruto just barely pulled his arm back out of the bars as the fox lord's mouth snapped at him. Don't presume to call me something so insulting again. I have been one of the only sources of help that you have had. Naruto chuckled, then shrugged. Then be a little more helpful. You did this to me, you can at least explain it to me. And tell me how Haku is still alive. My Obu huffed at him before grumping and turning his eyes in Naruto's direction again. Very well. All that I have told you already is true and mostly complete. You have already gotten all the benefits of being a Hanyu you just hadn't gotten the looks. Since there was no suitable female near for you, it was likely that you never would have developed the traits. As far as your mate goes. That I cannot explain. It is possible that when you buried her, you unwittingly poured enough of my chakra into her that it started a slow regenerative process. It's also likely Kami farted in your mouth while you slept and the magic puff fairies kicked their feet, shook their boobs and made it happen. Who cares? Naruto almost laughed at the last part, but Haku scrambling back into the burrow made him stop. Under her arm, she had what looked like a rabbit. With a smile she dropped it at Naruto's feet before she prostrated herself to him, forehead to the floor, and quietly acknowledged him. Master. She purred out, her tail wagging back and forth in what Naruto assumed was happiness. Naruto, not sure what to do, dropped down in front of her and raised her up by her shoulders to look at her face. Her eyes were big as she looked at him wondering what he would do, and Naruto had so many questions for her. Haku. Where have you been? What happened to you? Haku's head cocked at him before she smiled. Master. Naruto blinked before trying again. Um. Do you understand me? Haku frowned for a second before she smiled again. Master. Now Naruto looked inward. What's the deal? She acts like she can't say anything else. Ayobu frowned as he considered it. Touch your forehead to hers. He commanded softly. Naruto shrugged, then leaned forward, making contact with her head. Naruto felt the red chakra slip from him as Haku began to purr, and a few seconds later the grunted. It appears she is a clean slate. Naruto blinked. Pardon me? Ayobu frowned before he sat up. There is nothing there. I am surprised she was able to call you master. Perhaps it was instinctual. In any case, there are no memories there. Her mind is empty. She seems to be acting basically on instinct. It's a good thing no one has discovered her burrow or they might have found themselves in a world of trouble. Naruto leaned back and looked at Haku who studied him curiously as he spoke to his captive. So you're saying? Oh come on. You aren't that stupid. She is the perfect submissive. She will already be unquestioningly loyal to you, but you can virtually make her into anything. You can restore her by teaching her, but the girl you knew as Haku is gone. Naruto frowned down at her, causing her to shrink back, ears laying flat against her head, but when he reached over and rubbed her head behind her ears, she began to purr again and relaxed with her eyes closed. Naruto thought for a few minutes about the situation. Haku was gone. But she was here. At least physically. 
Naruto wondered what life would have been like if Haku hadn't died. For a few seconds his mind began to spin a daydream for him. Him and Haku eating at Ichiraku together, training together, maybe even falling in love and getting married. After a few seconds a small smile came to his face as he looked down at her again. What the hell? He said quietly before he knelt in front of Haku. She watched him curiously until he touched her chest between her breasts with his index finger. Haku. He said firmly. Haku looked at him strangely for a minute or so until he did it again. Haku. Not sure what he wanted, she touched her chest and repeated the word. Haku. Her dulcet voice whispered. Naruto nodded happily until she picked up the rabbit and held it to him. Haku. Shaking his head he took the rabbit and put it on the floor again. No. He again touched her and said it. Haku. Before he touched his chest and smiled at her. Naruto. She frowned as she looked at him before shaking her head. Naruto tried it again until he got the same result from her. With a grump he thumped himself on the chest. Naruto. He said a little more forcefully than he intended. Haku's eyes began to look moist and he wondered what was wrong until she touched his chest and whispered. Master. Naruto frowned but before he could say anything the fox butted in. This is the bonding process. If she calls you master, there is a reason. Naruto frowned at the fox in frustration. But I'm not a master. The fox shook his head before he growled at Naruto. Yes you are. She is bound to you as your mate. She acknowledges you as her alpha. The master, since she is the first, she is your alpha. If you take another female she will be the beta female in your life, in all intents and purposes just like this one, but submissive to the alpha female as well. Accept reality as it is. Unless you really want to watch her die again because you rejected her. Naruto frowned as he looked at Haku again and he could see she was trembling now and the tears were actually rolling out of her eyes and down her face. Wait. Why would she die? The fox lord sighed as he leaned closer to Naruto. You are dense aren't you? She is bound to you and my obu mate for life. You are not a my obu. But you are a hanyu and it relates the same. Granted, since you are I dare say you could dump her, but then she would pine for you, not eating or drinking, not caring about anything until you returned for her or she died. When you die, she will also. It is the way of things. So choose. Accept her, or know that you could have had someone precious to you come back for a second chance, and you let her die. Or simply put, you killed her. Naruto frowned inward, but soon stared at Haku again who was openly weeping now. The one thing that Naruto had trouble with was tears. Especially someone he cared about. Reaching down, Naruto took her hand and put it on his chest, again surprising her before he smiled at her. Master. He said quietly. Haku's sad face broke into a grin as her hand pressed against his chest harder. Master. She said with a hopeful expression, and Naruto could only smile goofily at her and nod. Yes, Haku. Master. At which point she yipped happily and tackled him. Naruto wasn't sure what would happen now as she licked his neck and he could feel himself rising to the occasion again, but he knew at least he wouldn't have to deal with it by himself. Chapter 2. Naruto wondered how he got himself into these messes as he finally seemed to break Haku's heat. But even without her being in heat. She always seemed to be in the mood to do the deed. Naruto found this out the hard way when they were going to eat. He had made a fire which she found fascinating to look at but wouldn't go near, so Naruto figured he would introduce her to cooked food. Well Naruto started going around without pants on since they were completely ruined now anyway and what happened surprised as well as shocked him. Haku had crawled over to him in a sexy way. Which he recognized it for what it was now but didn't at the time and grabbed him. Now normally. This would probably not be a bad thing, but he was trying to cook and he tried to focus on that, but when he felt her scratchy tongue treating him like a growing ice pop, all bets were off. Naruto had never received oral pleasure before, or any other kind of pleasure for that matter, unless you count Sakura beating his head in regularly, so try as he might, he just couldn't resist. In all honesty, what guy would? That damn him, had gone to sleep and refused to wake up, so Naruto was almost literally on his own. He did his best, but he wasn't sure what he was doing wrong as he ran into another new mate problem. Not sure of how much time had passed, Naruto crawled out of the burrow and blinked at the sun. He had been down there so long, his eyes needed to adjust to the light again. Looking around, he realized Haku was still in the burrow. Naruto called her a few times and waited. When she didn't come out, he made a face then climbed back down into the burrow to find her shivering and crying. Naruto, in shock, knelt down and hugged her. What's wrong Haku? She looked into his eyes and touched his chest. Master. Naruto nodded and smiled at her in concern. Yes, master. Haku smiled a little before she looked at the opening leading out of the burrow. Naruto moved to the exit, but her whine made him look at her. Her face was full of sorrow and he went back over to her and placed his hands on her shoulders. Haku. What's wrong? From inside his head, Naruto heard a voice grumble at him. Call her stupid. 
Naruto blinked in surprise before he looked inward. What? What are you talking about? The fox yawned, showing all of his teeth before he closed his mouth with a click. I said collar her. She won't leave the burrow without some symbol of your dominance over her. Naruto frowned before he shook his head at the fox. Aw oh, that's tiger shit. She's been bringing food back for us every day. However long it's been. He said as he scratched his head in confusion. The fox growled at him before Naruto could speak again. Yes she has, but that was different. She was doing her duty and bringing nourishment for you and her. Now you have to provide. Reassurance if you will that you are not abandoning her. She can probably sense your intention to leave, and since this has been her home she needs to feel secure. Lock the collar around her neck, and if she still resists use the leash. Once you have her in your permanent home, she will mark it and then go about her normal routine, and this will not happen again. Naruto frowned at this, and to be honest he didn't understand the whole, marking a thing. But if putting the collar on her would make her come along he was all for it. Looking for his tattered pants, Naruto pulled out one of the storage scrolls he brought with him and invoked it. When it had disgorged its contents, Naruto looked through the pile until he found the collar and lock. Turning to her, he was surprised to see a look of anticipation in her eyes. Feeling like some kind of pervert, Naruto wrapped the collar around her throat and was surprised how well it fit her before he locked the collar in place. Haku moved her head around and twisted her neck a few times before she settled down with a smile on her face. Sighing in relief, Naruto dug out the leash and put it in the pocket of the remains of his jacket in case he needed it and put on the spare set of pants he brought with him. Immediately he noticed the pants seemed to make him feel uncomfortable, but he shrugged it off for the time being. Aku squinted her eyes at him in curiosity as he did this but made no move to stop him. She of course was almost completely naked except for the tattered battle kimono they buried her in originally. Packing the scroll again, Naruto crawled up and out the entrance. This time however, when he called Haku, she came scrambling up from the burrow and crouched next to him. Naruto couldn't help but smirk down at her before he turned and began walking back to where Tezuma lived, Haku close to him, not leaving his side. Oh. When Naruto arrived, he took a deep breath and sighed. It would be nice to use the toilet again. And a good hot bath. When he stepped out in the open however, Haku would not. Naruto called to her, but she stayed crouched there in the bushes. Feeling frustrated, Naruto walked over and hooked the leash to the collar and gave it a little tug. She looked up at him and he smiled gently at her and tugged the leash again. With only a slight hesitation she came cautiously forward out of the bushes following Naruto until they stood at the door to the house. With a deep breath and a feeling of dread, he knocked on the door. After a few seconds, the door opened and Inari gaped at Naruto and the mostly naked Haku. Wah. Wow. Naruto. Who? Mom. The boy yelled, causing Naruto and Haku both to wince, ears folding back on their heads. It took a little longer, but Tsunami came to the door to see what Inari was frantic about and stopped dead in her tracks too. Naruto chuckled for a second, then rubbed the back of his head as his ears twitched towards her. Um. Have I got a story for you? Tsunami shook her head, then opened the door wider for them to come in. I'm all ears. She said before she thought, only Naruto. Tsunami frowned as she sipped her tea, but kept her eyes on Naruto and Haku who crouched next to him. Haku's ears kept flicking back to the conversation between Tsunami and Naruto, but her eyes were everywhere else. So she's like. A wild animal then. Naruto winced at the comparison but nodded. Yeah. The thing is I can't leave her, she would die without me, and to be honest, I'm starting to grow attached to her. Tsunami blinked then smiled slyly at him which made him blush. Uh huh. So it wouldn't be because of some extracurricular activity would it? Naruto frowned at the word then Tsunami laughed before she sipped from her cup again. Never mind Naruto-kun. Well. At least you were able to solve the mystery. So you'll be taking her back to Konoha then? Naruto sighed as he considered his options then nodded. Yeah. I'm sure I'll really hear it from Bachin when I get it. And Naruto went as pale as paper as his mouth opened and closed a few times. Tsunami, not sure what was wrong, stood up and went over to him. Naruto. Naruto began to stammer and then Tsunami understood as he said one sentence. Bachin is gonna kill me. Looking at her quickly he almost shouted, how long have I been gone? Tsunami blinked in surprise. Four days. Why? Naruto began to sweat bullets as he ran over to a drawer and pulled out paper and pen and began scribbling at a mad pace. Running outside he bit his thumb and screamed out, summoning Jutsu. Then a puff of smoke Gamakichi appeared. Naruto, you look frantic. What's up? Naruto handed him the paper. Take this to Tsunati Bachin as fast as you can please. Amakichi, seeing how desperate Naruto looked, didn't even argue or ask for a reward. He puffed into smoke and Naruto collapsed to his knees. Maybe she'll only just maim me now. Tsunami's scream made him jump before he turned and ran back into the house, claws bared. What? Where is it? What is it? 
Tsunami pointed to the corner of the room where a steaming pile of human excrement now rested. Naruto blinked, then looked at Haku who just stared back at him with a smile. Master. Naruto frowned as Tsunami handed him a roll of paper towels before he mumbled, obviously not housebroken. With a sigh, he went and began to clean the mess. Could it get worse? He asked himself. He should have known better. It didn't take Gamakichi long to return with a response and the bad news. Tsunade had sent a genin squad and their sensei to see why he hadn't reported. They would be there in two days, and when he got back she wanted a full explanation. Naruto whined as he read the note and worried over who would be showing up. After promising to get Gamakichi a bag of candy, Naruto asked if he could use the shower. Tsunami agreed readily, and Naruto went upstairs and stripped the remainder of his clothes off and hopped in, completely forgetting about his shadow. Many thoughts bounced in his head, and unfortunately they all centered around how much trouble he was or would be in when he got back. He sighed as the hot water erased some of his worries, but then wondered again who she would send. Kakashi wasn't an instructor anymore, Asuma was dead, Kurinai had retired so she could raise her son, Ibisu was killed by a jealous husband. Not many he knew of that were instructors. Naruto tried not to think about it as he turned off the water and dried himself off. At least he had a few days before the hangman pulled the lever. Naruto went over to the room he occupied so long ago and threw himself on the bed in hopes to get a few hours of much needed rest. Of course. That didn't last. He wasn't sure what time it was, but at some point in the night Haku had come into the room with him. She crouched there staring at him for a few minutes, just observing him in sleep. She was unfamiliar with the bed, but her master looked so relaxed and she wanted to be near him. Quietly, she climbed on the bed and tried to curl up next to him. Naruto feeling something pressed against him scooted to the other side of the bed without even waking up. Haku then scooted closer to him to bask in his body heat and scent when he pulled even further away. Not knowing any better, she scooted over once more when Naruto let out a yelp, landing face first on the floor. Slowly looking up, Naruto saw Haku looking down at him curiously. Master. Naruto frowned as he rested his head on his hand. He tapped the floor with four of the fingers on his other hand as he grumbled to himself. It was going to be a long night. The next day, Naruto was outside practicing whatever came to mind and Tsunami was working with Haku. She had told him she had some experience training animals from when she was younger and she would see what she could do with Haku. Naruto, not one to argue with free help, agreed and let her have it. Happily he was wearing pants again as Tsunami was happy altering them so his tail fit through them and promised to try and improvise something for Haku. At the moment all Haku had on as far as clothing goes was a tank top which fit her snugly and nothing else. Inari surprisingly kept his eyes away from obvious areas and said nothing to the contrary. Naruto practiced the entire day, not even stopping to eat until he came into the house. Tazuna was there, sake in hand, staring at Haku. Naruto grinned as he sat next to the man as Haku came over and hung on Naruto. What? Never seen a girl with fox ears before. Tsunami giggled and Inari snickered as he helped his mother set the table. Tazuna finally looked at Naruto and almost jumped out of his chair. Naruto had a belly laugh at the old man's expense, then shrugged at himself. It's a little hard to explain. But I did solve your petty theft problem. Azuna nodded as his eyes went from Naruto to Haku then back again. Oh I'll just bet you did. He mumbled as his eyes kept drifting back and forth. Azuna took a big gulp of sake as Haku, much to Naruto's pleasure, began to groom him, which felt really damn good he had to admit. Tazuna eventually just shook his head and sat at the table again. I suppose our problem had something to do with her. He asked with a hint of suspicion in his voice. Naruto laughed as Haku hit a ticklish spot which made her grin happily before he nodded. Yeah. But she meant no harm. I guess she was lonely and wanted something to entertain her. Otherwise there isn't anything to worry about from her. He said as she started rubbing her face against his chest and shoulder. After a few more minutes of table banter, Tsunami filled all of their bowls with stew that tasted remarkably good. Naruto enjoyed the taste but blinked as he felt a tug on his pants. Looking down Haku handed him her bowl which she had taken under the table with her, which was now empty. Naruto tilted the bowl over and nothing, not even a drop came out. She. Um seems to have your appetite Naruto. Inari said in surprise. Naruto could only nod. Haku then tugged insistently at his pants leg and he looked down at her again. What is Haku? She looked at him, her eyes almost pleading. Master. She said to him, an urgent edge to her voice. Naruto looked at the tsunami and she frowned for a second, then it came to her. Oh. She just ate so she probably has to go out. Naruto blinked before he shook his head. What? Tsunami sighed as she pointed to the front door. She just ate. She probably has to go to the bathroom. And if she does it on the floor again you are going to ruin all the hard work we did today. Tsunami said with a slight edge to her voice.
Naruto got the message and stumbled from his chair with Haku hot on his heels. As soon as Naruto had the door open, she charged out and into the bushes. Naruto almost laughed aloud, but realized this was not bad. At least he wouldn't be cleaning the rugs over and over again in his house. Tsunami spoke from behind him. It didn't take her long to learn that. With a good teacher we could get her to live and act mostly normal. I almost have her using the toilet, but I think the appearance bothers her. Naruto nodded as Haku came trotting back and stopped in front of him looking relieved. Naruto smiled at her before rubbing her head. She should be fine once we get back to Konoha. She'll live with me, and hopefully there won't be any problems from the villagers. Tsunami nodded as she looked at him. If there is, you could always come here. You know everyone here would welcome you. Naruto smiled happily at Tsunami, so didn't notice the light touch on his pants until they were at his ankles. Naruto blinked, then gasped when he felt a hot, wet mouth around his most sensitive organ. Tsunami blushed the scarlet and averted her eyes. But you will definitely have to work on that. She said as she went back in the house after pushing him out onto the porch and closing the door harder than she probably wanted to. Naruto hoped they wouldn't make too much noise. The next day, Naruto grumbled about early mornings as he climbed from the bed and Haku awoke as he moved away from her. Naruto was sure that Tsunami wanted to kill him now. Haku wouldn't stop until he had hammered her at least three times. And vocal wasn't even a good way to describe it. She wasn't in heat, but man was she loud. Naruto wondered if it was because he was trying to be quiet or if she really was that loud. When he got downstairs and saw the glares from Tsunami and Inari who had bags under their eyes and the look of admiration on Tazuna, he nodded sheepishly as he blushed. I guess we were that loud. He thought to himself. Um. Sorry. Inari after a few seconds laughed. You're lucky you stopped when you did. Mom was gonna throw a pot of scalding hot water to separate you guys. Naruto's ears flattened against his head as he looked at Tsunami, eyes bigger than saucers. Huh? That wouldn't be right. Tsunami glared at her son. Inari, don't fib. Inari put his head down, but Tsunami mumbled, it wasn't that hot. Naruto sighed as he nodded. They had worn out their welcome. We'll be gone as soon as the others get here. He said rather glumly. Azuna cleared his throat and looked at the Tsunami a little sternly. I seem to remember a young woman and man who made almost as much noise every night in this house kept me awake all the time. But I turned a blind eye to it even though I could still hear them. I wonder who else remembers how loud they were. Tsunami blushed so dark she almost looked purple before she sighed, came over and kissed Naruto between his ears. Go me Naruto-kun, I'm just grumpy because I'm tired. Naruto nodded but said nothing else as Haku came into the kitchen and got cozy up against Naruto, rubbing her face against his shoulder and neck. Master. Naruto sighed and began rubbing Haku behind her ears, making her squirm against him and purr. Well I will practice some more before the Konohanins get here. He paused as he looked at the tsunami. Will you? Help Haku some more please. I know you are upset with us after last night, but I would really appreciate it. Tsunami turned around and bounced a wet sponge off of Naruto's head. Dum dum. Of course I'm going to help you. And stop pouting. You should know me better by now. Naruto blinked sheepishly before he kissed Haku on her lips. Behave Haku. He said as he got up and went outside. Haku just watched him go, then settled into a crouch and waited for the tsunami. Naruto sighed as he grabbed a towel and wiped himself off. Standing with just his pants on, he had worked up a sweat and felt good as he stretched before going on to his next step. Before he got started however, a familiar voice called to him. He turned and sure enough, it was the pink-haired banshee with three genin in tow. None of them looked happy about being there, but Sakura had a smile on her face at the very least, until she got closer and had a good look at him. She was running but slowed to a walk before she reached him, shock clearly evident on her face. Naruto. Naruto nodded before he rubbed the back of his head and gave her a big goofy smile. Yeah. It's a long story, but it's me. Sakura grunted him but nodded. Yeah, okay. Are you okay? Lady Tsunade said you were late to report in, so she sent us to check on you. Naruto nodded as he looked at Tizuna's house. Yeah. The changes and a few other discoveries kept me a little too busy too. Naruto said as a familiar woman's voice came to him. Master. Master. Haku shouted as she ran towards him on all fours. Looking over, Sakura's genin team gawked and Sakura's eyes bugged out. Naruto palmed his face as he knew this was probably going to hurt. Haku barreled into Naruto, knocking him to the ground, and she quickly straddled his waist as he tried to catch his breath from her collision. Sakura frowned as she looked at the two, but then glared as the girl sat up. Master. Dress. She said as she pointed to the garment she now wore, making Naruto nod and smile. It was a pretty yellow summer dress with white lace. Yes, Haku. Very good. You're wearing a dress. The next thing she did though made Sakura glare at him as he got an erection. 
Aku lifted the front of her dress and pointed to the black bikini underwear she had on. Master. Panties. Naruto blushed a little, then nodded before his eyes shot towards a pink-haired monster that was now looming over him. Naruto. You fucking pervert. She screamed as she reached down, pulled Naruto up by his tattered jacket, then punched him hard enough to leave an imprint of himself on the nearest tree. Sakura. As always in her anger. Failed to ask Naruto some very important questions like, who is she, and why is she showing you her panties? Or else she wouldn't have hurt Naruto, and wouldn't have gotten hurt. Hearing a low growl Sakura turned just as she got a fist to her stomach doubling her over. Before she could catch her breath, another fist connected with her jaw and a massive uppercut that lay Sakura on her back groaning in pain. Haku stood over Sakura snarling like an angry cat, claws and fangs bared. Sakura shook her head, then looked up at the fox girl, but before she could say anything, Haku pointed to Naruto and snapped at Sakura, master. Then tapped herself on her chest. Haku master. Sakura was still seeing stars, so could only nod her head dumbly. Naruto was just starting to pull himself from the tree when Haku trotted over and helped him, crooning softly to him in sympathy, rubbing and fussing over him to make sure he was okay. Sakura sat up and rubbed her jaw, then pulled her hand back and saw frost on it. W. What was that? She mumbled as Haku began to groom Naruto, whispering, Master. In concern between licks as she examined him. Naruto blinked a few times before he turned and smiled at Haku and patted her head. I'm okay. Good girl Haku. Haku cocked her head at the new word, but the intent behind it carried through, and she purred happily as she once again buried her face in his chest. The three genin, now free of their stupefied reaction of Sakura being laid out, rushed to her and took up fighting stances between her and Haku. The ice mistress turned fox girl dropped into a crouch in front of Naruto and growled deeply in the back of her throat. Before Haku could spring however, Naruto had her by the collar and shouted at her. No. Haku blinked and shrunk down next to him, ears laid back. Master. She said in obvious confusion, but Naruto held onto her collar and began to rub her ears gently to calm her. Looking at the three genin, Naruto pushed Haku behind him, fingers still looped in her collar. I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. A special jounin of Konoha, now standing down. The three looked confused and looked to their sensei who still looked a little woozy, but Naruto was not going to stand by for this crap. I said stand down. Two of the genin relaxed their posture, but the third, a high uga, remained in the gentle fist stance as he glared at Naruto. I know who Namikaze is. Jailer of the Kayubi no Kitsune. And while most respect you in the village, I do not. Naruto's eyes narrowed, but before he could say anything, a hand clubbed the young high uga on the side of his head, knocking him from his feet. You listen to your superiors, Kane. You don't do what you want to do. Which I have already told you more times than I can remember. You are on report and will answer to a disciplinary hearing when we get back. Sakura's words stung the boy as he rubbed at his head before standing up and nodding to her, eyes hard. Hi, sensei. Sakura looked at Naruto and Haku before walking over to them, but as she got closer, Haku began to growl at her. Naruto shushed her and she looked at him curiously, but then glared at Sakura. So. Care trying to explain to her. And why does she keep calling you master? Naruto sighed before he shrugged. It's a long story. Sakura nodded as she stood outside of the arm's reach of Haku and Naruto. Just in case. Well, do you want to explain now or on the way back to Konoha? Naruto looked at the house, then looked at Haku who purred at him, then back at Sakura. Why don't we rest here tonight, I'll give you the short and dirty version, and head back first thing in the morning, and I'll explain everything else. Sakura nodded as Naruto, still holding Haku's collar, led her back to the house. Sakura watched him go then turned to dress down her team for their actions. The next morning, the five of them were running along the path through the forest, heading back towards Konoha. Naruto had been telling Sakura of his recent adventures and his new attachment as she kept pace with him at his side. He wasn't sure she could run through trees as they could, so they agreed to take the paths back. So let me get this straight. This, she said pointing towards Haku, is the Haku that almost killed Sasuke all those years ago. And somehow. Your tenant's chakra brought her back to life. But she doesn't remember any of it and now she is your slave. Naruto shook his head. No. She isn't my slave. According to Kayu she is my mate. But she acknowledges me as her master. Sakura nodded as she looked at him skeptically. So you say. Well, Naruto. You sure know how to get yourself caught up in some messes. But. That has always been you. Nothing was said for a few minutes as they continued running until Sakura had a thought. Who's going to teach her more now that we are taking her back to Konoha? Naruto frowned before he shrugged. I hadn't thought too deeply about Sakura yet. It's been a crazy couple of days and to be honest, I just want to go home and crawl in my bed and sleep. Sakura chuckled which made Naruto look at her inquisitively. The look wasn't lost on her as she pointed to Haku again. 
Good luck explaining this to the Hokage. I'm sure she'll be real understanding. Naruto blanched for a moment, then looked glum as he nodded. I know. She'll probably launch me out the window. But I won't abandon Haku. It isn't her fault, and it really isn't mine. But I will do right by her because. She needs me, and in a quieter voice Naruto mumbled, at least someone finally does. Sakura glanced at Naruto out of the corner of her eye and saw the sad look on his face, and she understood. Naruto had a horrible life growing up, and when Sakura later found out she felt really bad for the way she had treated him and how others had treated him. Of course. She hadn't changed much, but the difference between now and then was she picked on him the way a sister would, instead of the way a bully would. Although some old habits still popped up now and then. Seeing how every so often Naruto would glance at Haku and smile, Sakura knew that however strange this was. Naruto might be happy. And she wouldn't deny him that. After Hinata died. Naruto had withdrawn more into himself. The mask that Sakura found out he wore. Became an everyday thing. He hardly ever let his guard down anymore, and while he still laughed and smiled, Sakura knew there was very little feeling behind it. There was a bigger void in him now than ever before, and she truly hoped Haku would be able to fill it. Naruto sat on the tree stump on the edge of their encampment. They will be back in Konoha in the morning, and then a whole new set of worries will come to life. While well, Naruto mulled that over, familiar clawed fingers squeezed his shoulder, and a purr interrupted his thoughts as Haku began to groom him with long licks of her tongue. Naruto almost giggled a few times, but more than the funny feeling was the erotic feeling, and he couldn't help but respond. Which in turn made Haku respond. Which in turn caused Sakura and her genin team to run wild around the camp to find Naruto and Haku getting it on while he was still sitting on the tree stump. Sakura glared at him, but after Tsunami warned the girl about what might happen between the two at the most inopportune times, she just turned and walked off in a huff, curled back in her tent and wrapped the pillow around her head. Her gen and team, taking their sensei's example, ran to their tents and tried to pretend they didn't see what they just did. Tsunade glared at him a few times as he sat on the couch with Haku practically draped over him. Naruto wore a goofy grin as always. Even when Sakura revealed things he really didn't want his foster sister to know. You had sex with her in front of Sakura and her team? Naruto blushed before he put his head down, which caused Haku to lick him on his cheek insistently as she sensed the drop in his happiness. Naruto patted her head gently and she looked at him questioningly, but relaxed again when he didn't say anything. I know Bachan. But it can't be helped. When the mating drive comes, it can't be ignored. It's like. I don't know. I have to do it. There's no reason to ignore and no excuses that I can make for it. Haku is the same way. Haku looked at him and smiled. Master? She asked as she watched him. Naruto just smiled at her before pecking her on the lips. Tsunade frowned to hide the smile she got when she saw the obvious affection he showed the woman draped over him. It was possible that they would be good together. She would wait and see if things didn't progress in the wrong direction. Well you completed the mission, despite not reporting in. I will forgive you this time, Brad. But watch it. Naruto nodded before he grinned in relief. Thanks Bachan. I'm going to take Haku to her new home after I deposit my pay. Tsunade cleared her throat and Naruto stopped and looked at her. Um. I have something else for you to do. But it is here in the village. She said quickly to stall his protest. Naruto took a deep breath and nodded with a sigh. Alright Bachan. What do I have to do? Tsunade handed him a scroll which he opened, then blinked and looked at her after he began to read it. Tsunade grimaced, but it wasn't an angry or disappointed look, more like worry. They requested for you specifically. I would suggest you go today. I will have Shizune keep an eye on Haku and continue educating her. Naruto nodded blankly as Haku followed him out of the office, and Tsunade hoped everything would be better than what she thought they would be like. Naruto closed the gate behind them, and the seals automatically fell into place as he led Haku towards the front entrance. Not knowing what to expect, he opened the door, and Haku cautiously stepped in behind him, eyes darting around to take in everything, and her ears were swiveling in every direction like miniature radar dishes. When she sensed no threat she looked at Naruto and smiled and Naruto nodded and gestured around. Home Haku. Home. Haku's smile was big, almost a smaller version of Naruto's as she began to dart around the house inspecting everything and every corner. Well boy you have done well. She will become accustomed to her new surroundings in no time. Naruto nodded as he watched Haku dart into the kitchen. Yeah. And as soon as Shizun has had a little time to work with her, she will be better able to communicate with. Hmm. Maybe I should approach the Inuzukas and see if they have any ideas to speed up the process. Ayubi frowned at Naruto and shook his head. Why are you such a fool? If you domesticate her too much, you will have nothing but trouble. Naruto shrugged at his captive before sitting down in his mind in front of the cage. My life, my decision. Besides, I think she looks good in clothes. 
I Ruby just grumbled something that sounded like stupid human, but he wouldn't let this break his mood. Naruto smiled again as he stepped out of his mind, but after looking at the clock he realized it had been a while since he last saw Haku. Standing up and going towards the kitchen he saw a sight that worried him. Haku's dress was crumpled in a heap on the floor, but Haku wasn't in it. Picking up the dress he cautiously walked up the stairs and tried to find Haku until outside the master bedroom he found a pair of black panties. Naruto was worried for a second as he picked them up and stepped into the bedroom. He didn't see Haku anywhere, but he heard her. And then he smelled her. Naruto came around the side of the bed and blinked at Haku in confusion. Haku was squatting down next to the bed. Which wasn't strange unto itself. No the strange part was she had her hand between her legs and she was making quiet yelping sounds as her fingers moved furiously over her maidenhood until she moaned long and low in the back of her throat. Naruto got an erection of epic proportions as he watched the display until she caught her breath. Then she hopped on the bed and wiped her wet hand across both the pillow and the mattress as she pulled the comforter and sheets aside. Naruto was about to say something to her, but Kairubi stopped him. I wouldn't. She is marking her territory. In fact I am sure if you say nothing, she will take no notice of you until she has completely marked her areas of the house. Naruto frowned at that as he watched her go back to the side of the bed and began to rub herself furiously again. So this is marking. Odd. Kairubi smirked at Naruto as he watched him. What did you think she would do? Pee in the corner? Naruto said nothing as he remembered Kiba talking about Akamaru when he would mark territory, and indeed that was what he thought she would do. So you're saying she is basically saying this is her house. The fox lord nodded as he also watched Enrupt. Indeed. Anyone who has an acute sense of smell such as us or the aforementioned Inuzukas will know that this is her and your domain. Before Naruto could say anything else, the doorbell rang, and he quietly walked out of the bedroom and down to the front door. When he opened it he saw Shizun standing there with a smile. Hello, Naruto-kun. Sanadi sent me to meet this new girl of yours and to teach her. Naruto nodded as he hugged Shizun briefly. Yeah. But please don't bother her just yet. She's. Um. Marking her territory. At Shizun's confused look he explained to her the fox demon's traits and habits as he understood them. He also explained about his new features and appendages, which she brushed off as superficial. Naruto felt immensely better when she said with a smile, you're still Naruto to me. After a few minutes Naruto called upstairs and Haku came bounding down the stairs, jumped the railing and landed at his side. Master. Naruto grinned at her acrobatics and the cute way her face looked when she looked at him expectantly. This is Shizun. She will talk to you and teach you things okay. Haku cocked her head at Shizun, then looked back at Naruto and he hoped she understood. I need to go to Haku. Stay here until I come back. Looking to say something to Shizun, he saw the deep blush on her face and realized why she was embarrassed immediately. But the smirk Naruto looked at Haku. Haku. Panties. He said to her and held out the black material to her. Interestingly enough, Haku immediately climbed into them and looked at Naruto expectantly. Naruto smiled and patted her head. Good girl Haku. Haku crouched there waiting until he walked to the door. As he opened it, Haku dashed over to him and knelt at his feet. Master. She asked with a hint of anxiety in her voice. Naruto frowned, then smiled at her before he leaned down and kissed her on her lips. Haku purred quietly as he pulled away from her. I'll be back in Haku. He said with as much confidence he could pour into it. Haku then smiled as she watched him walk out the front door and down the path to the front gate. Her tail waved lazily behind her as she knew instinctively that he would be back for her. He would come home again. Naruto stood in front of the desk and wondered what the man would tell him. He ashi hadn't talked to him since the funeral, and to be honest, Naruto hadn't wanted to return for obvious reasons. After a few minutes he ashi finished what he was doing and looked at Naruto. You have not come by for some time, Naruto-san. Is there a specific reason? Naruto frowned as he fidgeted for a few seconds. When he finally did speak, he decided it would be best to be candid with the High Uga Lord. It hurt me to think about it. It was not meant as an insult to you or your clan. It is just the pain from that day, and the day we later to rest in the mausoleum is still so fresh in my mind and stabs me like a kunai to my heart. The Ashi nodded once curtly. The High Uga Lord understood better than he let on. In truth, his mourning period was almost as long for Hinata as it was for his wife. And he mourned his wife's passing for a full month before he finally came back from seclusion. And even then he hadn't been able to purge all of his grief. For Hinata. Niji, Hanabi and himself mourned for almost three weeks before they finally came back to the main house. Naruto. Never got over his grief. Indeed how do you recover from discovering that you are loved by someone only to watch them die? And you are helpless to do anything to stop it. I understand Naruto-san. And I do not hold any anger towards you because of it. But that isn't the real reason I asked you here. 
Hiyashi sipped at the tea before he continued. I have noticed the changes to your appearance, and to be honest, I suspected something like this to happen eventually as you became more. Kaiubi like for lack of better words. But I called you here because I have a mystery to unfold and it is possible only you can answer it. Naruto frowned as he considered this then nodded. I will do what I can to help Hiyashi sama The Ashi nodded before he stood and motioned Naruto to follow him. They walked until they reached a stairwell guarded by two Hyuga branch members. Hiyashi nodded to them and they stepped aside, opening the door for them. The Ashi, as they walked down the darkened stairs began to speak of the previous days and how the routine eventually returned to him until he was the stoic clan head again, showing no emotion at all. To better hide his pain which was now double what it was originally. Then one day he was told to come to the resting ground as they called it. At the urgency in the man's voice he ashy hurried until he was led to the family mausoleum and saw something he hadn't expected to see. The door to the family crypt was split in half down the middle and at first they thought some bold grave robbers intended to steal whatever finery his past family members were buried in. But then he realized the door wasn't caved in but out. And Hinata's body was gone. Searching everywhere, they found no intruders, nothing out of place. They scoured the grounds until Hiyashi himself began searching his family's quarters. At this point Hiyashi stopped his narration and unlocked a heavy door they had stopped in front of. Naruto got a strange feeling in his stomach, an excited almost giddy feeling as he could smell something familiar. Hiyashi, noticing his reaction, nodded as he opened the door. In the dimly lit room a figure lay on a bed, curled into a ball and weeping. Her voice was strained as if she had been crying for some time and Hiyashi confirmed it from outside of the doorway. When I found her, she was curled up in the corner of her room, gripping one of your old jackets, and wouldn't stop crying. That was a week ago, and she won't eat or drink. When we have talked with her she keeps asking the same thing, and when we can't answer her, she breaks down and cries again. Naruto looked at Hiyashi expectantly until he heard her voice. It sounded hoarse and full of sorrow, and Naruto felt his own heart hurt when he heard it. He would know that voice anywhere, and when he heard it he stepped into the room. Naruto-kun. Where is Naruto-kun? But no one answered, she broke into a new series of heart-wrenching sobs that brought tears to Naruto's eyes. Without hesitation, he went over, heart hammering in his chest and rested his hand on her shoulder. I'm Hinata-chan. Hinata's head slowly raised and she blinked her eyes at him. As he thought. She had the fox ears which were almost blue in color and the tail as well, which was restricted by the clothing she still wore, but it was undoubtedly there, and it was undoubtedly Hinata. Her eyes seemed to focus as she saw him clearly for the first time, and her face broke into a grin as she dove at him, wrapping her arms around his waist. A new wave of tears rushed from her, but they were tears of joy as she rubbed her face against his chest, breathing deeply of his essence. Reveling at his proximity and his embrace as she never dated before. The Ashi did the one thing very few people had ever seen him do. He smiled until Hinata said something that made him fall back on his heels in shock. M Master. My Master. Chapter 3. The Ashi tried not to frown at the young man that was being held in a death grip by his returned daughter. The changes in her while obvious were not something he couldn't overlook. The physical changes that is. The obvious emotional changes were a little harder to swallow. So you don't really know why this has happened. Naruto shook his head as Hinata purred and groomed him, a content smile on her face. The Ashi had never seen anything like it. He was not a great animal lover, so he had never observed or even listened to stories about animal mating rituals and such or how mated animals acted to and around each other. To be honest, watching his eldest daughter now return to life purr like a big house cat and lick and pant Naruto with her hands and fingers, fussing over the boy. Embarrassed the hell out of him. Especially when they were still in the cell below the manor and she stopped crying finally and began to lick his neck and cheek. The ashy had to clear his throat three times before they took notice of him. What she was doing now was not much better, but it was a step away from earlier. The clan head tried not to blush openly, but the open affection his shy daughter was displaying to the young special was both brazen and unsettling. Naruto merely shrugged as he tried not to squirm or giggle. I'm not sure what brought her or Haku back to life. My. The resident is unsure also. Neither of us have seen or heard anything about this before. If he's stumped, then so am I. The ashy nodded with a slight frown before he looked at Hinata. Daughter, how do you feel? Hinata looked up at Hiyashi and blinked at him, then went back to grooming Naruto, as if the man had said nothing of importance. The Ashi frowned deeper and almost snapped at her, but Naruto held up his hand, stalling him. Um. Hold on Hiyashi-sama. Turning his head to look at Hinata he smiled. Hinata-chan, please answer any questions your father has for you. Hinata looked into Naruto's eyes, then nodded to him before she moved forward quickly and kissed his lips without the hint of a blush or any sign of shame or shyness. Yes my master she said in a quiet voice. 
the ashy tried not to blush again at the open display of affection, but asked her again to quickly cover it up. How do you feel? Anada cocked her head to the right and thought about it before she answered him. Wonderful. It feels like I've been asleep and I rested better than I have ever before. And I have something I have always wanted now. She said as she hugged Naruto tightly, making him blush lightly under his eyes. The ashy nodded as he took a sip of his tea. Once he was satisfied he looked at Hinata again. Why do you call him master? Hinata's brow furrowed as she thought about it, then shook her head. I cannot explain it. There is something about Naruto-kun that makes me want to submit to him. And when I do I feel happy. I don't want to disobey him or make him unhappy. I was thinking about when I woke up and I was in my room. When I thought of being in my old room again and without Naruto-kun. I was suddenly empty inside and I just wanted to cry. Naruto rubbed Hinata's hand in a reassuring manner, which wasn't lost on Hiyashi, before she smiled at her long love and continued her narration. Once the tears started, I couldn't stop them and I was overcome with sorrow. All I wanted was my master, and if he didn't come to claim me, then I wanted to die again. Naruto felt a pull of sadness when he thought of Hinata being dead again, and when he did immediately, Hinata looked at him and frowned with a slight whine. Master. Naruto looked at her and saw the sudden sadness there in her eyes, and immediately smiled and pushed it aside. I'm sorry Hina-chan, I just got sad thinking of you being gone again. After a few searching looks in Naruto's beautiful blues, Hinata smiled and kissed him quickly on his cheek, before turning back to her father with a frown. Hinata's tail found her hands, and she played with the tuft of fur on the end a bit nervously as if confused. I don't know why I felt or feel like this, and I don't know why I'm not embarrassed, but what I do know for a fact is I do not care. She let go of her tail and looked into her father's eyes with a bit of defiance that made him sit back slightly in surprise before she continued. I am his if he will have me. And nothing will change that. Naruto grinned at her words and took her hand with a smile. Of course I want you. Hinata blinked with a beaming smile on her face so bright it would rival Lee's on a good day before she squeezed his hand tight. Hinata turned back to Hiyashi and again frowned at him, but as he tried to listen in, Kaiubi broke into his thoughts. It is the mating instinct. She has submitted herself to you as yours. Usually this is after sex. But based on her feelings for you from before she was probably already yours. Now that she has you, she wants nothing else than to make you happy. Her very existence is based on your happiness. If you are unhappy, she will be unhappy. If you are happy or pleased with her. It is like a constant mini-orgasm for her. It should be interesting to see how she will react once she is in heat. Wait so you're saying I have to take her too? Naruto said, voice rising as he began to see the injuries Hinata could deal to him with a gentle fist. A distinct possibility. She will probably be your beta. But I have a feeling she will be a tough one. You better eat your Wheaties boy. I think you'll need it. But you can't do the tango with just one person. Naruto blinked at this, then frowned. So you're saying all demons are like this? The great fox shook his head negatively. No. In fact all demons are independent until they become mated. Once they are mated then the bonding process begins. I am thinking that Hinata and Haku are like this because you created them. Since my essence and your emotions combined in them, it regenerated them in some kind of odd symbiosis. It's like the demon mating drive, only compounded. I do not fully understand it, and given time I will dredge my memories. I suggest in the meantime you enjoy yourself. It's not every day that you get to have two women fawn over you. Naruto frowned as he pleaded with the fox lord. Wait, hold it please. If that's the case, why is Hinata-chan like this and Haku-chan is like she is? Shouldn't they both be the same level of intelligence? Hayubi shrugged impatiently. The only thing I can think of is based on the time. You poured your heart and my yakai into Hinata the same day she died. With Haku, you did it the next day when you buried her. It is possible her soul had fled before you did it. So with no active consciousness, she was as I told you originally. A clean slate waiting for you to ride on it. Naruto looked thoughtful for a minute as he considered the great fox's words. Then. Why did Haku rise from the grave long before I got to wave and Hinata only when I left Konoha? The great Myobu shook his head before he shrugged at Naruto. Perhaps it was a matter of time. Perhaps it was your proximity for Haku and your absence for Hinata. I do not have the answers to these questions. Instead of worrying over things that we cannot solve, worry more about what you will do with two mates. I'm sure your botchin will not be very pleased. Naruto's mind began to whirl as he considered the implications of this new ability. Completely ignoring the thought of mates and more importantly the ass-beating Tsunade would probably give him. What if Naruto could bring anyone back to life? The Fox Lord however stomped the ground in front of Naruto, grabbing his attention again. Not advisable. For one, they will come back subservient to you. So in essence you will have another mate to deal with. And for the most part we do not know how or why you were able to raise either of them. 
Doing it again could be a problem, since we do not know any particulars of the process. Now leave me. I have things to contemplate. Naruto grumbled as he exited his mindscape. It seemed like the fox was going to keep him guessing anyway. Naruto had returned to reality just in time as Hinata growled, her ears laying back against her head at Hiyashi, and the man had slammed his teacup to the tabletop with an angry exclamation. How dare you? You won't have it so good ever again. The elders will demand you wear the seal, especially when they find out you're alive and under another man's control. Hinata practically spit at Hiyashi as she exchanged heated words with him. And I am no longer the timid fool you and your counsel emotionally abused for so long. With this new life I have new courage and new conviction. I will not stay here under your roof any longer. I will stay with my master. The ashy glared from Hinata to Naruto as Naruto tried to figure out what he missed but did not get much of a chance to puzzle it out as he ashy stood to his feet. Then I suggest you go now while I still feel generous enough to let you leave of your own power, but know this, once you leave that door, you are no longer welcome here. Naruto stood to his feet as well as he looked between the two quickly. Wait what's going on? The ashy looked at Naruto, and his features softened slightly as he noticed Naruto's genuine confusion and concern. I apologize to you Naruto-san, but it seems Hinata has become more willful and less obedient than when she was previously alive. Hinata had a hand on Naruto's arm and rubbed it affectionately before she looked at Hiyashi again, but she openly scowled at him. It is not that I am a less obedient father. My allegiance lies with a man that means more to me than life itself. Naruto-kun is the reason I am here again. I can sense that and I will not let anything stand in my way of making him happy. Leaving me here to live, hidden in shame, hidden from the world when I could at least be with the man I love would be stupidity on my part and while I was once meek and timid, I was never stupid. Naruto looked again from one to the other, then took a deep breath and let it out with a sigh. Hiyashi sama Right now I am going to do something I rarely do because I am not good at it, be the voice of reason. Hinata has been dead for some time, her attitude has obviously changed in that time, so why don't we take time to rediscover who she is now before we make quick decisions? Especially ones we might regret later. The ashy gazed evenly at Naruto, then nodded before he gave a slight bow to the young man. That would seem to be the best course. Remember this day Naruto-san, for it is the day that you gave a clan head wisdom. I I will leave her in your care. I don't even know if the clan will accept her as a whole with this new development. I was being hasty. Even though it was said quietly, Hinata and Naruto both heard the older man's words as he left the room. I just wanted my daughter back. Hinata's ears followed him as he left the room, but she said nothing else. Naruto, unsure of what else to say, looked at Hinata who turned then smiled and rubbed her face against his shoulder. While he was happy to have her back again, he began to wonder what other traits she had acquired. He should have worried more about what would happen in the future. Oh. It took some coaxing, and finally Naruto tying a black string around Hinata's neck to get her to come out of the Hyuga Manor. Even though it never felt completely like a home, she felt some level of comfort there. Much like Haku, once he had a symbol of his dominance on her, she grabbed onto him and followed him happily. That and the stupid fox insulting him again helped. You have to call her too stupid. Naruto grumbled, but no further problems occurred immediately. The clan members at the main gate watched as they walked by in open mouth shock, but said nothing as they passed. Hinata looked around somewhat nervously at all the people and the stares she was receiving, and because of it, clung tightly to Naruto's arm and would not leave his side. The quick detour to Tenton's weapon shop. Proved to be a mistake on his part though. Naruto and Hinata walked into the store and stopped at the counter. Tenton's voice came from the back and sounded cheerful. I'll be right there. Naruto nodded absently as he watched Hinata. Her ears would flick back and forth and swivel in every direction continuously as her eyes darted around the room. Hinata seemed to be displaying the same curiosity that a cat would at being in a new place. Very similar to Haku, she stayed close to Naruto, but she did step a few paces away as her whiskers twitched cutely. Fenton emerged from the back and grinned at him. Oh hey. 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 Fenton's voice trailed off as she pointed to Naruto's head and he remembered the physical changes he had gone through. Naruto shrugged it off as he rambled through an explanation. Sorry Tenton. It's me and it's a long story. I'll definitely explain it to you, but not right now. I'm in a bit of a hurry. I need another of those collars with a lock and leash please. Denton nodded dumbly, still staring at Naruto as she reached up and took a collar off the wall and a lock by touch, because she seemed so engrossed in his new appearance, she pulled another leash from the wall and placed it next to the collar and lock. Naruto grinned as he pulled out his toad wallet. Same price. Denton only nodded as she was still staring at him and he counted out the money and left it on the counter before he gathered up his purchase and walked over to Hinata. 
Naruto reached up as she turned to him and broke the string around her neck, which made her whimper as it fell from her, but then she began to bounce happily when he fitted the collar to her neck, then locked it around her throat. Hinata grinned and threw herself into Naruto's arms, surprising him. Master. I don't know why but I'm so happy. Naruto could only nod with a light chuckle before he turned and waved to Tenten. Hinata grinned as she looked at Tenten and waved also as she clung to Naruto's arm. Bye Tenten. She said as if she had always been here and was returning from a trip. Tenten waved back, but her facial expression didn't change as her eyes rolled up in her head and she collapsed behind the counter. Oh. When they got to the Namika's compound, entering was simple until they actually got into the house proper. Naruto opened the front door and escorted Hinata in, and Hinata immediately began to explore, ears and nose twitching. Naruto chuckled before he created a shadow clone. Take a note to Bachan and let her know when she is available that I need to talk to her about a new wrinkle in my situation. The clone nodded and gave a jaunty salute. You got it boss. It said as it turned and ran out the front door. Naruto turned around and saw Hinata staring at him in expectation. Naruto blinked at her then walked over, a question on his face. Hinata. Is something wrong? Hinata seemed to fidget a little before she looked at Naruto, a serious expression on her face. Naruto-kun. I didn't lie to you. I do love you. And I want us to be together. Naruto grinned at her before he wrapped her in an embrace, and she settled into it with a content sigh. I know Hinata-chan. I do not and did not doubt you. That is why this is now your new home. But this is going to be an odd situation. Hinata pulled back and looked into his face. What do you mean? What he meant came bounding out of a bedroom and down the stairs in just a pair of black panties screaming, Master. Master. Until she saw Naruto hugging Hinata. At that point she stopped halfway down the stairs and began to growl. Naruto blinked at Haku and was about to say something when he felt Hinata also begin to growl. But the frown Naruto looked down at the woman he was holding and took a step back as she dropped down into a crouch, ears laid back and claws extended. Naruto blinked as he looked between the two, and Shizun stood at the top of the stairs, but was frozen in shock as she saw who the other woman in the house was. Hey, Hinata. Hinata though was only paying attention to the one woman who had usurped her place beside Naruto, and Haku did the same as they continued to eye each other. Hinata's eyes did not leave Haku as she spit out at Haku. Naruto-kun is mine. You don't belong here. Haku, not to be outdone in her own rough language, pointed at Naruto, then thumped her chest twice shouting, Haku master. Hinata's eyes began to blaze as her legs tensed up to spring. No. Mine. And Haku's legs bunched up the same way and mimicked Hinata. Mine. But that declaration both women charged each other and the fur began to fly as they tore into each bit of cloth or flesh they could. Claws and teeth flashed trying to find purchase in fur and flesh, but neither female would relinquish to the other. Naruto blinked in shock as the screaming of the two females increased, but neither seemed to be able to get the better of the other. Ayubi chuckled in amusement as he sat up and crossed his front paws in front of himself. Well now this is a welcome change. My bet's on the one you call Haku. Furil is so sexy don't you think? Naruto frowned as he ignored his tenant and considered wading in and breaking it up, but before he could act, he was glad he didn't as Shizun charged down and attempted to do just that, but then got slugged by both females at the same time, who focused on her, then went back to tearing at each other as she hit the floor. Naruto was at a loss for words until again. Kaiubi broke in. You know. You should be ready to name one of them as Alpha as soon as this little squabble is done. Naruto frowned as the two women continued to growl and fight, but looked inward. What do you mean? Well this is a battle for dominance. When one of them screams out in pain, they will break apart, and the one that screamed out will then be submissive to the one who won. Naruto nodded, still not quite understanding, until one of the women indeed screamed out in a high pitch, and Hinata pulled away from Haku, rubbing her shoulder. Haku looked smugly at Hinata and began to groom herself, but when Hinata looked back at Naruto as he watched, her face screwed up in determination then charged and pounced on Haku again, now giving much better than she got. Naruto blinked at the great fox in his stomach as he gave a troubled sound. Oh. Naruto looked inward and growled at the fox lord in worry. Oh. What do you mean oh? No oh. Oh not good. The Kaiubi made a thoughtful sound, then shrugged with a grin. Well usually one will accept the other as alpha and back off, taking up her position as the beta female. But in some rare circumstances, the designated beta will not accept the situation and try to force a change by attacking the alpha again. Naruto looked back at the females who were still rolling around on the floor, scratching and biting, and Shizun who was still knocked out behind them. Okay so if she wins again, no big deal right? The fox lord shook his head. No. The problem is the conventions have been broken, and on an instinctual level, they both know that one will have to die in order to settle this between them. Naruto's eyes bugged out as he screamed at Mayobu. What? Are you serious? 
I don't want them to kill each other. The Kaiubi smirked at him before it shrugged noncommittally. Then you need to exert your will as the alpha male. Naruto blinked in confusion then in worry as he heard one of the women, possibly Haku, scream out in pain, but they still continued to fight. What do I need to do? The great fox smirked as a paw came up and he scratched at a tooth with a single claw. Why? You have to stop them of course. Yell at them, then cuff them both. They need to be made to understand what your will is. Naruto frowned as he considered it, but then shook his head. I don't think I can do that. I don't want to hit them. Another scream of pain, followed by blood being splashed around as the two continued to fight and roll over each other, shocked him as the great fox sucked his teeth in disgust at his container. Then be ready to bury one of them again. Naruto's mind rebelled at this as he realized that he really cared about both women, and even if he didn't, he just couldn't let one of them die. But a little hesitation Naruto got closer and raised his voice. Alright that's enough. I need you to stop. But neither woman took notice and continued to brawl, even as Haku cried out, and Naruto could now see her blood flowing from what looked like a deep cut on her shoulder very close to her jugular. Naruto raised his voice and got a little closer and said a little more forcefully, hey come on. Cut it out now. But the two females continued to battle, and Naruto was at a severe loss for what to do, until a stray foot caught him in the crotch, sending pain shooting from his family jewels to his chest. Naruto doubled over and grabbed himself for a few seconds with both hands, before he began to growl with his temper finally gone. Naruto's eyes flashed red as he finally yelled, knock it off. Naruto's roar shocked both females who looked at him and saw the fury on his face, and both women's faces fell in fear as he strode over and first picked Hinata up by one arm and swatted her on her rear, causing her to yelp in pain before he released her. He then picked Haku up in a similar fashion and swatted her on her rear with just as much force, causing her to also yelp and squat there at his feet when he let her go. Both girls squatted side by side, eyes misting over as they stared up at him expectantly. I'm not going to have this in my house. You both will get along, or there will be hell to pay, and hell's name is Naruto. Anada rubbed her backside, at the same time Haku was rubbing hers, and a few tears fell from her eyes. Naruto-kun. You spanked me. Naruto looked at her and growled, causing her ears to fold back as she leaned slightly away from him. And there will be more in the future if the two of you don't accept the fact that you're both mine. You are both equal. I will not have you fighting for dominance in my house. The only dominant one here is me. Myobu nodded in approval which gave Naruto a surge of confidence as he got an idea. Naruto quickly leaned over and grabbed Haku's collar and pulled her to his right side, despite her reluctance to go. Looking at Hinata he shook Haku lightly by her collar. Haku. He then thumped his chest and growled. Master. At Haku's triumphant smirk, Naruto reached over and pulled Hinata to his left side by her collar, her ears still folded back, and he faced Haku. He shook Hinata by her collar and did the same thing. Hinata. Then he immediately thumped his chest. Master. Haku's ears flattened and her face fell slightly, but then Naruto grabbed her collar and shook them both as he brought them side by side in front of him, pushing them until they were face to face, less than an inch apart. As they looked at each other, Naruto put a hand on each of their shoulders and slowly worked a smile on his face. Mine. Haku looked at Naruto and blinked before her tail waved behind her. Master. Naruto nodded to her still smiling in encouragement. Yes. Master. Hinata looked at Naruto, but only with a slight frown. So. Do you want both of us? Naruto shook his head before he sighed as he took a couple of deep breaths, calming himself completely. Reaching over, he rubbed both women's heads as he spoke to them in a lower tone. I love you both. Losing either one of you would hurt me in ways I can't describe. Haku was someone precious to me that I couldn't save long ago, and you of course have always been precious to me too, Hinata. Hinata absorbed this but looked skeptical. Naruto sighed as he tilted Hinata's head by her chin to look into her eyes. Please. Hinata-chan. Haku needs you. She is like a child again and only lives by instinct now. I need you to teach her to fit in again. At least as much as she can and still be comfortable. In return Haku can teach you in her way about our new condition. She understands on an instinctual level what I'm only now learning myself. But more than that, I need both of you. If I let either of you go. It would kill you. And that would kill me. I have lost both of you once, I don't want to lose either of you again. Hinata nodded as she thought about it, then jumped slightly as she felt hands touching her lightly. Looking at her again, Haku was lightly touching Hinata's arm and shoulder, beginning to groom her as it seemed she already accepted the situation. After a few seconds of this, Haku's eyes seemingly pleaded with Hinata. Haku looked at Naruto, then looked back at Hinata and haltingly said to her, Hin. Ada. Hinata wasn't sure, but she felt a pull she didn't understand, and it made her reach over and hug the once ice mistress next to her. Haku sniffled and a few tears fell from her eyes as she hugged Hinata in return. 
As fast as the fight occurred it seemed to end even faster. Naruto nodded at both in satisfaction before Haku leaned back and looked at Naruto again. Hinata looked at him also before Haku touched Hinata between her breasts, then pointed at Naruto. Master. She mumbled quietly and Hinata nodded, then did the same to Haku, touching her chest before pointing at Naruto. Master. She agreed which made both women smile and hug each other again. Strangely both women now felt a slight bond between them. Not as great as what they felt toward Naruto. But it was still present. Naruto leaned down and began looking the two over, looking for the worst damage before noticing both women were healing on their own, scratches closing and abrasions disappearing. Aku leaned closer and licked a scratch on Hinata's cheek, making her blush, but it seemed to help it heal faster. At least Naruto thought so. Naruto looked at the tattered remains of Hinata's kimono, then shook his head. Well. Looks like I will have to get you some new clothes, Hinata-chan. Hinata looked at Naruto, then shrugged. What about Haku? Naruto frowned before he shrugged. She seems comfortable running around naked or just in her panties. She has a dress somewhere here. I don't know where it is now, but she has trouble keeping her clothes on. Hinata frowned, then nodded at this as she pulled a bit at her own clothing. Doesn't it? Embarrass you Naruto-kun. I mean she is naked or very close to it. Naruto blinked before he chuckled. Well I have seen her naked almost all of the time, so I guess I've gotten used to it. Hinata looked thoughtful for a moment, then nodded. It does seem a bit uncomfortable at times in Naruto-kun. Wearing clothes that is. Maybe it is the fur, but I do feel kind of stuffy. She said as she pulled at her clothes lightly. Naruto nodded in thought before he shrugged. Look if you feel comfortable, then be as Haku. In the house when no one is here, run in your panties or naked. I've seemed to have gotten used to Haku doing it and it doesn't bother me. Well, it doesn't upset me. Hinata blushed crimson, but gave a hesitant nod as she got the double meaning. I will have to get used to it, but I will try Naru-kun. Hinata wasn't sure if she could run naked in front of Naruto. The tears in her kimono at the moment made her feel self-conscious. But if that is what he wanted. After saying this, all three turned and looked at Shizune as she groaned and tried to sit up. No more for me Lady Tsunade. I'm driving. She mumbled as she held her head. Naruto went over and checked on her and could see the swelling of both cheekbones on her face and knew they gave it to her pretty good. Sorry about that Shizune. Are you okay? Shizune glared at Naruto through bleary eyes. Other than having an S-rank headache. Just peachy. She grumbled. Naruto sighed before he looked back at the two women that now shared his house with him and wondered what else he was in store for. He didn't have to wait long. Tsunade showed up a little over an hour later and had questions. Lots of them. Of course. She tried to throttle Naruto first thinking he was running around bringing women back to life so he could boink them. Thankfully. Hinata and Haku intervened before she could do more than pick him up by his shirt collar. After Hinata restored the Hokage's points, Tsunade had settled for asking the questions that were most pressing. Okay. So what Tenten told me is true. Hinata is alive. Naruto grinned sheepishly before he nodded. Yeah. That was the reason he Ashi called me to the Hyuga Estates. He said she woke up what seemed like a day after I left and would only cry and ask for me. Tsunade frowned deeply before she looked at him again. We have to keep this quiet. She mumbled as Naruto looked at her. Why? Isn't it good that Hinata-chan is alive? Tsunade waved his question off as she tried to explain. It isn't that. But people will come from everywhere to have their loved ones, pets, friends return to life. It doesn't matter that it doesn't work that way or that they would only listen and obey you. They would only see you were able to bring them back to life. Naruto shook his head. Okay I see that. But that isn't how it works. I think it was because I had mourned so much for them, combined with the Kaiubis that somehow made this possible. But he doesn't know how and to be honest I have no idea either. Tsunade nodded as she leaned forward. Yes I know. But that wouldn't stop the desperate or insane from coming to you for what they want. We need to make up a story to prevent that from happening. We cannot hide the fact that Hinata is alive again, or even Haku if anyone will recognize her, but we can prevent it from happening again, and we can make sure that you aren't beset by fanatics and morons, trying to get you to use some divine power you don't have. Naruto couldn't argue with her as he had seen what zealots and fanatics could do before. He still had some of the scars. Tsunade and Shizune bantered back and forth about a cover story as Naruto wondered what his lady loves were doing. Hinata was going through the box of clothes that her father had sent over and was debating what she could share with Haku until they could buy more things themselves. In truth, Hinata was confused by some of what she felt now. She would have happily lived as Naruto's woman before in her life, but now she felt a sense of pleasurable satisfaction, knowing that she was his and his every command she would fulfill immediately. She honestly didn't understand it at all. Hinata was always timid and shy. But she didn't feel that way anymore. 
She did have an overwhelming sense of sadness when she first awoke. And she knew what it was. She couldn't feel him anymore. It wasn't something like Spanish pesetas or telepathy, but an instinctual thing. Like she knew he was in the village and that he was nearby. Of course, she didn't know it was her sense of Naruto. But she always felt better or at ease when he was in the village. When she first realized she couldn't feel that, she wanted to die again. Her body felt like lead, and she didn't want to do anything but cry and wait for him to come get her and free her from the nightmare of being without him. So deep was her sorrow, when he was in the village again she didn't feel or sense him. Until he touched her and she heard his voice. When he did. She knew she was his. Anada grinned for a second as she picked up Naruto's old orange jacket and hugged it before she laid on the bed. The jacket had special meaning for her. It was the one Naruto had given her after their failed mission to bring back the scent bug. Her jacket and truthfully her pants had been ruined when she was held captive, so he gave it to her to cover her modesty as it seemed, even though she was wearing other clothing. Naruto had completely forgotten that she had it and she forgot to give it back to him and since he didn't ask for it. It was hers. Thinking back again she realized that she had always felt a strong connection to him, even though he was too blind to see it. She had been his since before the academy. There was no other way to put it. She just knew it deep inside of her. When he spanked her. She felt horrible. She didn't know why until she realized he was disappointed with her. Somewhere inside of herself she knew she was wrong and she deserved it. She didn't know why, she just felt it. She would have to follow these instinctual feelings she was having. And while she taught Haku, she would learn from her as well. After a few minutes, the toilet in the adjoining bathroom flushed and Haku came bounding out, looking over her shoulder fearfully with her ears laid back against her head, tail tucked between her legs. Anada wanted to giggle, but she decided against it as Haku, still glancing warily at the bathroom, settled next to Hinata. Anada smiled at Haku, who in turn looked up at Hinata in curiosity. I am just sorting out the clothes I have Haku. Haku tilted her head to look at Hinata before she picked up a summer dress and held it up to Hinata. Dress. She said definitively and Hinata nodded as she laid some of the other clothes down. Yes Haku, that is a dress. Haku reached over and picked up a pair of lavender panties and jiggled them by the waistband in front of herself. Panties. Hinata blushed lightly, then nodded with a half smile. Yes, Haku. Those are panties. Haku grinned as she rubbed her fingers across the soft material. Haku was wearing a pair of cotton bikini panties, the same ones Tsunami had given her, but these new ones were a mystery to her, as they were soft and her fingers slid across them and they made her skin tingle in pleasure. Anada wasn't paying attention, but she heard the slight rustle of clothing behind her. She didn't think much about it until she heard Haku pant lightly then yip, but not in what sounded like pain. Anada turned around and blushed scarlet instantly as she witnessed Haku rubbing herself through the panties she now wore until she had an orgasm, yipping in pleasure. The panties seemed to fit her nicely, hugging every inch provocatively, and obviously Haku liked the material. Anada, unsure what to do, sputtered for a few seconds, but then the look on Haku's face made her pause before Haku turned and bounded for the door to Hinata's horror yelling, Master, Master. Oh no. Hinata mumbled before she ran after the woman. Haku wait. Naruto had walked Shizun and Lady Tsunade to the door and agreed the story would be what they would use. And don't forget, I want Hinata and Haku at the hospital tomorrow so I can examine them both. This has been one strange day, Naruto. If I didn't know better I would say you planned this somehow as some elaborate prank. Naruto scoffed at this. Oh come on Bachan. What would make you think that? Haku came barreling out of the bedroom and raced down the stairs yelling, causing Naruto, Shizun and Sanadi to watch her, and Naruto got a look on his face as he thought he knew what was coming. Now Haku waits. Was all he got out as Haku barreled into him, knocking him down. This by itself wouldn't have been so bad if she didn't in the seconds he was trying to catch his breath unbuckle his pants and pull them to his knees. Even this wouldn't have been so bad if Naruto's mind hadn't anticipated what was about to happen and he got an erection. No, the bad part was when Haku in one movement pulled the panties off and mounted him right there in the living room in front of the Hokage and her assistant, moaning and yelping as she hammered herself down on him. Naruto raised one hand into the air shakily and grumbled. I can explain. But Tsunade merely laughed and shook her head as Shizun, blushing darker than a black cherry, pulled Tsunade away from the front door and closed it behind her. Tsunade's mocking laughter haunting him the rest of the evening despite the pleasure he was now feeling. Tsunade was still laughing as she and Shizun walked back to the Hokage mansion until Shizun finally turned on her. Have you no shame Lady Tsunade? That had to be horribly embarrassing for Naruto. Tsunade snickered again, then shook her head at her apprentice. Shizun. It isn't that I wasn't a little scandalized by that. It's just for a wild ride. Haku has no sense of propriety or timing, and if I'm correct, once Hinata goes into heat she won't either. 
Shizun frowned at this, then shook her head. I don't see where you're going with this. Why is that so funny? Tsunade put a hand on Shizun's shoulder and started laughing again. After all the pranks he's pulled on the villagers. Kami has just pulled the biggest one on him. Tsunade lost it and began to laugh hysterically, and Shizun wondered if her mentor had finally lost it. Tsunade laughed until all that was left was chuckles before she gasped out. Think about it, Shizun. A sexually and socially repressed man like Naruto, suddenly having two willing females who will jump him anytime, anywhere. He'll never stop blushing, and oh the stories this will cause. Shizun's understanding giggled a little, but to be honest, she felt sorrier for Naruto than anything else. Inada frowned as she stood on the second floor landing watching Haku ravage Naruto and felt a little surge of jealousy. She had always fantasized about her and Naruto in the same position. Well not quite in the living room at the front door. But the having sex part. Watching another woman do it was a little painful for her, but somewhere inside of her she felt a surge of happiness. As she analyzed it she realized why. Naruto was finally being treated as he deserved. He had love, he had status to some small degree, and he seemed genuinely content. Something she knew he never felt before. Anada pushed her jealousy aside and grinned at the two rutting on the living room floor. It was a strange feeling to be happy for something like this, but a lot had changed with her, and she wouldn't deny that seeing her master happy undoubtedly made her happy. Surprisingly, Hinata began to feel a little tingle in her belly as the aroma of their sexual activity reached her. She thought for a moment that it was not a big deal, so instead of acting on it, she walked down the stairs, went into the kitchen and began preparations for dinner. Oh. Naruto finally was able to satisfy Haku after her fifth orgasm, and she clung to him moaning and purring softly, head resting under his chin. He had to admit. He never saw his life being like this, but he wasn't going to complain. Definitely the most sex he ever had. It took a few more minutes for him to get his bearings before he stood up, picking Haku up with him. Haku opened her eyes and looked at him before he set her on her feet. Master. Naruto grinned at her, then kissed the tip of her nose, making her twitch her whiskers cutely, before he pointed to her discarded underwear. Panties Haku. Haku bent over, giving Naruto another erection and a good eyeful, and pulled the panties up her legs and snuggled them over her hips with a smile. Naruto couldn't help but grin at her as she took his hand and rubbed it against the material. Panties Master. Naruto grinned as he felt the material and nodded. They were definitely soft and they felt very nice as he rubbed them with his fingers. Yes, Haku. Panties. Soft panties. Haku blinked at the word then used it herself. Soft. Naruto nodded but then quickly stopped as he realized he was getting her worked up again as he was still touching her and his fingers were beginning to travel against his will. Naruto was happily saved as Hinata called from the kitchen. Dinner's ready. Naruto grinned as he trotted to the kitchen with Haku meandering behind him until he sat down at the table. Haku dropped to all fours and crouched at his side as Hinata served him a large plate of food that smelled and looked delicious. Where did you get all of these ingredients? I don't remember having all of this stuff. Hinata giggled cutely but then set a plate for Haku and then herself before she sat down. Well I hope you like it. Everything was in the refrigerator and cupboard so I guess at some point you bought it and didn't realize it. Naruto shrugged, but before he dug in, Haku looked at her plate on the table and frowned. Naruto blinked at her and her confused look. You can eat Haku. It's okay. Haku looked at him then at the plate, but refused to move from his side. Thinking he understood, Naruto pulled the plate over the table to sit it in front of her, then scooted a chair over so she could sit next to him. Haku began to grin as she sat on the chair the way Naruto and Hinata did and began to dig into the food with gusto, tail swinging happily behind her. Naruto looked over and thought he saw a sad look on Hinata's face, so he patted the table next to him. Come on Hinata-chan. There is plenty of room for the three of us. Hinata looked at the offered space and was sorely tempted, but she began to feel antsy, so she shook her head. No, that is alright Naruto-kun. I'm fine right here. Naruto blinked at her then nodded slowly. Oh. Okay. He said quietly and began to eat his food. Hinata could sense the sadness now coming off of her master like a bad odor, and it made her feel bad. Haku noticed immediately and put her hand tentatively on Naruto's arm. Master. Naruto smiled down at her before he rubbed behind her ears, making her twist her head in pleasure before he went back to eating. The sadness was obviously still there, and Naruto wondered what he had done to make Hinata not want to be near him. As he was lost in these thoughts, a hand on his left arm made him look up and see Hinata's smiling face looking at him. He was so absorbed by his own thoughts that he didn't even notice that Hinata had moved her chair over and her plate. With a happy grin, Naruto began to tear into his food. But Hinata was having trouble maintaining her composure. What started as a tingle had become a full-blown need that made her squirm uncomfortably against her chair and press her thighs tightly together. 
Naruto had not noticed yet, but it wouldn't be long before the pheromones began to make themselves known, and then a new dance would be brought forth. Hinata ate until she couldn't take it anymore. Her nipples were so hard they hurt, and almost every three minutes the surge would go through her making her want to cry out in need. If anyone has ever had a cat you know what I'm talking about. Hinata quickly excused herself, got up and she jogged to the stairs and ran up to the master bedroom and into the bathroom. Naruto looked at Haku who looked at him, and they both seemed to shrug. But before Naruto could continue eating, the smell hit him, and his senses expanded. Oh. Hinata pulled off the sweatpants she had put on earlier and had her panties down around her knees and was rubbing herself furiously. Never before had she been this wet or this much on fire. Her center burned with need and even after she had her first orgasm, it wasn't enough. She growled in frustration and began to rub again, using both hands to pleasure herself in hopes of quenching the fire burning in her loins. After her third orgasm, she whined in frustration as the fire seemed to get higher instead of smaller. She didn't know what to do. But she knew for a fact, she needed something. And instinctively her head snapped to the bedroom door as she sensed what she wanted. Naruto looked at Hinata's chair and noticed a wet spot on the wood. With shaky fingers he touched the spot with his fingertips before he brought them to his face and sniffed deeply. As soon as he did, the mating drive hit him and a fire made his blood boil and his head to cloud. Need. That was all it was. Pure and simple he needed the female that released these enticing juices. All thought for anything else gone, Naruto sucked the wetness from his fingers, then sniffed deeply until he picked up the trace of the hormones in the air and followed it into the living room and up the stairs until he entered the master bedroom. Haku with a grin pulled Naruto's plate over and began eating his food as well. She would satisfy her hunger first. As Naruto entered the bedroom his head swiveled to the bathroom and stared at the door for a moment before his face split into a grin. Reaching the door he opened it and Hinata glared back at him, growling and her claws bared. Naruto instinctively knew what he needed to do and stepped into the bathroom, eclipsing her in the doorway so she couldn't get away from him, but strangely enough, Hinata's tail lashed back and forth and did not curl to cover her maiden head at all. Naruto was not aware of this, only the smell of her need reached for her, but she sprang and grappled with him, her slight body bearing him surprisingly easy to the floor. Naruto in his surprise grabbed her hips and tried to hold her steady, but her feet stretched up his body until her claws had found purchase on his boxers, then shredded them in three deft movements. Naruto was only aware of the mating need, he was unaware of what Hinata was doing or even why. Before he knew what was happening she positioned herself, then drove her hips down on his tower, breaking through her barrier in one swift motion. Hinata threw back her head and cried out in pain as her clawed fingers dug into Naruto's shoulders, and Naruto growled deeply at the exquisite feeling of being deep inside of Hinata for the first time ever. It took a few minutes, but after the initial rush, Hinata began to ride Naruto with a passion growing out of need and traveling into full-blown lust. Naruto grunted and pushed up into Hinata over and over again, meeting her every downward thrust with one of his own upward ones until he was buried full length inside of her and neither could tell where one began and the other ended. At some point, Haku had returned to the bedroom and watched the two of them pound away at each other in rapture, and she had a small smile on her face. Hinata had coo more times than she could count, and still she wanted more, but now she had a need of another sword, as she threw herself backwards and pulled Naruto with her, and he began to slam down into her over and over again, until he finally released deep inside. With a bellow and clench of every muscle in his body, Naruto filled Hinata to the brim. Straining to get every last drop inside of her. Hinata breathed raggedly as she held him against her and wouldn't let go of him. Naruto did not mind at all as he stayed hard inside of her and began to push away again much to Hinata's pleasure. Naruto come. She dragged out as she felt every inch of him ravish her. This activity continued well into the wee hours of the morning until he and Hinata both lay panting, half asleep on each other. Haku had watched patiently with the same smile on her face. After they finally succumbed to sleep, Haku pulled a sheet over all three of them and curled up with her master and new sister. Tomorrow would bring more surprises, but for now, they would rest. Chapter 4. The two-hour nap does wonders for the body and mind. Not really. Naruto felt like shit, hammered twice and warmed once. Granted. It was well worth the exhaustion having madcap sex with Hinata, and Haku waking him up an hour later was nice too. But was a little sleep so much to ask for. The voice of his personal demon made him pause. Quit whining. It felt good, you liked it, and you didn't try to stop her. Be now that you are one and take your pleasures when you can and lick your wounds when you have to. Naruto made little sense of that but retaliated in the age-old tradition. Bullshit. Hey, I can't turn her down. It would make her sad and broken-hearted. I have to do right by my mates. They snickered down at him. Really. Now you have to do right by your mates, huh? Oh how the worm has turned. Naruto frowned at the phrase but understood the meaning well enough. 
With a shrug, he turned back outward and noticed Hanada fidget on the exam table as Haku played with one of the instruments on the wall that made a little light whenever you picked it up. He wasn't sure what it was called. But he never liked people sticking it in his ears. The three of them sat quietly in the exam room waiting for Tsunade to come perform whatever test she wanted, but Naruto was beginning to wish they had time for breakfast before leaving. It wasn't critical yet. But he could feel the beginning of hunger pangs and wondered if the girls did too. After a few moments, Naruto sighed as he looked at some of the magazines but didn't find anything that caught his attention, boredom starting to take hold. A slight whimper made him look at Hinata as she squirmed in discomfort on the chair and in his usual clueless way, he put a hand on her leg. Hinata's head jerked and looked at him and he could swear he saw a fire lit behind her eyes. Um. Are you okay Hina-chan? Hinata frowned then seemed to force herself to nod it seemed to him as she blushed slightly. Why yes Neru-kun. It's nothing. Don't worry. Naruto frowned as he watched her, but she continued to fidget, every so often moving her hips in one direction, before rubbing her bottom hard against the cushion of the exam table and trying to settle again, before she finally got up and sat on a chair, with the same results. Naruto shrugged before he stood up and went to look at a chart on the opposite wall. When she was ready, she would tell him. He didn't know how right he was. Aku came over and pat Hinata's arm lightly, and Hinata looked at the ice mistress. Haku grinned then pointed at Naruto before she said quietly, Master. Hinata looked at Haku in curiosity despite her predicament and Naruto grunted as he waved his hand over his shoulder. Yes, Haku. Master. Hinata blinked at Haku with a slight frown before she shook her head, but then a surge of what felt almost like pain made her lean forward and bite her lip so she wouldn't cry out. It was a strong surge from deep within her loins. A burning need again that made her take notice. Naruto had not picked up on Hinata's desire as yet. But Haku knew. Women were, after all, more sensitive than men. And most men were even more sensitive than Naruto, except when it was pointed out to him. Naruto wasn't stupid. Just uneducated and inexperienced. That will change soon. Reaching out, Haku put her hands on Hinata's knees and at her confused look, spread them open and pointed at Naruto again. Hinata tried to close her legs again, a huge blush on her face, but that damn surge came back again, making her desperately want it to stop, as she bit her lip painfully to stop from crying out. Haku looked at Hinata exasperatedly, pointing at Naruto with one hand before her other hand reached between Hinata's legs and pressed her center, and Hinata's eyes glazed over as the mating drive took her. Haku grinned happily as Hinata shuddered and began to pant before the ice mistress pointed at Naruto again and mumbled, Master. In a firmer sounding voice. Reaching up she began to unbutton Hinata's blouse. Naruto didn't answer this time, he just waved his hand over his shoulder. Haku called him that, asked him questions with that, his name to her was Master. Since he didn't sense or hear any anger, urgency or fear in her voice, he paid it no mind. A few seconds later he heard the rustling of clothes but didn't think about it until the smell hit him. Now my bad description aside, this wasn't a bad odor. Oh no dear readers. This was the most beautiful thing that caressed Naruto's olfactory senses and if he could smell this at least once a day, he would be happy for eternity. But back to the story. He took another experimental sniff and his blood began to boil as he slowly turned to see Hinata. Naked and Haku standing next to her smirking in a satisfied manner as she twirled Hinata's panties on her index finger. Naruto, despite the mating drive, became self-conscious it seemed and pushed himself against the wall and kept the exam table between himself and Hinata, who growled and stepped forward, her tail lashing. Not wanting to cause a real scandal, Naruto began trying to think of a way to do this and still keep their dignity, which neither Haku nor Hinata cared about at the moment and he fervently wished he could shunshin. Now Hinata. We can't. We're in the hospital, this isn't our house. People will see. But. Damn you smell good. He grumbled in a seductive growl as his nostrils flared. Hinata grinned as she growled back at him. Don't care. I need you now, master. I burn for you. Fill me now. She yelled as she reached for him, but he just barely pulled out of her reach. Naruto did this a few times before Hinata got frustrated and Haku did as well seeing her new sister in turmoil. Before Naruto knew what happened, Haku stepped back into an ice mirror and was standing next to him before she wrapped him in a tight hug. Haku. He asked with a little fear mixed in his voice. How did you do that? Wait. What are you doing? Haku grinned and nodded to Hinata before she turned and nipped Naruto's neck with her teeth, making him shudder. She could feel the need pouring off of Hinata and the desire pouring off of Naruto, but she also felt what seemed to be her master fighting it. And that would never do. Master. Hinata was all she said as if she were introducing them for the first time, just as Hinata crashed into him, taking them both to the floor as Haku let go with a giggle. Naruto was using all the willpower he had. 
but her insistence and his desire for Hinata finally won out, and he didn't fight anymore, as Haku and Hinata both worked his pants off, and Hinata mounted him and buried his shaft in her in one smooth stroke. If Naruto had more presence of mind, he would have noticed how wet Hinata was, but right at that moment, he didn't give a damn. Hinata hissed and shuddered in pleasure as she ground her pelvis into his, a happy grin now gracing her face as the need lessened and pure desire took over. Aku with a grin of her own bounced over and sat happily in the chair previously occupied by Naruto as Hinata began to make very similar yelping sounds that Haku made the previous day, butchers were intermixed with loud moans and groans as he either thrust up into her or she would slam her hips down against his. Naruto was almost beyond caring. Until the door opened and in stepped the one person he didn't want to confront again pertaining to this subject. What the hell is going on here? Naruto the pink-haired yelled. Now picture this if you will. You are Sakura, I know a sad prospect, but bear with me, you are making your rounds for your shift in the hospital when you pass by a closed door and you hear animalistic noises of rutting. Of course. This is a big no, no in hospitals or any public place for that matter, but it is in a closed patient exam room. But still with the exception you make, as Sakura, you hate perverts no matter the reason or who they are. That could of course be the side effect of being a repressed prude, but that is to be fathomed another day. So with a grimace you open the door, and the first thing you spot is a blonde head on the floor, sticking out from the edge of the bed, and a full head of blue-black hair, bobbing up and down over the top of the table, moaning in abandon. Then you recognize the face of the blonde. Your brother Naruto. Now. You know of his relationship with his new mate, but the hair color and style are different than what you remember, and then you see the full breasts as she throws her head back and moans deeply, still very much in motion as Naruto looks at you sheepishly. Oh oh oh. Shit was all he got out before you began to stomp over to him. Pain and mayhem on your mind so strongly that you don't even notice who the new floozy was or even that she had the same traits as Haku. Since her hair mostly covered her face. You didn't really care. Now let us return Sakura back to herself to continue the story. Sakura growled as she grabbed Naruto by the collar, but just as she was about to haul away and deal with what she thought was a cheating pervert, a familiar fist rocked her, making her stumble, before the follow-up left cross and Sakura flying into the wall. Aku sucked her teeth or made a sound very similar to that before she grabbed Sakura and threw her out of the room to crash into the counter, scattering paper and files everywhere. The nurses and a few doctors looked up in fear as Sakura cradled her now sore jaw at the person who could manhandle the overbearing pinket. Aku stood in the doorway in a purple dress, sans shoes and waggled a finger at Sakura before scolding her. No. Master. No. She said and her tail lashed with each word. Sakura blinked as she realized Haku was in the room when she walked in. So who was the other girl? The staff frowned while security and a few of the larger orderlies approached the doorway as Hinata started yelping and moaning again. Haku took a step back, but before she closed the door, she looked sternly at the collected people, voicing her opinion again. Haku master. Hinata master. No. Then closed the door with a loud bang which only drowned out the sounds of sex for a moment as everyone turned to look at Sakura, who was applying healing chakra to her sore jaw. Well you heard her. No. The staff at cared looked at her like she was stupid but would not argue with her. Sakura's temper was as famous as Tsunade's and no one wanted to deal with that. As the crowd dispersed, Sakura blinked as she thought back to Haku's words. Haku master. Hinata master. As she considered and thought, she figured she must have heard wrong. Although, the other girl's hair did look vaguely familiar. Sakura. Well smart, wasn't the brightest bulb in the package for some things. She walked off to tell them. Let her deal with this. It would save her bruises in the long run. The knock on the door facilitated Naruto to wearily groan out, come in. It had been 20 minutes since the instance with Sakura, and no one had the nerve to knock on or even approach the door. When it opened in strode Tsunade and Shizum, one smirking while the other sniffed and wrinkled her nose, the smell of recent sex as obvious as a thumb to the eye as Shizum closed the door behind her. Poor kid. She thought. If she only knew. Well Gaki. I hear you had another adventure today, and Haku got to give Sakura frostbite on her jaw again. The grin on Tsunade's face prevented Naruto from thinking she was angry, and the fact he was too tired to care helped too. Naruto groaned before he nodded, sprawled out on the exam table. Something like that. Hinata giggled and was grooming one side of Naruto, a content look on her face, while Haku groomed the other side, purring happily. Tsunade sighed as she saw despite him looking exhausted, Naruto looked in a way she had never seen before. Everyone who was a close friend or precious person to Naruto knew he wore an emotional mask and he played the idiot to help people to forget their problems for a time. So few people had ever seen Naruto's true face. Here in this examination room. Naruto, despite his exhaustion, had a smile gracing his lips as his two mates attended to him. 
Despite the strangeness of the situation, Tsunade was quite happy for her. It's about time Kami gave him a break. Tsunade hated to break it up. But she did have some tests she wanted to run on the two females. Besides, they could groom him later. Oh right off the table Naruto. I need either Hinata or Haku to strip and lie in your place so I can run these tests. Hinata nodded as Naruto got up and she took off her clothes and lay on the table in her panties and bra. Sanadi shook her head before she started pulling on latex gloves. Everything Hinata. I'm going to check those spots too. Hinata froze for a second, but after looking at Haku who followed her lead but was completely naked, she blushed lightly and took off her undergarments. Tsunade almost snickered but held it at Shizun's glare. It seemed Shizun was upset with her about something, but what was unknown. All three looked at Naruto as he muttered, Haku stopped. I'm not getting a physical. Haku had been undoing Naruto's shirt and tugging at his belt, and he kept trying gently to push her hands away. Tsunade smirked as Haku pouted at Naruto, but obeyed him just the same before he jerked his chain. You might as well strip to Naruto. I need to run some of the same tests on you. Naruto blinked before he looked at Shizun and shook his head. Uh, uh. Not gonna happen Bachan. Shizun Nichan has never seen me naked, and she's not gonna see it today either. Hinata giggled from her position on the table before she pointed at Naruto. Haku. Master. Haku grinned happily as her hands began to work at his clothes again. While this was going on and Naruto was half-heartedly trying to stop Haku, Shizun turned on Naruto. Don't think I won't help her get you naked Naruto-chan. It's for science and I don't think anyone has ever studied it before. On top of that we need to map the physiological changes in you. She said with only a slight smirk. Besides, I've seen it before. Yesterday, remember? And you aren't the first one I've looked at in my job. Naruto shook his head as he smacked Haku's hand away, but this time she giggled as she continued to pursue him. If you think I'm taking my clothes off in front of you then you are badier than Bachin after an all-night drinking binge. Naruto stuck his chin out defiantly as Tsunade glared at him before she reached into a drawer and pulled out a hypodermic as big as her forearm, and Naruto goggled at it. Did I mention that you were overdue for your booster shots? Tsunade's joke had its desired effect as it distracted Naruto long enough that Haku got a good grip on his pants, and off they came, tripping him to the floor as she pounced on him. Naruto hit the floor and tried to struggle away from her, but she crawled along after him, growling seductively. Master. Haku was definitely the more aggressive of the two, as her tail lashed the air in a playful rather than angry manner. Hinata glanced over and blushed with a smile as she watched Haku grip his boxers and pull them down off his hips, then followed him with another seductive growl. Hinata felt a little jealous because she wasn't sure how to move like that. But at that moment as Tsunade ran her diagnostic on her, she vowed she would learn. Shizun let out a slight giggle as Naruto yelped loudly. Haku had decided his butt looked good enough to eat and took a bite, causing him to scramble faster until he had nowhere left to go. Haku had cornered Naruto, and he looked around frantically for somewhere to escape to, as Haku grabbed his danglies in one hand and struck him with the other before she licked her lips in anticipation. Naruto's eyes rolled up in his head as Shizun blushed deeply and turned away. Same as other guys. Only much bigger. She thought as she focused on Hinata. The fox lord and Naruto grumbled as he watched the prissy behavior of his container and groused over it. Oh come on. If you really don't want to have sex with either of them, then just tell them that. You're alpha after all. A night or two without it won't kill any of us. But it will make them sad which will make you sad and uncomfortable, but cut the pussy behavior already. Naruto glowered at Mayobu before he shuddered. Haku had started using her mouth and she was very good despite her lack of education. Naruto chalked it up to the slightly scratchy feeling from her tongue before he focused on his captive. You know, for something supposedly smarter than me. You're pretty dumb. Ayubi blinked in surprise before lowering his head to Naruto's level. Wait. You're acting. Naruto poked himself in the side of the head and made a face at the. Duh. I may be slow. But I'm not stupid. Sex is better than Raymond any day. The fox frowned at his captor before he grumbled. Then why struggle and try to get away from them? Naruto cocked his head slightly as he looked at the fox, then shrugged. Two reasons. First reason is that they like it and try harder when I struggle. It's like a challenge for them I think so once we are finally doing it, they. We enjoy it that much more. The second reason I only noticed a little while ago. When Hinata was trying to get me, Haku helped her. So it is making them bond faster to help each other like this. The way I see it, me acting like a pussy is a win, win situation for all of us. The fox lord looked surprised before he threw back his head and roared in laughter. It took a few minutes, which Naruto didn't care about before Mayobu spoke again. Boy. You impressed me today. And here I thought your brain was only good as a paperweight. Naruto smirked before turning his attention back outward. A new understanding developing between the two. 
it seemed Hinata was done, and she was kneeling next to Naruto, just as Haku stopped and climbed up on the table in her place. Hinata without hesitation dropped down and took Haku's place, and he had to admit, they were both damn good at it. Maybe it was instinctual. Tsunade looked slightly annoyed, and Shizun still had her back to the whole thing, but Naruto for once actually didn't care who was watching. Tsunade grumbled at him as she was scanning Haku. You know. You could always just order them to stop. Naruto looked at Tsunade, then frowned. Bachin. He whined at his adoptive sister. I already told you that it would, uo, cause them pain and discomfort if I, gasped, told them no. I don't want to, oh Kami that's good, do that. Naruto smirked inwardly as Tsunade took a deep breath and sighed before she nodded. I know. I know. It's just a little disconcerting to watch someone you know as well as I know you bumping uglies with a woman, and the both of you are not more than six feet away from me. The Kaiubi began to howl with laughter again, as Naruto took advantage of his new mates and his physiology that no one in Kanoha understood. The boy was foxier than the Myobu had originally thought. He must have fox blood in him. Kaiubi rumbled to himself almost with a proud sounding voice. As Naruto sat there happily being serviced, he wondered what Hiashi would have done if Hinata had offered herself to him right there in front of him. After a few minutes he decided it was better they didn't find out. Yet. Hiashi shuffled a few pages on his desk before sneezing loudly. Wiping his nose, the head of the Hyuga clan figured it would be one of those days if he was sneezing already. Just as that thought passed his mind, his door opened, and a disheveled and almost frantic-looking Niji bolted in with a wide-eyed Tenten. It was true that Hiashi originally did not agree with Niji's engagement to the orphan, but after a few long conversations with his nephew and a time of candor Hiashi had agreed that Niji could make his own decision as to his future. Now however Hiashi was wondering at the severe breach of protocol on his nephew's point by charging into his presence. Niji. Are you back from your mission? Niji, not realizing his precarious situation, frowned and waved off Hiashi's words and bowled ahead. Is it true? Is Hinata really alive? Tenton stood behind her fiancé bobbing her head up and down with wide eyes, making it appear she was not in control of her own body, before Hiashi sat the cup down with a sigh and set two more in front of himself and filled all three with tea. After returning the pot to its holder he gestured to the mats in front of his writing table. Sit. Calm yourselves, this will not be a short conversation. Niji shook his head almost frantically as he blurted out, calm? How can I be calm? How can you be calm? I want to know about it was as far as he got before the lord of the Hyuga clan roared at him. Silence. Niji blinked in surprise, and Tenten seemed to shrink back behind Niji with a squeak, before Hiashi took a deep breath, held it for a five count, then released it looking much calmer. Now. Sit. I will explain as much as I know. Niji sat and Tenten hesitantly sat next to him, both staring at the Hyuga lord expectantly. After a few seconds he nodded to the tea in front of them, and both picked up their cups and drank before Hiashi nodded. Better. Now Niji you were not informed because only I and a few others knew what had transpired and you were on a mission. I am still a bit in the dark. But I will tell you what I know. Despite the questions they kept throwing at him, the Lord Hyuga was able to get through the story after 30 minutes. Both Tenten and Niji sat shocked as they digested what he had told them, but neither could honestly process it completely. Niji was the first to speak up afterwards. So. Naruto. Brought Hinata back to life. He asked a bit hesitantly. The Ashi carefully considered his nephew's words, then nodded slowly. In a sense. Yes. It was not done purposely, but it has happened. Hinata. Isn't herself either. She isn't the same young woman we are accustomed to. If you go and see her, remain calm and do not badger her with questions. I believe she may still be a bit disoriented from being alive again. Niji opened his mouth to speak, then stopped and closed it in thought, but almost immediately opened his mouth again, but nothing came out. The Ashi, seeing this, sighed. You are not to badger Naruto either. He doesn't know how this occurrence has happened, and neither does his resident. Be glad that it has happened, but do not push any of them for answers. In time they will come, and if not, then be happy that she is with us again. As am I I thought my heart would never heal, but it is a feeling I am glad for. The Ashi frowned as he thought about his third encounter with his daughter, the day she moved in with Naruto. Flashback. The branch members that helped him bring Hinata's clothes and other items to the Namaka's estate had departed, and Hiashi tried to talk to his daughter again. It is a very nice house. I remember it from the time I came to a party the fourth held. Hinata nodded but watched her father warily. While she was a new person, she knew the man was not adverse to lulling someone into a false sense of security before he came at them like a freight train. Yes it is. I still have not seen it all, but I plan on taking it all in a day at a time. The Ashi swallowed as he looked around and tried to find something to say but was having difficulty. He didn't know what to say to his own daughter, and at the moment he felt stupid. 
and useless. After a few pained seconds he blurted out. You look good, my daughter. And winced after he wondered why it was so hard to hold a simple conversation. And then he realized. Because I was a cold and cruel bastard to her when she was alive. He thought as he watched her looking at him. Anada for her part looked impassive as she watched him fumble with his hands. If anyone else had seen them, it would be like Hiashi's consciousness had inhabited Hinata's body and hers inhabited his. All Hiashi had to do now was blush and the universe would explode. Father. I appreciate you bringing me my clothing and personal effects, but why did you really come? Under normal circumstances you would have sent a branch member by himself. Not lowering yourself to common things. The ashy glanced at his feet for a moment before he stuttered, I, I have not told Niji or Hanabi of your return. I wanted to tell you in case you bump into them before I have a chance to explain to them what has happened. Anada blinked, then frowned as she absorbed his words, then shrugged. Then they will find out in due course. I will not hide from the public, and I will not pretend I am something I am not unless I command it. Anada's face was fixed in a neutral mask, and he ashy found himself wondering if this was how he made his daughter feel so many times as he lectured her in his study. Is that all? There are things I must do before the evening closes in. The ashy Hayuga tried not to frown, but he could feel his mouth trying to head in that direction as he once more had a revelation. Hinata was to him what he had always tried to force her to be. She was a cold, arrogant, Hayuga. He was beneath her notice, and she made no bones showing him that. Naruto and Haku walked in and both grabbed a few more bags and boxes, and Hinata's indifferent mask dropped away, and she smiled with sincere affection at them before they left the room again, and her mask returned as if it never left. Will that be all? The ashy did frown this time and nodded as he turned toward the door. A few long strides and his hand rested on the knob before he looked over his shoulder at Hinata. I, I would ask that you not hold anything against Hanabi. She took it very hard when you died, and I know it will bring back her happiness to see you again. Anada frowned before she shook her head. I will have to get permission from my master, but I am sure she will be welcome to come here anytime she wishes. The ashy nodded but added something that he was first hesitant to say. Yo. You could come visit her as well. He said hesitantly, still holding his position. Anada frowned deeply as she stared at his back. I thought I was not welcome in your house. The ashy looked down for a second and it was something he had not felt in many years. Indecisive. He had always been the clan head. So he thought and he was never in this position before. He had to appear strong and in command at all times. He was not allowed the luxury to be human. But for some reason when he looked back at Hinata now, he didn't see the fox ears, he didn't see the fur or the tail, he didn't even see the woman that she had grown into. What he saw was the seven-year-old girl that was crushed by her mother's death, and the six-year-old girl that helped her mother in the kitchen to bake cookies, and the five-year-old girl who slept on his lap as he poured over clan paperwork, and the four-year-old girl that always insisted on holding his hand when they walked through the garden. And the three-year-old that emulated him when he sparred with his brother, and the two-year-old who giggled when he would tickle her, and the one-year-old who called him Da through supreme effort by his wife to surprise him. And finally he saw the face that haunted him, and he came to a realization. He turned slowly and looked at his daughter, truly looked at her and saw why. It wasn't the clan or the elders that made him so cold and unyielding to Hinata all those years, but the realization that Hinata looked exactly as her mother did. Even more now than before. He realized that in his grieving mind and heart, it was like his wife was always there, but he couldn't talk to her anymore or do any of the things that he missed so much. And it had festered inside of him until it was easy to berate and scold her for anything, rather than support and nurture. Oh Izumi, he thought. I have been such a fool. Looking at her face, the corners of his eyes felt moist as he tried to speak what was for once in his heart and not in his mind. She would be so ashamed of me. Hinata blinked as she looked at her father. Pardon. The ashy looked up at Hinata and smiled softly, his face looking much different to her than she could remember. I said she would be so ashamed of me. Hinata in confusion took a step towards him, still frowning. Who do you speak of? And he ashy blinked once and a tear rolled down his face. Your mother. It would break her heart to see the way I have behaved and what I did to you. Anada's ears folded back against her head and her tail stopped moving as she rocked back on her heels. F father. What? Was as far as she got as the lord of the Hyuga clan, seemed to rush forward and wrapped his arms tight around his daughter much to her surprise and held her close to him. What surprised her more were the tears that now wet her shirt and the uncomfortable feeling she got as she realized her father. Was human. Anada chan My daughter. Please forgive me. I tried too hard to be the head of the clan, then being what I should have been to both you and Hanabi. Your mother's death left me empty, so I thought all I had left to me was to be the clan head. When my focus should have been my family. Hiashi leaned back and looked at his daughter and forced a smile to his face. 
I don't expect you to love me or even like me after the cruel things I have said and done to you. But if you could find it in your heart to let me try and be a father to you again, it would be more than I deserve, and I vow never to desert you again. Anada's features softened before her arms wrapped around her father, and she nodded. We will try again, father. If only so that Naruto-kun will know what it is to have a father figure in his life. Then perhaps I can once again feel like your daughter. Naruto smiled and nudged Haku away from the doorway as Hinata and her father whispered quietly to each other, and for once, he was glad to see Hinata and her father talking to each other. Present. After the talk they had Niji nodded and with a silent tenton and toe, left the Hyuga clan estates and walked toward the recently occupied Namika's estates, hoping this wasn't some odd joke or misunderstanding. It would be too cruel. Too painful, and someone would have to suffer immensely for it. He would get answers. Somehow. Tsunade frowned as she looked at the test results, then shook her head and read them again. The boy could fall in a pile of shit and come up with diamonds. I swear. She thought with a hint of envy. Tsunade shook her head again before she looked at a once again content Naruto. Haku and Hinata both lay partially sprawled on his lap, curled around him like he was a giant teddy bear, both purring quietly as his hand stroked their sides. She figured she might as well get it over with. Well Gaki. It seems your resident gave you a lot more than just his chakra usage and healing. At Naruto's raised eyebrow, Tsunade looked at the report again. I don't know if you realize this. But you aren't aging and as far as I can tell you nor Hinata and Haku ever will. Naruto blinked as he looked inward. You didn't tell me that. Myobu looked at him sleepily, then shrugged. You're a half-demon. Common sense should have told you that your lifespan would increase significantly. Besides, you were more worried about becoming stronger, not how long you would live. Naruto blinked as he acknowledged that fact then nodded. And you did tell me that I wasn't supposed to change because there wasn't a suitable female nearby. The fox lord nodded as he looked at Naruto. Well it may not seem like a good thing, you will not be alone, and you could still have children. Lots of them. Although they would all be as well. Naruto wasn't concerned with what they would be so much as they would be strong and healthy. He wanted his children to live long and happy lives. And it looked like that was pretty much assured now. And you are guaranteed to get Hinata or Haku are both pregnant. Although I am not sure why neither are pregnant yet. Which brings me to the bad news. Naruto blinked at that and his eyes focused on Tsunade again. Bad news. Tsunade nodded. The council wants to speak with you. A meeting has been scheduled for tomorrow. Naruto frowned as he considered the implications of that then shrugged. Whatever. What do they want? Tsunade frowned as she closed the folder and sat it on the exam table. There is a fear that you have become the demon but do not have full control of its powers yet. Before he or Hinata could begin to make a fuss, Tsunade held her hands up to them to calm them. I won't let anything happen to any of you. Despite your sexual activities I am quite fond of you Gaki and Hinata was one of my best shinobi and I won't let anything happen and won't let anyone hurt you. Naruto's mind began to process everything but was interrupted by it again. The meeting tomorrow isn't just about that though. You have the house and your inheritance from your parents. But if all goes well they will want to discuss your vacant seat on the council. So everything will go great or everything will go sour. Naruto grumbled, but Hinata and Haku made him smile again as they fussed over him. Alright Bachin. Then I guess we have a date with the council tomorrow. Tsunade stopped him again and he frowned. Now what? Tsunade smirked as she pointed to Haku and Hinata and shook her head. They have to stay home. Hinata sat up quickly and shook her head. No. Narukun needs us there. Tsunade frowned and tried to be as delicate as possible. Which wasn't much. And how do you think the council will feel once you or Haku or both of you jump him in the middle of the meeting? Well Shizune and I are more understanding. Those bunch of old prudes forgot what sex and youth was long ago. Hinata blushed deeply, but her eyes became vague, and she purred loudly as Naruto and Tsunade both could imagine what was in her mind. After a few seconds Haku poked Hinata in her side and grinned at her before she rested her hand on Hinata's right breast. Master. She purred seductively at Hinata before she wiggled her eyebrows at her. Hinata blushed again, then bit her bottom lip as she looked into Naruto's eyes. Haku is right, Naru-kun. Was all she said before she grabbed his crotch and rubbed it hard. Naruto groaned then Hinata added her voice to Haku's as they both began to rub him the right way. Master. They purr growled together as Naruto became mostly boneless, eyes rolling up in his head, and his pants and boxers seemed to fall off by themselves. They seemed to be doing that a lot lately. Tsunade blinked before she grabbed the folder and stomped out of the room. Kami I'm still in the room with you three. Before she slammed the door behind her. The head nurse looked at her in surprise before Tsunade pointed at her and growled. Don't. You won't hear anything from in there for the next. Tsunade looked at her watch then banged on the door. You got 30 minutes Gaki. Oh, oh okay. 
Naruto's quivering voice came from the other side of the door as Haku began yelping in pleasure, and Sanadi palmed her face and wondered if she could apply for early retirement as she did her best not to stomp away in anger embarrassment and failed miserably. They didn't go for a marathon session, but they were definitely happy and out of the hospital with five minutes to spare. Of course getting Haku back in her panties was a little difficult because she wanted to keep them off. But her walking down the street twirling her panties on her index finger was a sure way to get more than a few looks that they didn't need right now. Naruto finally got firm with her and she pouted but put her undergarment back on. You can take them off again when we get home. He told her which she smiled at. It seemed she understood the emotion if not the words. It was only 3 pm and the three of them were lazing about in the living room. Baku was naked as soon as they walked into the house and Naruto had to admit. He wanted to be comfortable too. As soon as he had his pants off. Well Hinata was still in heat and it didn't take her long to begin burning for him and giving off copious amounts of pheromones. At that point to make matters more interesting. Haku hopped the couch and began undressing Hinata. This time around however it was rather quickly that she was helping Haku pull the bulky, uncomfortable clothing off. Naruto stood patiently. For him. And when they were all naked, he took off running through the house, a mad giggle trailing behind him. Catch me if you can. Aku and Hinata looked at each other, then growled and took off after him, silent communication between the two showing their mutual agreement. Their master was dead meat. He would be lucky to be able to twitch when they were done. Naruto laughed like a maniac as he raced through the upstairs of the house, all the while the fox lord playing the Benny Hill theme in his mind. Look it up if you want. It's pretty appropriate here. Ah my boy. This is life. The hunt, the chase, the capture. And with a snicker Naruto mumbled, the sex. And my obu smirked that too. Naruto was running through the master bedroom when Haku stepped out of an ice mirror in front of him and he had to ask himself again how she did that. Deciding to worry about it later he tackled her, rolled her over and tied her hands behind her with her tail before he jumped out of the window and kept running. Haku twisted and turned but was having trouble getting her tail loose without pulling it too hard and hurting herself. Yes. I know because of cartilage and the way joints are made that it would be almost impossible to do that, but it's a story damn it not real life. Hinata bolted into the room and heard her new sister whimper, and even in her heat, she smiled sympathetically at her and helped her get her tail loose. Haku grinned as she stood again and growled lightly. Master. And Hinata nodded in agreement. Let's go get some milk him. Haku emulated Hinata's nod as they both dived out of the window and got back on Naruto's trail. Niji and Tenten knocked on the front signal board on the front gate, but no one answered or asked who was there, so they frowned at each other until they heard a familiar voice bellow, tally ho. Niji blinked and his mouth dropped open as he saw a very naked Naruto run across his roof and jump down the other side of the house. But the blink Niji looked at Tenten, but her open mouth shock stopped him as she grabbed his sleeve and began jerking on it. What Tenten? What? He practically shouted at her, but her pointing finger made him look again, and this time his mouth hung even further down as he watched a female that looked too much like Hinata not to be. Also naked. Follow the way Naruto had run. But another dark-haired, equally naked girl hot on her heels calling out, Master. Now. Niji was a fairly reasonable guy. What two adults did with each other was their business. Even if it was more than two. But one of those two adults was a woman who had been dead for some time, now returned to life and running around naked at his friend's house. Add to that this woman was also like a sister to him. Threw all reason and common sense out of the window. Niji wasn't sure what was going on, but he was certain this wasn't what Hiyashi had meant when he said that she had changed. Hinata would never do something like this, so she must be under some kind of control. Which made Niji lose what was left of his common sense. Three heartbeats later, Niji was over the wall with Tenten not far behind, chasing after Kami knows what across the Namika's grounds. Naruto thought he had lost them and was doubling back to the house when a weight caught him in his side, knocking him to the ground. Naruto grunted as he looked down at the grinning face of Hinata, her eyes shining in happiness and the look he learned to recognize recently. Lust. I caught you, can I keep you? Naruto grinned and nodded to her, just as Haku's mouth found him as always. He wondered if he could get any luckier than having two of the most beautiful women in the world love him so completely when Hinata pouted at Haku. Sister. Share. Haku looked at her curiously, then gave him another long slurp before holding his erect shaft straight for Hinata, who happily mounted him, then giggled as Haku moved it a little, so she didn't quite capture him. No silly. That's not where it goes until later. Right now this is where it goes. She hissed as she sank all the way down on him, and Haku let her begin to ride. Haku, not to be left out, knelt next to Naruto's side and began to rub herself vigorously, but just as she started to yelp, Naruto grasped her hips and pulled her closer until she was poised above his head. This. 
Haku had never done it before and was not sure what to do or what was going to happen. She blinked down nervously at Naruto and whined pitifully. M Master. It was natural, even instinctual for her to take him into her. Her vagina, her mouth, or even that other spot of her master desired. But it was not natural for her to have this done to her, and she began to worry and become frantic. Naruto only smiled as he pulled her down further, and then Haku arched her back and barked as his tongue began to flick in and against her. This felt better than her hand, and she was suddenly in the throes of an orgasm that made her shudder and yip in pleasure before she collapsed off of him, panting heavily. Her limbs felt like rubber, and her heart pounded in her chest, but there were no complaints coming from her now. If anyone could read her thoughts, the only thing there would be her desire to do that again. Meanwhile, Hinata had been hammering herself harder and harder and was just getting to where she was close to an orgasm when a voice interrupted all of them. W what the hell. Niji stood there at the corner of the house, a look of shock and rage on his face, as he watched Hinata bury Naruto's bone deep inside of herself, her chastity obviously gone. But no thought to what was going on Niji shouted in rage. What goes on here? Naruto, still very much enjoying himself, tried to think of something intelligent to say, but all that came out was, um. It's not what it looks like. Tenten leaned around Niji with a smirk, a slight blush on her cheeks. Tenten was always a little more progressive than she let on. So you and Hinata aren't boinking. Naruto frowned as Hinata turned with no shame evident and looked at them. In a gasping voice she said, no. We are doing that. Before she yelped as he hit a particularly pleasurable spot. Naruto groaned deeply before he said, okay. In that case it is what it looks like. But Niji began to tremble in rage just before he screamed out, Naruto. And Naruto wondered why his days always ended up with him having sex or someone trying to kill him. Chapter 5. Aku was still slowly getting her breathing in order so she could think straight again, and Hinata was too busy enjoying the feel of Naruto's meat stick plumbing her depths, so Naruto was forced to defend himself, which isn't easy, while you are buried to the hilt in someone and lying on your back. Niji jumped and tried to stomp down on Naruto's head, but Jinchuriki rolled to the side and got to his knees before he connected. Instantly Niji tried for a palm thrust again to Naruto's head, but Naruto turned away from the strike and stood to his feet in an awkward stance. You'd think the easiest thing for Naruto to do would be to put Hinata down. But never let it be said that Naruto did things the easy way. In his awkward situation, Naruto assumed the stance of the tiger, while still in the stance of the beast with two backs. This in itself would have been impressive if Hinata hadn't moaned. Narukun. Please go faster master. Niji's face was set in a grim mask, which immediately flushed into anger again as his fists clenched. Naruto frowned in worry as the high Uga prodigy took up the primary stance of the gentle fist. It wasn't that he was worried for himself, he and Niji had spared many times, but Niji might actually hit Hinata accidentally, and he couldn't have that. Now Niji. You need to calm down. You don't understand something obviously. Naruto said it was rather calmer than he felt. Niji growled as he continued to glare at Naruto. I understand everything I need to. Now put Hinata down. Wet squishy sounds were coming from Hinata as she still had not been dislodged, nor did she want to be it seemed as her arms and legs were wrapped around him tightly, every so often making a groan or sigh of pleasure as Naruto moved inside of her. Oh, Naru-kun. Rock my world some more. She moaned out. Naruto quietly grumbled at her as Niji's face got even angrier, which didn't seem possible, but obviously was. Hina-chan. You're not helping. Hinata, mistaking his comment for something else, began moving harder and faster, getting him as deep inside of herself as she could. Ooh oh. Then I'll try harder. Naruto, of course, was having a difficult time concentrating with the new sensation, and as he stumbled, Niji's hand came in a straight line towards Naruto's face. And was caught by the wrist and stopped less than an inch from hitting his nose. Naruto and Niji both blinked and looked at the owner of the hand who was glaring at Niji with a snarl. While Haku enjoyed the orgasm that Naruto had given her, she was still aware enough to know when her master was in trouble. And she wouldn't stand for anyone hurting her trying to hurt him. But the curl of her lip Haku calmly said, no. Touch. Master. Which surprised Naruto because he hadn't heard her use that word before. At which point Hinata chimed in, yes Haku. Narukun is our master. Woo. Haku nodded her head in agreement with her. Niji blinked again in confusion, just as Haku tried to knock his jaw into left field. Niji was taken by surprise by the punch, but even he wasn't stupid enough to not acknowledge the strength behind the blow. Niji righted himself in the air before he landed on his feet and skidded back until he dug his toes in and stopped his momentum. His jaw felt loose and a couple of teeth on the same side as well, prompting him to move said jaw around. Niji was now pissed, but he had multiple targets. While well, he knew the strength and endurance of Naruto, he knew nothing about this other girl who must be Naruto's mate as Hiyashi had told them. 
but Aodafati made a straight line to Haku who with a lash of her tail charged at him. Naruto was on the verge of charging them to stop the fight when Tenten pulled out a handful of kunai and Naruto yelled at her. Tenten don't you dare. Tenten looked at him incredulously before she took a defiant stance and glared at him. Why not? She attacked Niji. Naruto would have rolled his eyes if not at that moment Hinata rolled her hips, creating a new set of sensations Naruto couldn't resist. Oh damn that feels good. He groaned as his eyelids fluttered. The blushing Tenten growled at them. Hey. Hello. I can see you both. Hinata moaned before she held Naruto even tighter. Then go away. Before Tenten or even Naruto could reply, Haku's cry of pain shocked everyone to where Haku and Niji were battling. Haku had put up a good fight. Her feral instincts coupled with her bloodline made her very formidable, and Niji always respected strength. She was fast, she was strong, and she was definitely tough, but after a few seconds he saw the holes in her defense. Niji snuck under her guard after she tried to claw him and tapped her left shoulder three times. When Haku's arm went dead, she still fought, but it was a losing effort as Niji struck point after point until he had Haku wobbling on her feet, hardly able to stand or control her own movements. Niji was content to leave her in this state and address his supposed problem with Naruto, but as he took two steps Haku in a last desperate effort, slashed Niji across the back, opening long bloody wounds down his right shoulder to his waist. Niji grunted out before he turned and struck at her in anger, only to strike Haku in the throat with a reverse knife-edge strike. Niji stopped shocked as Haku fell in slow motion to the ground. Her lunging effort because of her being closed had taken her lower to the ground than normal, and Niji had been aiming for where her shoulder should have been, intending to knock her to the ground. Haku let out a strangled scream, then collapsed in a heap on the ground. Her breath coming in short choked gasps as Naruto finally manhandled Hinata off of him and fell to his knees at Haku's side, Hinata herself falling next to him as she caught her breath. Haku. Haku breathe. Naruto yelled. Hinata growled as she looked to where the strike had hit Haku, the skin already dark from the developing bruise, but even as she began channeling her chakra to help heal, she glared vehemently at her cousin, who looked as if he had been handed a death sentence. I didn't mean to. She clawed me and I wanted to stop her. Hinata's glare intensified as Haku began to breathe easier, and Naruto kept contact with his two mates and would not look at Niji, trying to keep Haku focused on him. Haku. Look at me Haku. Who's your master? Haku shakily raised her arm and pointed at Naruto before she said in a raspy croak, Master. Naruto smiled at her and nodded, Yes Haku. Master. Your master. Hinata still glared angrily at Niji, but her hands did what she wanted them to, as Tenten approached and stood by Niji, checking the claw marks on his back. After a few seconds she realized they were only shallow cuts and only needed minor attention. She hurt him. Was all she could say as Naruto finally looked at both of them and they flinched back. Naruto's eyes were the foxes, and they knew from past experience that when Naruto was like this, he was royally pissed. Naruto began to stand, and the shroud of the fox slowly closed over him as Niji and Tenten stepped further away from what they knew would be the beginning of the end, but a hand on his leg made Naruto stop, and then another higher up on his leg made him turn and look at his two women. Haku looked like she was having difficulty swallowing, but her breathing had returned mostly to normal. Hinata still looked angry, but her eyes had softened considerably as she looked at Naruto. Master forgive me, I know you are angry, but let me handle this please. Naruto stared at her for a few seconds, then took a deep breath and released a shroud of doom as he knelt near Haku again with a slight nod. Hinata pecked Naruto on the lips, then kissed Haku on the forehead before she stood and glared at Tenten and Niji in righteous indignation. What the hell do the two of you think you are doing? You entered our property, you attacked Nerukun, you hurt my new sister, and you interrupted my pleasure. Both Tenten and Niji blushed at the last part of her sentence, but Hinata was far too angry to take note or care. No one invited you in, and no one at this moment wants you here. Niji blinked and Tenten, despite her tough exterior, flinched away from Hinata as her voice climbed higher, but Tenten finally found her voice and tried to plead their case. We. We wanted to see you. We attended your funeral and when I saw you the other day. When we heard you were alive. Niji nodded quickly. Hiyashi-sama told us what happened and we came to see it for ourselves, to welcome you back. And then we saw you chasing Naruto across the roof naked. And I thought. Well it looked like. Hinata growled as she stomped forward one step. That's always been your problem Niji Nyasen, you never knew when to keep your opinion to yourself until you learned the facts. Haku and I are Naruto's mates. He is our master and I don't give a good bloody damn what you think about it either way. What we do is our business and if you don't like it, then you can get the hell out and not come back. Niji took another step back in shock. What? Naruto's mate. Both of them. He's their master. And the way she is yelling. She has changed a lot. What has happened to my Shyamato? But before Niji could open his mouth to say anything Hinata shut him up again. 
my life, now and even before are my own. My mates and my happiness are all that matters to me. We will be happy, with or without your help. Niji got his bearings and tried to pull ahead. What about your family? Don't we mean anything to you anymore? Anata sighed before she nodded slightly. Yes you do matter to me, but when I became Naruto's mate, he and Haku became my new family. They are and always will be my number one priority. I don't want to forsake anyone, especially now that father and I have opened a new and better relationship. But I won't let anyone or anything jeopardize what is most important to me. Anata said this in a firm voice, something she had never done in the past, shocking both Tenten and Niji even more, and making Naruto smile proudly. Tenten blinked in astonishment, and Niji half turned his head away in embarrassment, even as her words sank in. Hinata stood glaring up at him, and when she had stabbed her finger at them to make a point, her big beautiful breasts bounced in response. She was still butt-ass naked. Niji's thoughts almost gave him a nosebleed as he saw Hinata as some tiny Amazon woman. Her ears laid back and her tail lashing angrily, and his face darkened even more as he tried not to look at her. Hinata realized something was amiss with their reaction and touched herself before she blushed and snickered. Well I would be dressed if you had been properly announced instead of just barging in. But the final lash of her tail, Hinata went over and knelt next to Haku again, Naruto smirking on the other side. You look good naked. Hinata blushed more than stuck her tongue out at him. We'll finish that later. The look in her eyes to Naruto made him perfectly aware of what would happen later. Niji was still a bit flustered as his sister knelt there completely naked and began to groom the other woman, who in turn sat up and seemed to fuss over Hinata, calming her so her fur lay smooth again. Naruto looked over at Niji and Tenten and frowned. You know. This wouldn't have pissed me off so badly if you didn't automatically put me in the position of a rapist or molester. I would never hurt Hinata and I sure wouldn't trick her into something like this. You should know me better than that by now. Both of you should. He said with a slight glower. Neither Niji nor Tenten could meet his gaze as they both felt ashamed of their actions against their friend. Besides which, Hinata isn't really part of the Hyuga clan anymore, your uncle, her father acknowledges her as my mate. Maybe you should too. Niji contemplated that then took in Hinata, Naruto, and Haku's appearance and understood somewhat now when his uncle told them that she was different. The ears and tail were a dead giveaway and the contented purrs of both women could not be avoided in any way. Things had definitely changed. And this would take some getting used to. Before anyone could say anything, Hinata and Haku both seemingly at the same time moved and began grooming Naruto, who despite his earlier anger, smiled at the two and began purring himself, although it sounded more like a bass rumbling than a purr. Fenton actually smiled as she watched before she whispered to Niji. It's like a pack. They tend to each other the way cats or dogs would, making sure each is happy and comfortable. Niji blinked, then actually smiled too, as he watched the three totally ignore them and tend to each other with soft touches and nuzzles. In a way, he was jealous of Naruto because the man was completely lost in the attention of the two women and he seemed completely happy. Despite his vehement argument if you asked him, the thought of having two women was something that had been on his mind for some time. If only Tenten wouldn't cut his nuts off for the suggestion. This was only compounded by the knowledge that Tenten was not the wilting flower type. She wouldn't wait for him to fall asleep, oh no. She would grab his danglies in one hand and start sawing with a dull knife in the other while he was awake and watching if he was dumb enough not to run. And speaking of nuts, as they stood there in wonderment, Haku cup said testicles of Naruto and purred his name. Well the name she gave him anyway. Master. Naruto groaned in pleasure as Haku leaned down and began to lick him from left to right, her hand stroking him firmly. Hinata, not to be left out, pushed Naruto onto his back as her heart began to overtake her again. In the blink of an eye she was on the verge of straddling Naruto's face while he grinned at her. Is it later already home? Hinata smirked down at him from between her legs and nodded. No time like the present Naru-kun. Hinata was almost in position when she saw Niji and Tenten staring in open mouth shock at them from the corner of her eye. With a grunt she addressed both in a voice reminiscent of a schoolteacher scolding a student. What? Go inside already. We'll be there soon. And then settled herself with a groan on Naruto's tongue and his hands clasped her thighs, rubbing them firmly as his tongue worked its magic. Niji turned and strode quickly to the back door of the house, but then stopped and had to go back and drag Tenten away from the spectacle as she seemed to be unable to move on her own. Niji was sure he was going to have to wash his eyes with dish detergent later to get the image that was now burned there to go away. Later after some explanations had been made, clothing was put on, much to Haku's displeasure, and questions answered, the three sat on the couch across from Tenten and Niji, sipping coffee or tea, depending on the person's personal taste. It was Tenten that broached the subject that Niji was still trying to forget he saw. So you're in heat. Hinata's smirk and light blush was all the confirmation she needed for that question, but the next one was a bit harder. What is that like? 
I mean I had a cat that would go into heat and she would drive us crazy at night. Anada frowned as she considered then answered the best she could. It's like a driving need. When it happens, I have to have Meru come. It doesn't matter where we are or who is around. It has to happen. Or else I'm in something very similar to pain and it won't go away until it is satisfied. Henton nodded thoughtfully as Niji tried not to turn green. Naruto sat quietly, Haku purring against his neck as he held her. I still don't fully understand it all, but when they go into heat it's almost impossible to control the urge. I have to have them as well. Sometimes both of them at the same time. Although Haku usually joins in because she wants to. I think she just enjoys it more than normal. Henton snickered as she looked craftily at the three then at Niji from the corner of her eye. So it could happen anywhere. At any time. Anada nodded as she touched Naruto's leg and he smiled at her. Yeah. It happened at the hospital earlier today. Sakura caught us and then again twice in front of Bachin and once in front of Shizun. He said before he snickered at Hinata's blush. Niji gagged for a second and set his teacup down, definitely looking off kilter now. The man pressed his lips tightly together and crossed his legs as he did his best to stay focused on the coaster on the table in front of him. If any of them were mind readers they would have heard the man's thoughts clearly. Dear Kami. Not here. Not now. Not again. Please. Anada leaned over and rubbed her forehead against Naruto's shoulder with a content purr and he smiled down at her before looking at Tenten and Niji again. It hasn't been easy mind you. This new feeling and, well. Basically new life has been a little hard to adjust to. But it isn't like we have a choice. It's who we are now and we're gonna make the best of it. Tenten nodded with a happy smile. In truth. While it had shocked and slightly embarrassed her, Tenten really didn't care that they looked different or even acted differently. It was still Naruto and Hinata to her, and it was good to see the one back in the flesh again, and the other genuinely happy. I'm happy for you, all three of you. But the smirk at the still green around the gills Niji she said with a bit of humor in her voice and a wink of her eye, as always if you need anything, you know where to find me, and I am glad to help in any manner at all. Niji blinked at the word anything, and his head snapped around to look at Tenten when she said any manner. At this point, he didn't even see that she was still smirking at him as he exploded. Wow. Any. No. Tenten broke up in one of the loudest laughs she ever let out before and was soon joined by Naruto and Hinata, and eventually Haku. Who wasn't sure what was going on but laughed anyway. Niji, despite seeing the four laughing, pointed a shaking finger at Tenten before he rose to his feet, back ramrod straight. If you think for one minute that we. And them. And us. Or you. And not me. Tenten was now waving her hand at him while her other hand held her stomach as she began to cramp up from the laughter that refused to stop. Oh, Niji. Chuckle, sometimes, snicker, you are, snort, so easy. Guffaw. Niji, still frowning, blinked, then looked from each face and realized what had happened. Grumbling he straightened his shoulders before brushing off his robes and restoring his dignity. HMPH. Fine. I am returning home so I will not be the further butt of your jokes. And haughtily turned and strode to the front door. Followed by renewed and even louder cackles of uncontrolled mirth. Niji before reaching the door turned and glared at them, completely oblivious to the reason for the renewed laughter. Niji stood with his hands fisted at his sides breathing hard until Tenten came to him, hands in front of her in a peace offering, until she reached behind him and pulled a piece of toilet paper about eight inches long out of the back of his pants and held it up to him. Apparently Niji missed that on his last trip to the bathroom. Niji, now completely red-faced again, took a deep breath, then let it out with a sigh. I'm still going home. He said before he turned again and headed out the front door. Tenten waved at the three, still laughing as she closed the door behind herself. It took a while, but Hinata and Naruto finally calmed down as the three cuddled on the couch, only occasional giggles still burst forth from time to time. Poor Niji. And he tried to look so serious. Hinata said as she started to laugh again. Naruto nodded as he held his two girls' clothes before kissing both of them on the cheek. Yeah. That was almost as good as one of my pranks. Wish I had been the one who did it. Hinata frowned for a second as his word sunk in. Well I didn't do it. Naruto now blinked at Hinata with a frown of his own as he leaned back from her. Wait if I didn't do it, and you didn't do it. Both of their heads turned to look at a very innocent looking Haku who rubbed her neck where Niji had struck her earlier. If Naruto and Hinata didn't know better, or so they thought, they could swear that Haku had a self-satisfied smirk on her face. But that couldn't be. Could it? After another hour of them caressing and lots of purring, the three finally got up to move to the bedroom. With a light touch on a wall by the door, some seals became active and glowed for a few seconds before fading again. There. Defenses are in place. Let's crash. Anada looked at Naruto as they got to the stairwell. Naru-kun. How did Niji and Tenten jump the wall? I thought the estate was protected at all times. 
Naruto shrugged sheepishly before he answered her. Well. The estate is defended at all times, against outsiders. I never thought I would need to have permanent defenses in place to stop my friends from entering. I guess I will have to do something about that to prevent this from happening again. Hinata nodded as Haku bounded up the steps, depositing her dress on the railing. As Hinata reached the top of the landing, she picked the dress up and draped it over her arm and shook her head at her sister. As Naruto reached the landing, a damp object smacked him in the side of the face, followed by Haku's giggle. Blinking, Naruto took the object off of his shoulder and looked at it, realizing it was his mate's panties, before his eyes strayed to the naked as a jaybird Haku. Haku had taken up a perch on the inch-wide railing on the second floor and was wiggling her naked bottom at Naruto. Master. She purred seductively at him, her tail lashing the air in anticipation, as he could see the obvious excitement on her nether lips. Hinata giggled as Naruto's nostrils flared as he watched her, before Hinata rolled her eyes and smacked Haku on her backside as she walked by. Haku screeched loudly and her tail shot ramrod straight into the air and poofed up a bit as her legs muscles bunched up under her. Naruto grinned as he saw what was coming just as the ice mistress leapt and tackled Hinata, both rolling into the bedroom amongst giggles and cries of mock protest. Naruto chuckled as he almost skipped into the room after them, a big grin on his face as he anticipated the night's activities. The next morning found the trio getting ready for the day. Breakfast was a delicious affair as Hinata made Naruto waffles and bacon while he was in the shower, then helped him scrub his back. And other areas she thought were dirty. Some more than others. Much more. It became a long shower made much longer once Haku joined in. Haku of course giggled and squirmed more than washing, which bothered no one, but it did make the shower more enjoyable, despite taking almost two hours to finish it. As they were finishing breakfast, the sound board at the front gate activated and Naruto jumped up to get it. Looking out the window he smirked, then deactivated the estate's defense seals and opened the gate. Company Hina-chan. Time to get dressed. Anada grumped at him before she gestured at Haku. Come on Haku. Let's put clothes on so we are somewhat decent to outside folk. Haku blinked at her before snatching another piece of bacon and bounding after her sister with something that sounded very much like her saying, okay. Naruto smirked before he opened the front door and bowed politely. Good morning Hiyashi-sama. What brings you here to my humble home? Hiyashi smirked as his eyes traveled briefly around the estate, taking in how large it was before smirking. I have a council meeting this morning, Naruto-san, which I am sure you are aware of, since you are also involved in it, and I thought you and I could converse about going to that meeting. The biggest reason I came by however is the shy quiet one that is hiding in my shadow. Come out of Hanabi. Said girl stepped out from behind her father but said nothing to either man as she stood there with her arms crossed. Hanabi, do not be impolite. While it was not said loudly, the sternness in Hiyashi's voice was obvious. Hanabi frowned before she bowed slightly to Naruto. Good morning Naruto-san. The words were almost inaudible but the barely concealed anger surprised him as he caught it. And to you firecracker. I hope you are doing well. Hanabi stood straight again before she nodded her head curtly to him. Before anyone could say anything else, a voice rang out from behind Naruto, making Hanabi's eyes go wide as she tried to peer around him. After a few seconds Naruto chuckled and stepped out of the way as Hinata walked to the entrance. Oh hello father. She said before she stopped with her mouth slightly open and took in her younger sister. Compassing herself Hinata bowed to Hanabi, but was suddenly on the floor looking at the top of a person's head with a very similar hair color to her own. Hanada didn't say anything, and neither did Naruto or Hiyashi as Hanabi babbled and blubbered at the same time and held Hinata in a grip that couldn't be broken with a crowbar. The usually hard ass, stuck up Hanabi had been reduced to a crying mess in less than three seconds. Definitely a record as Hanada robbed and patted her sister's back, murmuring quietly to her. Naruto smiled at the two as Haku looked on, but Hiyashi cleared his throat before he nodded at his eldest daughter. We will leave her in your care Hanada, it may take her a little time to readjust but I do not think there will be any problems. Hanada only nodded as she began to purr quietly to her younger sibling, and Haku knelt by them a questioning look on her face. With a kiss to both women Naruto turned and followed the high Uga Lord out to and then through the front gate. They didn't talk at first, but soon he ashi broke the silence with a conversation Naruto didn't expect. Do you intend to actually marry them or is there a different kind of law you answer to for your new situation? Naruto thought for a moment then shrugged. Fuzzy tells me that we are mated. That's it. No fanfare, no reception, nothing that would require legal paperwork. No one and nothing could change that. I've thought a bit though, and I've been told that women love to have weddings and planning them and all. And if Anada wants one, then we will go that route, but in other world terms we are already inseparable. The Ashi nodded and thought before he answered. That is good. I have told my clan's elders as much myself. 
well they accept what has happened and are definitely not happy about it, there is nothing they could do short of killing you both, and I guarantee that will not happen while I am clan head. Naruto smirked at Hiyashi's words, then nodded to the older man. Naruto was a bit surprised at the Hyuga clan council folded so easily it seemed. But he was not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Unfortunately. The conversation continued. Niji has told me of an interesting occurrence from his visit last night. Naruto blanched as he wondered what the stoic man would do or say next, but his next word surprised him completely. While I do not understand your new physiology or what drives you or your mates, what happens in your property is your business and no one else's concern. But you may have to be more careful when you are in public. Sex is quite enjoyable, but you do not want to make a spectacle of yourself or your mates. Naruto nodded quietly. I appreciate your counsel Hiyashi-sama and I will take your words to heart. While I don't have control of the entire situation, we will try and limit such activities from the public eye. The walk continued with Naruto explaining what he knew of the mating drive and such, both surprising and entertaining the Hyuga Lord and surprising Naruto, as he realized more and more that Hiyashi was a stern man and was also much different under the right circumstances. Hiyashi smirked as they walked up the stairs to the council chambers but leaned in and whispered to Naruto at the door. She gets it from her mother. Izumi was insatiable and had a thing for the outdoors even after Hinata was born and I wasn't always so stuffy. At Naruto's surprise look Hiyashi reached up and pulled the bottom of his left eye down and stuck his tongue out at the red-faced teen. All Naruto could do was watch Hiyashi's back as he entered the council room. Before Naruto followed him in, his residents snickered at him. The Lord of the Hyuga. Having sex in public. Who would have thunk it? Naruto only shook his head. It was an image he didn't want to think about, but it made him snicker just the same. It took a little time and a lot of question answering, but Hanabi had finally calmed down and just looked in wonder at her older sister. Despite her conditioning, Hanabi pounced on Hinata again after the queue, and A was done with a cry of Kuwait. And wouldn't let go for some time. Haku, not sure what to do, just looked on in confusion until Hinata finally was able to pry Hanabi off. Sister. I know my fur, ears, and tail make me look cute, but please have a little decorum. Or at least let me breathe a little. It was said with an obvious grin, but Hanabi nodded with a serious expression now. I am sorry sister. It is just good to see you again, and here is about the only place I can let go and not be a good little Hyuga robot. Hanada nodded as she knew exactly what Hanabi meant, but had never realized her sister felt that way. Before she could ask, Haku leaned closer to Hanabi and sniffed lightly at her. Hanabi tried to lean away, but Haku just leaned closer and continued to sniff her. What is Haku? Hanada asked as she became curious herself. Haku looked at Hanada for a moment, then pointed at Hanabi. Sister. Hanada nodded before pointing at her sibling. Yes Haku, this is Hanabi. My sister. Haku frowned, then pointed at her own chest. Hanada's sister. Hanada nodded as she purred quietly at Haku. Yes Haku, you are my sister too. Haku blinked, then looked at Hanabi again and pointed to Hanabi as she looked back at Hanada. Haku's sister. Hanada thought for a second then smiled and nodded. Yes Haku, I suppose that makes Hanabi your sister too. Before Hanabi or Hinata could say anything else, Haku jumped onto the couch, startling the younger girl. If that wasn't strange enough, Haku began to pet and groom Hanabi, running her fingers through her hair and making sure she was comfortable and happy. Hanabi was about to protest and pull away from Haku when Hinata leaned over and began to do the same from her other side. Just relax Hanabi-chan, it won't hurt and this is normal family bonding for us. And you are a bit disheveled from tackling me. Hanabi frowned but sat still through the entire process. While she didn't understand it, it did give her a warm feeling and made her feel comfortable. Until Haku started licking the back of her neck. Naruto rubbed his eyes and tried not to growl out in frustration. Honorable council members, I have given you my reassurances, I have given you my word, and Hiyashi-sama has proven I am not lying by using his blood limit. What proof do you need that I am not the Kaiubi and he has not thrown off his shackles? The civilian side, of course, grumbled and made noises, while Naruto tried his absolute best to remain calm. Thus far, the council meeting had been over an hour of fear-mongering and in Naruto's opinion stupidity. Even at his most clueless, Naruto realized that if he was the, he could destroy the village without so much as breaking a sweat. Didn't the morons realize this? One particularly obnoxious man, a rot unmerchant named Gillum, seemed to be the most vocal, surprising Naruto that it wasn't Kahara or Himura. Yuzumaki-san, you have to understand that your appearance is a bit unorthodox, and now the discovery of you having two females who look similar to you, one who looks remarkably like Hiyashi-sama's departed daughter Hinata I might add, which Hiyashi rolled his eyes at, does not sit well with the general populace. Coupled with the rumors of your sexual activities with these two women make for a complicated situation that we must rectify. 
Naruto quietly giggled as the word sounded very similar to rectum, which reminded him of his previous night's activities. Tsunade, possibly sensing Naruto's rising mirth, glowered at him, and he forced himself to stifle it as best he could, but it wasn't easy. The counselor continued without noticing. Well I understand the obvious titillation. And Naruto forced a frown on his face as he thought of Hinata's large bouncing breasts, as she rode up and down on him and a big smile, as well as a big heart ungraced him. While the smile was easy enough to cover with a hand until he could force it away, his erection was not, and he was thankful he was sitting down. Now since Hokage-sama's report on your condition was so thorough we can overlook some things in general. I believe we stand united when I say this village will not be the butt of crude humor because of your shenanigans. And Naruto actually tittered slightly, which made it seem like he was clearing his throat. That dork actually said but. He thought to himself while his residents sighed. Are we having a juvenile day? Really I haven't seen this side of your sense of humor since you were finally potty trained. Three years ago. Naruto, despite the obvious insult, smirked inwardly at his personal demon. Not to worry. If I embarrass us, I'll simply say it was your influence. You know. The devil made me do it. Ayubi grumbled but made no further comment. Are we clear about Uzumaki-san? Naruto's eyes snapped to the corpulent councilman and nodded. Oh yeah, Kanoha no but. Titty ovations and rectums for all. The ninja side of the council all wore various looks of forced seriousness, except Hiashi who openly smiled, and Tsumin Yuzuka, who laughed loud and long, great belly shaking sounds which eventually made her fall from her chair as the councilman glared at Naruto. Before anyone could say anything positive or negative from Naruto's obvious faux pas, the person in question stood and frowned. Look. You can throw all the big words you want at me, you can throw a million and one questions, and you could tell me I was a liar, my breath stinks, and my heart pumps shit. And none of it would change one simple statement. Everyone seemed to lean in, even Tsum who had recovered from her laughing fit while still smiling looked on with interest. What have I done in all my years living in Kanoha to make you think I am or could become the Kaiubi? A lot of the shinobi clan heads nodded in approval and slight smiles while some of the civilians seemed to agree. Still, stupidity never dies easily. Be that as it may. Naruto held up a hand and shook his head as he interrupted the counselor. No. I don't think you understand. Naruto took a drink of water before his eyes went from each civilian counselor to the next as he hammered his point home. I have been beaten, stabbed, burned, poisoned, outcast, and broken by people in the very village I have protected. If anything, I have every reason to hate this place and the people who dwell in it, but I don't. If that isn't proof enough that I am not nor have I been the Kaiubi, then there will never be any proof. Naruto sat down but noticed quite a few faces on the civilian side of the council, now looked down in shame or confusion. It seems in the village's mass hysteria and rumor mongering, they had overlooked some very serious clues to the character of one village pariah named Naruto Uzumaki. Before the initial guilt could wane Tsunade stepped in quickly. I call for a vote dispelling all doubt against Naruto Uzumaki. All in favor. 90% of the council's hands went up. Of course Danzo and a few of the other civilians were holdouts, but the vote was heavy enough for Naruto that it could not be overturned or challenged. Tsunade smiled in triumph. Excellent. From this day forth Naruto Uzumaki and any he takes within his clan shall be free of molestation or underhanded dealings as decreed by this council. After a few seconds, Tsunade addressed them all again to no one's surprise. Now on the matter of Naruto Uzumaki resuming his father's seat on the council. The Haru stood up, interrupting Tsunade. I believe this one is a no-brainer. The majority of eyes turned toward the counselor and Naruto almost groaned out loud as he expected the worst. While Naruto may not have the experience of his father, I believe his words would be a welcome addition to the council's meetings. Almost everyone blinked in surprise as Kaharu turned to Naruto. Your speech moved me, my boy, and you are correct. If you wanted to destroy us or anyone in this village there would have been sufficient reason for it and you would have had little trouble doing it using your residence power. I ask that you forgive us old fools and the fools in the civilian sector that may have wronged you in the past. In our most dire time, when we needed a hero, we had one, but were too blind to see him. Danzo sat back down as the counselor continued to astound everyone in the room. I believe I speak for almost everyone when I say, for the first time I believe in Saratobi's vision. Not of a mindless or emotionless weapon, but as Unaruto Uzumaki Namakas. Protector of Kanahagakur. The loud cheer rang up from a larger majority of the council than expected, and Tsunade nodded proudly at Naruto from her seat at the front of the room. Naruto stood straighter as it felt as if a great weight was finally lifted from his shoulders. He had no idea that freedom from oppression would feel so liberating. But here it was, the right to live free and happy. From that point forward, that was exactly what he was going to do. 
the rest of the council meeting went relatively smooth, with Naruto resuming his father's seat on the council and his new traits being acknowledged as a bloodline, since some of these traits would be passed down through his lineage, and the discussion of Hinata and Haku's existence went much better than any of them hoped. The council seemed to just swallow the story of the Kaiubi's chakra healing them slowly, but in order to do that they became subordinate to Naruto on an instinctual level, which wasn't very far from the truth and of course the physical changes. As thought however, some of the counselors brought up the wonderful idea of selling Naruto's talents to desperate people, but when they were told there was a large chance that the person would come back a raving lunatic, lie, a psychopath, lie, mindless zombie, half-truth, or the very minuscule chance they might come back like Hinata with full memory and faculty. It was decided that the secret of the Kaiubi's chakra would remain that. A secret. No point taking chances. Naruto knew things weren't quite over, but now that the threat of the council was gone. He looked forward to what may come next. Chapter 6. Naruto and Hiashi sat in Ichiraku's raiment stand and conversed quietly with each other. Naruto was surprisingly subdued despite the good news he had received earlier that morning. The council's reaction to him and his new condition was the most shocking yet pleasant thing to happen. It seemed the whole blood limit kicks ass attitude had now passed to him because of the fox. He wondered when they would start kissing his ass. The meeting took a little longer than expected, and at the end, Hiashi offered to treat Naruto to Raymond which surprised Naruto, but he was not going to turn it down. Now here they talk a little after 1pm in the afternoon and converse about anything and everything, as if they were old comrades catching up. So you have everything that belongs to your family finally. Naruto nodded as he slurped up some more noodles before he swallowed and grinned at the older man. My parents had bought shares in businesses all over Konoha and other lands, including Wave and surprisingly Suna. It seemed both my parents were very business-minded and they took every opportunity to pursue or research new opportunities. The Ashi nodded sagely but lowered his voice a bit. Minato not so much, but Kishina. She was the brains behind the brawn. Your mother was always looking for ways to branch out as both a ninja and anything else that caught her immediate attention, and I can honestly say there wasn't much she couldn't accomplish when she set her mind to it. Naruto smiled at this and was glad for this little bit of information, but paused as he saw the serious look in Hiyashi's eyes. I hope you will understand me for not mentioning your family sooner. I was stupid like the rest of the villagers and did not see your obvious relation. But even if that were excluded, it did not give me the right to treat you as less than human. For that and the way I treated my own daughter after her mother died, I really do not expect to be forgiven now or even in the afterlife, but I do wish to say I am deeply sorry. Naruto clicked his chopsticks a few times in thought before he looked at the older clan head. I understand Hiyashi Sama. And I hope that in the future you and any other will remember to judge by the person's actions and not by the rumors of others. The Ashi nodded with a slight smirk at the mature words from the blonde. It wasn't the first time the teen had said something that made perfect sense. Hiashi bowed his head to the newly chaired Naruto. I have never heard of Naruto-sama. Naruto blinked, then shook his head. Hiashi-sama. Please do me a favor and don't call me that unless it is for official meetings and such. I have never stood in a ceremony and to be honest, I am not comfortable being treated as something I am not. Hiashi smirked before he clapped his shoulder. I understand, but I am not doing it to treat you differently, I called you Sama as a sign of respect. Because you deserve it. Naruto blinked for a second before he blushed in embarrassment and suddenly found his empty bowl very interesting. The Ashi only grinned. The two stayed a little longer, mostly he Ashi teaching Naruto of clan politics and what to be wary of in the council, before they both stood and meandered back to the youth's house. Naruto had seen big changes in the political climate, watched people come and go, but he was happy and impressed by the changes in the Hyuga clan head in general. Yes, things were definitely looking up. The Ashi's voice and demeanor changed as they walked and it made Naruto look over at him. Naruto. I want you to know that no matter what occurs, I am happy that my daughter has you. And your other mate as well. I have watched you grow from a loud-mouthed know-it-all to a proud and powerful shinobi. I couldn't be happier in any way. As long as you continue to take care of my daughter as you have, you have my blessing in whatever plans for the future you make. Naruto stopped in front of his gate with his mouth open as he tried to digest what the clan head had just told him. Hiashi reached over Naruto's face and pushed his chin up, making Naruto's mouth close with a click as the older Hayuga smiled at him. If ever you are in need of anything, Hinata or even Haku. All you need to do is ask. And this time. Do not be too proud to come talk to an old clan head. Sometimes it is very pleasant to have the company of others. Especially my soon-to-be son-in-law. Naruto blushed then grinned lightly as the man bowed to him and in haste, he silently returned it. Naruto would have to have the Kaiubi check later. He was sure he was in an episode of the Twilight Zone or he Ashi had been taken over by the body snatchers. The Ashi smirked at him as they walked towards the house. 
do not fret so. I am in the right state of mind, I assure you. Naruto only chuckled lightly as he reached for then turned the door handle. The loud music should have given it away. But the acoustics in the house were so good that Naruto played the sounds no mind until the door was open, and then it was too late. Naruto and Hiashi both stood mouths agape as the three girls danced and sang a quasi Barbie girl while it blared from the speakers. Well two of them sang while Haku seemed to me humming along. Hiashi gulped and Naruto grimaced as Haku. Had absolutely no rhythm but was having a good time anyway. Hanada and Hanabi moved gracefully to the music but neither could carry a note well or maybe they were just acting silly and singing the notes off on purpose. The worst part of the situation, because of course there is, was that Haku was completely naked, her panties hanging from her left ear. Hanada was bouncing around in just her panties because she still wasn't used to being completely naked unless her heat overcame her and Hanabi was in her bra and panties. Cute little white ones. But the panda's face on the back. The black panda. For all intents and purposes, she didn't have a care in the world as she sang and shook her hips in ways her father had never seen before, and the color that crept up his neck to his forehead shouldn't have been possible, as the man looked like a fire engine. Not my sweet little Hanabi too. He groused to himself. Will there be no children in my life that have not been over-influenced by their mother's genes? The man shook his thoughts away as he harumphed in his throat. Well he was mentally prepared for Haku. Or even Hinata to do something outrageous, seeing it in his youngest daughter was almost too much for him. Scandalous. He said in a low voice. Yeah. Scandalous. Naruto agreed. The impropriety. Hiashi muttered. And Naruto couldn't help but shake his head as he glowered. I agree. The unmitigated gall of these three. Hiashi frowned deeply, putting on the clan head face. Naruto growled as he crossed his arms. Yeah. I hate this song too. The Ashi blinked and looked at Naruto before he scoffed and turned back towards the dancing women. Hanabi. He said in a deep baritone. This voice always got people's attention. Unfortunately the volume of the music and the capering of the girls won over. The Ashi cleared his throat and tried again. Hanabi, see here. Sadly, the man's voice was still very much blocked. Naruto put his hand on Hiashi's shoulder to calm him, then put two fingers in his mouth and whistled so loud it went easily over the music and caused both Hinata and Haku's ears to swing in his direction. Hinata sees Naruto in the doorway and turns the music down to Hanabi's protest. Hey. That was the best part. This time when Hiashi cleared his throat, Hanabi turned and seeing Naruto very unashamedly waved at him with a big smile. Hi Naruto-san. And then her eyes spotted the scowling face of her father and the little girl returned to a semblance of normal. Immediately Hanabi tried to cover everything at once and failed miserably. Then she screamed in the shrillest sound Naruto had only heard come a few times before from a pink-haired banshee. Daddy. Then with a mad scramble she turned and bolted from the room and slammed the first door she could get behind. The Ashi looked at Naruto who looked back at him innocently. What? The Ashi's frown was still in place. Do you remember when I said if you need anything you could have it? Naruto nodded just as Hiashi blew his stack. She isn't included. Naruto's ears flew back and lay against his head, but he smirked at the clan head anyway. Um. She's too young for me. The Ashi merely grumbled as Hinata put on a robe and walked over, giving her father a slight hug and kiss on the cheek. Oh father, don't be so stuffy. Hanabi just needed to relax and no one saw. No harm is done. The Ashi glowered at her, but Hinata pinched his side making him squirm away from her. Now daddy. Let Hanabi be. She would be the perfect Hyuga in public and even at home, but when she is here, she is allowed to be a girl. Paint her nails, do her hair, try makeup. You know the things I was never allowed to do. The Ashi's face grew more horrified at each passing word before he finally settled in a neutral mask, gazing steadily at his daughter who stared back unflinchingly. At some point he Ashi looked at Naruto. For the record. I blame you. Naruto blinked in surprise before he hung his head in mock shame. After a few minutes in a quiet voice he Ashi asked his oldest daughter. Do you think it will help Hanabi? Hanada smiled at her father and nodded. Have you ever seen her so happy before? The Ashi then shook his head before frowning. Not even on her birthday. With a sigh he reached over and rubbed Hanada's head affectionately, making her purr softly. I will do as you ask my daughter. But try to keep her activities out of the public eye. The clan elders are already being troublesome about you. Let us not add Hanabi to the mix as well. Hanada grinned before she hugged her father. She will be a fine father, don't worry. Besides, what could actually happen here to influence Hanabi in any way? Just as those words were spoken and Hiashi looked at his daughter, Haku giggled as she crouched down, wiggling her hips. Master. Naruto blinked as he quickly walked around the coffee table. Now Haku. We have guests. 
Aku grinned wider, canines peeking from her lips as she tracked him with her eyes and ears, and just as Naruto crossed the front of the couch, Haku sprang at him, catching him in the chest, and they tumbled back into the couch, flipping it over onto its back. The ashi blinked, and Hinata grimaced as she realized what she had just told her father and what was about to happen. Naruto's voice reached them as Haku's panties which were still dangling from her ear a second ago, now flew over the couch, where only Naruto's feet were visible. Now Haku. We can't wope. He yelled as his pants were yanked down and off his feet, then also joined Haku's panties on the coffee table. The Ashi's face was pale as he looked at his eldest daughter. He isn't. She isn't. They won't. Niji of course had told him everything that happened the previous day, but being told and seeing it happen are two very different things. Anata smirked as she took in her father's discomfort. Oh Haku can be very persuasive. Haku's head dove back down again as Naruto's feet flexed and pointed straight up just before strange noises came from their general direction. We a gel woogie 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 woogie. Someone yelled out in a high-pitched voice as he ashy start in fascination and horror at Haku's head bobbing up and down. WH. Who was that? He said in a stutter which sounded immensely strange coming from the clan head. Anata smirked. That was Neru-kun. We taught Haku not to talk with her mouth full. She said with a straight face as her father choked on air. At about that time, Hanabi had come from the bathroom fully dressed, but now also stared goggle-eyed at the pair on her side of the floor. Th. That's not real is it? She asked in a quiet voice. When no one answered she cocked her head before she blushed. It must be a. I've never seen one that big. Aku, deciding she had had enough for play, slobbered over Naruto's rod, getting a good amount of saliva on it, before she positioned herself over her master's hips. Hanabi's eyes bulged bigger as she shook her head. That's not supposed to go there. Haku grinned at her before wiggling her eyebrows and hips. Really th. That's not gonna fit there. Haku looked over at Hinata who grinned and nodded at her. Go ahead Haku. Just like I showed you. She said, completely oblivious to her father's presence it seemed. Haku grinned and nodded before she forced herself down on Naruto and let out a cat-like screech as he entered her. Her eyes clenched shut and her tail went straight and bushy before she moaned deeply with a few painted breaths. You would normally think she had just put herself through an incredible amount of pain, but people who knew Haku would have seen her ears quivering and know. Pain wasn't the only thing she was feeling. Naruto, eyes still crossed, babbled incoherently. Why yes Andre. I'll have the lime jello with chunks of spam, but please hold the bleach. No one knew what he was talking about, but when Haku began moving and yelping in pleasure, Hanabi shook her head, still wide-eyed. Oh that's not right. Aku grinned happily at Hanabi before she gasped out in a rather proud-sounding voice. Master in Haku's back door. Hanabi blushed harder as her mind went into overdrive. I thought that was an exit only. Still no one moved. Other than Haku, as Hanabi looked thoughtful. I wonder if it feels good. Haku definitely looks happy. Hanada marveled proudly at Haku as she turned to her father. She finally said something without hesitating. Her father looked at her in astonishment before he decided the whole house was nuts. The ashy. Finally getting his broken bearings walked over swiftly and actually gathered Hanabi up in his arms like he were protecting a baby, hand over her eyes, and walked equally swiftly over to and out the front door, head held high in the air. Bedding over her shock, Hanabi and Hinata. See you tomorrow sisters. 10 o'clock. Hinata cried as she waved. With a quiet sigh Hinata closed the front door just as Naruto gave way to another warbling cry. The woogie 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 woogie. Hinata smirked as her robe and panties hit the floor and she trotted over to join her mates. Oh, Neru-kun. What am I going to do with you two? She asked, tail swishing back and forth happily. Naruto. Had no comment other than the above. And there is no reason to repeat that again. Hurry. The man screamed as the doctor slowly attached nerve endings and muscle fiber long unused in the withered appendage. The lights overhead were bright and almost unbearable, and the pain of the surgery was even more so, but since he couldn't be asleep for this part of the procedure, he grit his teeth and voiced his opinion whenever he could. The pain would be well worth the rewards once it was attached. The power he had only dreamed of and the victories it would gain him would be well worth an ounce of the misery he would have to endure and will make up for any past pains and indignities. The documents explained the power from one eye. But for twenty. Plus the one in his eye socket, he would be invincible. He would be a god. Grinning maniacally Danzo waited as patiently as he could while each connection was painstakingly attached, images of millions kneeling at his feet egging him on. Naruto sat lounging on the couch with his mate snuggled happily against him, not a care in the world. He had explained to Hinata his faux pas at the council meeting and the reception that it received. Hinata laughed and Haku giggled as if she understood. 
She had become more animated and tried to laugh when everyone else would so she would not seem out of place, and Naruto was grateful for the small leaps and strides she made. He was impressed with the way she was beginning to learn under Hinata, and it seemed Hinata was learning under Haku as well as she didn't need as much encouragement anymore when she had a desire for some loving. Naruto was now jumping from every direction. Sometimes eight or more times a day. He never really knew who was going to do it or when. But he always put up token resistance and mock protests. He was sure that they, at least Hinata, were aware that he wasn't fighting it as hard as he could, but neither stated this fact to the other, so a happy balance had been established. Despite being the master, Naruto was also the plaything, chew toy, baloney pony. Whatever fit the bill, and no one including Naruto cared otherwise. Naruto hunkered down deeper in the couch with a content sigh, and as soon as he was comfortable, Hinata and Haku did the same, distributing themselves equally between the couch and Naruto, until the warm sleepy feelings started to overcome all three. Haku closed her eyes and purred quietly, teeth latched to his neck. Her purring created a comfortable vibration that was soothing Naruto's brain. Hinata on his other side had her hand on his crotch, nose pressed to his chest. Her eyes closed slowly as she nuzzled against him, and soon she was purring quietly as well. Naruto couldn't be happier as soon his eyes drooped to the very bottom of his lids. And a screaming gong sounded in the room. All three jumped up, ears forward, their tails straight out and bushy, claws at the ready. Hinata looked at Naruto as it sounded again. What is that? She yelled with her ears now laid back to block the noise. Naruto thought for a second as it sounded again. That's the perimeter warning. Someone's trying to jump the wall. Naruto sprinted toward the door, with Haku and Hinata in hot pursuit. As they exited the house, a funny sight greeted them. At the gate stood Choji, Shikamaru, Sakura, and on the ground holding her head was Ino. Naruto smirked as he looked at his mates. False alarm. He said before he walked towards the gate, tail swishing lazily. Hinata looked at Haku who looked back at her before they both shrugged and followed him to the entrance of the estate. As he got closer Shikamaru spotted him and went for a trademark response. What a drag. You put your defense up against us again. Naruto shrugged as he rested his hand against a pillar, and after a brief glow the gate swung inward. Niji tried to kick my ass yesterday and instead hurt Haku. If people still react to me now as they did then. It seemed Naruto's sentences were constantly being interrupted. You know. With a nice size lump on her head staring red-faced and obviously angry at Naruto. Naruto you disgusting dog. Put some pants on. Naruto looked down, then blushed sheepishly. He. We were falling asleep on the couch. And about that time Ino thumped him on the side of his head. Sakura grabbed her face and moaned in sympathy, just as Haku appeared in front of the startled Ino. Don't touch master. Ino now had a frosty lump to match her other one, as she lay on the ground eyes rolling around crazily. Toji and Shikamaru blinked in surprise as Sakura grumbled. I warned her. Haku glared at Sakura then at Choji and Shikamaru. You touch. She asked with a hint of malice in her voice, a bold fist raised in their direction. Both boys shook their heads negatively rather quickly and put their hands up in a suggestion of peace. Nope. Not even a whisker. Choji said as for once. He didn't have a bag of chips evident. Haku nodded once with her face still set in a frown as if to say, see that you don't. Before her tail lashed and she looked at Naruto who rubbed the side of his head lightly. Hinata was already there grooming him and Haku immediately joined her. Sakura was applying a little healing to Ino before she looked over at the trio. Wow. It really is Hinata. The boys looked at her and in the excitement didn't notice but now did. Naruto was being attended by two very attractive and very naked fox girls. The blushes were not to be believed as Shikamaru mumbled, every otaku's dream. And could only stare in shock and admittedly a little envy. Sakura finally got Ino to come around who groaned in pain and whispered, what happened? Did I get drunk again? Sakura shook her head as she stood straight. Nope. You got Hakuid. I told you not to attack Naruto. His mates don't take kindly to people trying to hurt him, even if it is playful. Ino finally got to her feet with a wobble, still holding her head. Wait till I get my hands on that bitch. Sakura shook her head at her before frowning. You're out of your league Ino. Leave it alone. But Ino did have a stubborn streak a mile wide as she glared around until she spotted Haku kissing and licking Naruto. On the verge of stomping over and sucker punching her, Hinata as if by magic, appeared in front of the blonde now, and her finger jabbed Ino in the chest, hard enough to make her gasp and rock back a step. Do it and I'll make sure you don't move a muscle again for the next month. Ino blinked in surprise at Hinata and just stood there with her mouth open. Hinata still glowered at her, but Ino seemed too shocked to be able to respond. Sakura leaned towards her and grumbled. Yes Ino. She's alive. Just like Lady Tsunade told me, just like I told you. Ino's mouth moved up and down in her goldfish imitation until she was finally able to blurt out, how? 
Naruto chuckled as he wrapped an arm around Hinata and led them towards the mansion. Come inside, we'll put some clothes on, and we'll acquaint you with all the gory details. But if you even think about laying a finger on anyone Ino. And Haku stepped around Naruto and closed her hand with a crunch, ice falling off her fingers to pile on the ground next to her foot. Naruto smirked as he wrapped an arm around Haku and then Hinata and led the way back to the house. Ino was still rubbing her head, Sakura following her with Shikamaru and Choji slowly entering the grounds. Choji frowned as the gates closed behind them. Think we should tell them about Kiba and Kurenai coming. Shikamaru frowned before he shook his head. Too troublesome. Maybe they won't show. Or at least Kiba won't. Toji almost glared at Shikamaru as he pulled out a bag of chips. You know Kiba still wants Hinata. He said with a hint of worry. Shikamaru frowned before he shrugged again. Let me think about it. If you tell him no biggie I guess. But would you really want to tell him that one of his mates? Well. Shikamaru shook his head before he picked up his pace and muttered, troublesome. Kiba grunted as he threw things around the room. He knew he put it somewhere after it was drawn up, but he couldn't remember where. Akamaru watched him move back and forth before he growled lightly at his companion. Kiba growled back, but his face still held a look of determination. Well I don't care. I've always wanted this, and now here is my chance. Akamaru rolled his eyes before he growled again, and Kiba looked at him. Oh come on. You know I'm right. She never belonged with that idiot, and if she is alive somehow, she really doesn't belong with him now. Kiba's eyes widened as he grabbed a scroll in the bottom of his closet and held it up with triumph. Found it. Turning towards the door, Kiba stopped and looked at his partner. Come on Akamaru. Let's go get my woman. Akamaru grumbled to himself, but he would go along just because. He didn't believe in what Kiba was doing or the way he went about it, but he would support his master. Even if reluctantly. Naruto smirked as he turned the burgers and hot dogs on the grill. It was amazing how people planned a party within seconds of talking. One minute they were discussing their new life, then suddenly he was cooking while the girls prepared other things for their enjoyment. Naruto shrugged silently as he seasoned the meat. What the hell? He thought. At least no one's trying to hurt me. Shikamaru sat there with a soda in his hand looking bored until Choji nudged him. Shikamaru glared at him, but Choji nodded towards Naruto. With a sigh Shikamaru looked at Naruto. Look. I don't think this is my place, but you should know. And all three blinked as the sound of a doorbell caught their attention. Before anyone could move, Hinata looked out the window. Naru-kun. Could you get that? We have our hands full. Naruto nodded as he handed Choji the spatula he was using. Hold that thought lazy bones. I guess we have more guests. Shikamaru sighed, perhaps in relief as he sat on a lawn chair. Literally saved by the bell. Toji just frowned as he began to flip the meat. Naruto got to the gate and grinned as he saw Kurenai and Anko at the gate with little Asuma. Opening the gate Naruto was almost tackled by the toddler. Uncarudo. The child yelled as soon as he had a death grip on Naruto's leg. Naruto chuckled as his tail swished in pleasure. Wow you're getting a big sprout. What are you feeding him? Naruto asked, but his voice died off as the glare on Kurenai's face made him wonder what was wrong. Anko kind of saved the day as she grabbed the tyke and held him in her arms before she hugged Naruto. Hey Gaki. I like the ears. Naruto chuckled as he hugged her back. Thanks. They came with the tail. Anko laughed before she looked at Kurenai and shook her head. Come on Asuma. Let's see what trouble we can get into. Naruto pointed back towards the house. The guys are out back and the girls are in the kitchen. You know where it is. Anko nodded as she turned and walked towards the house. Naruto closed the gate and focused on Kurenai. Something wrong with Kurenai-san. Kurenai took a deep breath and let it out slowly before she pulled a kunai still glaring at Naruto. I don't know the full story. But I hear you've somehow brought Hanada back from the grave and made her your slave. Naruto blinked before his hand came up and slapped his face, and he slowly dragged it down his face in frustration. Why are things never easy? He asked as he looked up at the sky. Taking his own deep breath, Naruto looked at the mistress again and tried not to lose his temper. And pray tell what else have you heard? Kurenai, still very much angry, took a step towards Naruto. That you are creating a harem of women that look just like you. And since you made Hinata like this, she has no choice but to be your willing slave. Well not while I still live and breathe buster. If you so much as hurt that girl who has been like a daughter to me. Naruto felt sad for a moment, then shook his head, his voice strangely calm. Kurenai. Why in Kami's name would you even for a second believe that crap? You know me. And you know how I felt about Hinata when she died. Why would you think I would do anything to hurt her? Kurenai hesitated for a minute before she shook her head. Because you're a man and all men think the same. If you could you'd bang a woman just because. Naruto frowned deeply at this before he shook his head again. Kurenai. Have I ever approached you or tried to touch you inappropriately? 
Have you ever had reason to suspect that I was lurking in order to take advantage of any woman? Gurunai frowned as she considered, then slowly shook her head. Not to my knowledge. No. Naruto turned red for a second in anger or embarrassment or a mixture of both. Kami Kurunai. I've seen you in your bra and panties. I've seen you naked. When you had that fever back when Asuma was bored I was the one that took care of you until Shizun got there. Remember. Gurunai nodded slowly as her mind began to clear and she thought hard about these things. Flashback. Her head was spinning and her vision was hazy as she tried to move, but her body had little to no coordination and she had to keep blinking. It was so hard to stay awake. As if from far away, she heard a crash as her bathroom door was smashed in and a shock of blonde hair and blue eyes swam in and out of her vision. She heard a voice and it spoke in slow motion to her. Kuri and I. Can you? She blinked in confusion as she tried to put a name to the voice and face, but her vision was still swimming and she couldn't seem to focus no matter how hard she tried. Cheadu Kluni Juutsu. Gurunai's hearing started to fade in and out so she couldn't hear everything. Gu. Shi Zuni. Ai. Thi Vi 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 Air. She thought she heard the tub begin to fill up and suddenly she felt freezing cold and her teeth began to chatter and she felt pinpoints of even more cold hit her body. At some point she blacked out completely but then woke up in the hospital. Her call. Gurunai's face fell as she looked at the teen in front of her. That was you? I thought maybe you had gotten into or someone else. Naruto growled at her but held his ground. I asked Shizu not to tell you to prevent a scene like this one from happening. I knew eventually you would wonder if my fingers or other parts did anything other than try and help you. Gurunai nodded for a second but grumbled at him. I wouldn't do that. You probably saved my life. Naruto took a deep breath, then sighed. You say you wouldn't do that. That's funny. You just did. It took a second to sink in, but Kurunai slowly put her kunai away, then bowed at the waist to Naruto. I'm sorry. I guess the shock of finding out Hinata was alive and some of the other things I heard. Naruto shook his head. Look. I have never hurt Hinata or anyone else in that manner and I never would. Our relationship will seem odd to you. But we aren't operating under normal conditions anymore. And a lot of what is going on is still new to all three of us. Gurunai blinked at Naruto before she frowned. Three. Naruto sighed as he nodded. Yes. Hinata isn't the only one. But I am not building a harem. In fact I didn't intend or plan any of this. I was sure there would be no Yuzumakis or Namikazes after me, and I had somewhat accepted that fact. It's a long story, but know that whoever explained things to you left out a lot of details and stretched things quite a bit. Gurunai nodded as she stepped closer to the. Then I'm looking forward to the unabridged version. Now where is Hinata? Naruto turned just as Hinata came running out of the house and hugged Gurunai tightly. Gurunai with a grin hugged her back before she pulled back and looked at her. Ears and a tail. Well some of the things I heard are true at least. How do you feel about Hinata? Hinata grinned happily before she leaned over and kissed Naruto on the lips. You have no idea how happy I am Kurunai-sensei. It's like a dream come true. Because it is. She giggled as the duo began to walk back to the house. Naruto sighed before he went to the backyard again. Toji was still cooking as there was chicken and ribs on the grill now and Naruto sat down with a shrug. Well that was interesting. Shikamaru was laying back in a lounge chair, staring at the clouds and only grunted noncommittally. Toji, still doing something he loved, figured it was his responsibility now. Naruto. There's something I need to tell you about Kiba. Guess what? The bell for the front gate went off again, and before anyone could say anything Naruto shouted, I'll get it. As he got up and walked to the front yard again. Shikamaru hadn't moved, and as Joji watched Naruto go he mumbled. Troublesome. Humming around the front again Naruto saw Kiba and Akamaru standing at the gate with a group of other men and women, all looking to be ninja. Naruto wondered what was going on since he didn't recognize any of them. Hey what's up Kiba? He greeted me as he got to the gate. Kiba looked smug as he held up a rolled scroll. Me. I'm up and on top of the world now. Looking puzzled, Naruto tried to paint a smile. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. What I can do for you and your friends. Kiba waved the scroll again with a smirk. Simple. Give me my mate. He said as Akamaru put his head under his paws and whined. Chapter 7. The frown on Naruto's face was only matched in intensity by Kiba's grin. Which didn't sit well with Naruto one bit. It said, I beat you dumbass. Which Naruto, while at times thinking about the sentiment, never once larded over anyone with. Such things were not too low for Kiba. In fact he almost lived for showing people how superior he was. He was no Sasuke Chia. But he wasn't far from it ego wise. Naruto however was as always the nice guy and figured Kiba must be referring to one of their guests. Oh how long have you and Ino been together? I had no idea. Congratulations. Kiba frowned at Naruto before he shook his head. Huh? 
I'm not going out with Eno. Diba sounded indignant so Naruto tried again. You sly dog. How did you convince Anko to be with you? She swings both ways, you know. I wouldn't say that out loud though. She's even smacked me around for mentioning it out loud and she's like a sister to me. Diba blinked in surprise and his brow knit in concentration. Swings both ways. He said as a drop of blood fell from his nose. Before his eyes could glaze over and he got lost in the fantasy he shook his head. No baka. Well that could be fun, I'll have to look into that later, Anko isn't my woman either. Naruto frowned before his eyes popped open wide. Kurinai. Damn I thought you didn't like women that had children. Well if that's the case I'm glad to see you've had a change of heart. Fiba finally exploded in technicolor as he screamed at Naruto. No damn it. It isn't Kurinai either. Kiba's eyes dropped to the floor as he blushed with a grumble. That would be like banging my mom. Gross. But from Naruto's viewpoint that isn't what Kiba was thinking at all. I know dogs can interbreed, but I didn't think the Inuzuka would go that far. Naruto thought with a look of horror. Of course. His inner pervert did have to make an appearance at that time. Incest is best. Put your sister to the test. Naruto glared at the fox, then cursed silently. Stupid fox. That really is gross. Hayubi grinned at him before shrugging. When you are alpha male you make the rules. Besides demons and most animals don't have to worry about that extra gene crap, so our children do not have birth defects like retardation and such. Although you humans aren't far from it most of the time anyway. Hey. That isn't true and it's uncalled for. The fox grumbled at him in annoyance. I was referring to the dog wannabe in front of you. Who you should pay attention to before he decides to go get one of your mates himself. Naruto turned outward, not catching the reference immediately, as Kiba began waving the scroll in front of his face again. Hinata you spaced out idiot. Where is Hinata? Naruto frowned at Kiba before he shrugged. She's in the house. We were going to have a barbecue. A bunch of the guys came over so we thought. And Naruto trailed off as Kiba shoved the scroll in his hand and strode past him. Not thinking clearly, Naruto looked at the scroll, then unrolled it and began to read its contents. The first few sections was all legal gobletigook that Naruto didn't care about until he got to the next part, where it said in big bold print, promise of marriage proposal. And that was when Naruto's eyes bugged out and he began to growl. Looking outside the gate for the first time he saw Akamaru laying there who yipped at him in greeting, the four Inuzuka clan members who looked angrily at him, and two Hayuga members who had the same impassive look that most Hayuga wear. That was when he jumped to the bottom area of the scroll and his blood began to boil. Hayuga Hinata is hereby promised to one Inuzuka Kiba in the terms of marriage to cement the alliance between both clans for a more prosperous and harmonic existence between the two. In perpetuity, whatever that was, should one Hayuga Hinata refuse the ground stipulated in this document that the named Inuzuka is permitted to take her by force if necessary to complete the agreement. Naruto couldn't understand why someone would do this, but more importantly was the glaring signature at the bottom of the scroll that made his eyes harden. Hayuga Hiyashi. Inuzuka Tsum. Naruto's hands clenched in anger, crushing the scroll in his hand as he turned to walk back to his house and the boy he was about to maim when footsteps behind him made him stop and turn. The delegation had decided they were going to come in as well, but Naruto's visage as he turned to look at them made all of them stop. This is my property. And I don't remember saying any of you could come in. Cross that gate and so help me I'll rip all five of you apart and sew the pieces back together again before I truly kick your asses. The red flare of Naruto's eyes was enough for all of them to stop and stare, but no one made the attempt to enter. All of them knew of Naruto and his tenant, and they all knew what Naruto could do if he let loose. And none of them wanted that. Naruto looked at Akamaru before he growled out, keep them out Akamaru. And there will be half a yak with your name on it for you. Akamaru yipped happily before he sat up and growled at the five men, who now wondered if the six-foot-tall dog was more dangerous or the fox. Truth be told no one wanted to challenge either so they stayed put and said nothing. Naruto turned back again and was more than prepared to give Kiba another thrashing, but this time to make the one he gave him in the Chunin exams seem like a friendly card game when you know who made him pause. Why must you be so thick-headed? Have I taught you nothing in all these years? Naruto frowned before he glared at the fox. What the hell are you talking about Irokitsune? I've got to take care of the bastard before he puts his hands on my mates. The fox shook his head before he grumbled at Naruto. Didn't I tell you the purpose of your mates? Naruto frowned as he tried to remember, but the look on his face told the fox it was a useless endeavor. Fine, I will remind you. It seems my fate is to be the eternal string around your finger. The fox took a deep breath before continuing. Your mates not only entertain and protect you should you need it, but they also protect whatever kits you have, the den, and each other. Naruto began to mull that over when he heard what sounded like a bag full of cats fighting. Just before the screaming started. 
Inada was chattering away to Kurinai, and Haku was learning to cut vegetables with Sakura and Ino in the kitchen, while Anko played with little Asuma. Ino was still a little pissed about the punch she never saw coming from Haku. But she figured 2 to 1 odds on the other team's home turf was not a smart thing. That in the fact she actually was starting to relax around the fox woman. I guess Sakura knew what she was talking about. Bitch or not. She hits fucking hard. Ino thought as she unconsciously reached up and rubbed her jaw. Sakura seemed to have completely gotten over the previous Haku incident she had and came to the conclusion that hitting Naruto was an extremely foolhardy thing to do if Haku was around. She hadn't been hit by Hinata yet and didn't realize that Hinata was just as protective. If not more so because of her past feelings. Why did I hit Naruto so much? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. I guess it was just the fangirl in me and I just got used to doing it. Hmm. Sakura pondered this for a while, then shrugged as she realized she may have some major making up to do with Naruto. Well he didn't seem to mind me hitting him so much, it might be better to stop doing it. Or at least to stop doing it so frequently. After Haku hit me, I'm beginning to understand how he might have felt. These thoughts and others made Sakura smile as on some level she began to feel maturity finally beginning to set in. But as they say, better late than never. All in all, this would have been a pleasant day all around if not for the next event. Dibba walked in through the front door, and a grin plastered his face as his eyes caught sight of his quarry. Anata looked up as the door slammed and saw Kiba standing there with a self-satisfied grin, and she waved at him in a friendly manner, but she knew instinctively that something was wrong. Dibba smelled of lust. And something that made her think of arrogance, and it immediately rubbed her the wrong way. Unknown to Hinata, Haku's hackles were already raised, and she looked around with a low growl which startled Ino and Sakura. And Sakura immediately backed away from her, both hands protecting her jaw. Hinata stood up from the couch as did Kurinai as Kiba sauntered over, smirk still plastered on. Hello Hinata. Finally. You're mine. Hinata blinked in surprise, but the feeling of unease continued as her tail stopped moving and her ears flicked back in aggravation. Yours. What do you mean Kiba? I am Naruto-kun's mate. Kiba scoffed at this before he shook his head and reached for Hinata's arm, which she easily moved away from. It's a long story, but I'll happily tell you about it later. After we made of course. Hinata's ears now lay back flat against her skull as she fell back a step in shock. Kiba, have you been drinking? I would never mate with you. There is only one man for me and you are not it. Kiba shook his head still grinning and pointed over his shoulder at the front door. I have a marriage contract that the retard is trying to read that says you are mine. And I can take you by force if you don't come willingly. So let's not make this harder than it has to be. Come with me. Now. Hinata's eyes narrowed and now her tail lashed the air behind her angrily. Kurinai stood flabbergasted as she couldn't understand where this was coming from concerning Kiba. She knew he was always in lust for Hinata. But it was like the boy had lost his mind completely. Anko was about to step in when she saw a slight movement to her left and began to grin. Reaching over she pulled little Asuma into her lap. Sit back and watch the fireworks kid. This should be fun. Hinata was still surprised, but now she had the anger from what Kiba said and the uncomfortable feeling from earlier when he first walked in to contend with. But she somehow maintained her composure. Kiba. I am only going to say this once. I am not nor will I ever be your mate. For the friendship we used to share you have till the count of three to leave our home. 1. Kiba smirked before he planted his feet firmly as if daring Hinata to try and do something. Kiba was unaware that he wasn't dealing with old mousy Hinata, who would have complied if Naruto wasn't there to give her support. This Hinata had claws and fangs and was more than ready to use them. 2. Hinata intoned as her claws popped forward as she flexed her fingers which Kiba took as a bluff. He was more than willing to call it, then carry her back to his bedroom. Hell I'll do her right here in dumbass house. Give him that to think about for the rest of his life. And Hinata's eyes closed as she said the final number. 3. When Hinata didn't do anything Kiba laughed and grabbed her arm and was about to pull when a screech of anger came from across the room. Kiba was suddenly doubled over in pain and couldn't catch his breath just before what felt like a sledgehammer. Left in a freezer, hit him in the cheekbone, breaking it as he fell back a few steps. He tried to catch himself against the wall and get his bearings when that same sledgehammer hit the left side of his face, completely closing his eye and then swiftly hit the right side partially closing that eye. The pain Kiba was in was only offset by the continuing blows that rained on him as he was knocked around the house worse than a pinball. The entire time the screeching continued and he could only think, wow. She must have big lungs. As he felt himself get picked up and hurled into a wall. Kiba wasn't sure. But he thought he heard a man screaming in the background now too. But he would have laughed if he could have because the man's voice sounded so girly he had to be a huge pussy. Everyone in the room watched as Haku literally took Kiba apart piece by piece, all except Hinata who still stood with her eyes closed. 
Aku had Kiba wobbling in place as he stood, and she had a huge grin on her face as she literally climbed the wall with her hands and feet, then from the ceiling 15 feet in the air, she dove down and delivered a double axe handle strike to Kiba's skull, finally knocking him to the floor where he lay there twitching. Barely conscious. Aku's tail lashed the air so hard you'd think it could cut cheese in thin straight strips without even trying before she pointed an accusing finger at Kiba and barked out, don't you ever touch Hinata-chan. Kiba said nothing, only twitched as Hinata's eyes finally opened, and she casually walked over and stood above Kiba. Kiba's one open eye could only watch her as Hinata with grace and poise, undid the sash of her kimono and dropped it to the floor and stood unashamed in her bra and panties before she removed those as well. Kiba's eyes widened slightly as he thought he was going to get what he always wanted. Not quite. Hinata held her arms out as she stared down impassively at the fallen ninja before the voice of the high uga reached his ears. Take a good look at Kiba. Take a very good look. Because this will be the last time you ever see this. If you were a quarter of the man Naruto-kun is. Maybe I would have noticed you as more than a friend, but trying to peep at me while I bathed on missions or the time you snuck into the high uga compound shows me you are only concerned with one thing. And that's why you are now and probably always will be alone. Aku stood next to Hinata and growled low in her throat, and Hinata put a hand on her shoulder to placate her. If you were that quarter of a man. Then you would also still have my friendship. And with that Hinata spit down into the face of the ninja she used to call friend and put her clothing back on. But this wasn't quite enough for Haku. With a big smile, the ice mistress kicked Kiba square in his crotch, causing the boy to roll painfully to his side and gasp for air. Hinata once dressed again gestured to Haku, and they grabbed Kiba by the arms and legs and casually opened the door and stood him on his feet. Kiba wobbled and fell against a doorframe, no coordination in him. The Hinata's surprise Anko and Kurinai had come to the door also, and Kurinai's hand gently touched Hinata's arm. Wait. She turned Kiba to face her as Hinata stepped back, and Kurinai looked truly sad and before her eyes hardened. Moron. Was it worth it? Kiba tried to mumble around his swollen lips, but all that came out legibly was contract. Kurinai nodded before she stepped back. I am going to look into this contract, Kiba. And I will get to the bottom of this. But now I have never been so ashamed of anyone in my life as I am of you right now. I wish Naruto had been my student instead of you. Kiba's face didn't change, but Hinata thought she noticed his odor change, smelling of what she hoped was shame as he turned away from them, and Hinata and Haku as well as Kurinai turned their back on him. Naruto crossed his arms and waited until the screaming had died down. Not long after the front door opened and he saw a form standing there, but he wasn't sure what was happening until that form suddenly went flying off the steps to crash face first to the ground, courtesy of a boot almost as big as Aruka's old demon head and a shout of. And don't come back. Naruto immediately recognized the purple hair that he saw when the door closed and was certain he was going to want a recap of what happened. In the meantime he walked over then shook his head as he looked at Kiba. Man they whipped your ass huh? Kiba said nothing so Naruto shrugged as he whistled back at the front gate. Akamaru came bounding over and stared in pity at his master. This was a bad day indeed. Naruto looked at the big canine then grinned at him. Akamaru. How many times have I told you to not leave your shit on my property? Akamaru looked downcast for a moment before he whined an apology, causing Naruto to chuckle, then rub the big dog's neck and head. Just messing with you boy. Stop by later and I'll have a mess of meat cooked up for you. Akamaru leaned forward and licked Naruto's face, making him sputter before the big dog picked up Kiba in his mouth and trotted off. Naruto went down and resealed the gate before he smirked at the five shocked and confused men. You win some, you lose some. Now if you could leave my property. I would appreciate it. You're lowering the property value. Most of the men glared at him, but he shrugged as he walked back to the house to talk to his mates. Naruto walked in and saw a scared Ino, shell-shocked Sakura, smirking Anko, wide-eyed Asuma, and sad Kurinai. All were staring at Hinata and Haku, and the latter was grooming Hinata with quiet purrs and a lot of licking and patting. Hinata seemed agitated but not furious like Naruto expected. He walked over quietly after he shut the door and looked with concern at Hinata, who smiled at him and her tail waved happily as she saw him. Hello, Naruto-kun. How is the meat coming? Naruto blinked at her then shrugged, um. Choji took over the grill when your old teammate and Naruto's mouth closed with a click when Hinata's ears lay back against her head and her eyes hardened. Haku suddenly went into overdrive and began petting and rubbing Hinata more trying to calm her, and after a few seconds she smiled at Haku and started grooming her. Naruto was about to join in when Kurinai tugged lightly on his elbow. What's going on? Naruto smirked as he continued to watch his women. Well whenever one of us gets agitated or angry, the others will groom them in order to calm them down. Mostly it's just patting and rubbing our fur and cuddling and kissing, although Haku likes to lick. Kurinai nodded but then asked again. So what was this thing with Kiba? 
he said something about Hinata being his mate. Naruto handed the crumpled scroll to Kurenai before he stepped in and began helping Hinata groom Haku, who began to purr louder in appreciation. It didn't take long before all three were calm again and began to snuggle in an intimate manner until Kurenai's screech of surprise made all three sets of ears to lay back and the trio to look sharply at her. Nani. What imbecile would make a contract like this? Naruto grumbled as he looked at Hinata who started to frown again. A desperate, horny and selfish one. Hinata nodded, then looked at Kurenai's eyes narrowed as she looked at her former student. What? What is wrong with Kurenai-sensei? Kurenai handed the scroll to Hinata and shook her head. Brace yourself. The person that approved this will blow your mind. Hinata accepted the scroll then looked at the name at the bottom and her face hardened as she cast it to the floor. No. I don't believe it. Naruto rubbed Hinata's shoulder and whispered soothingly to her, but she was so angry she pulled away from him, her tail going bushy. I won't have this. I am not a piece of chattel to be bargained off to the highest bidder. Give him a second chance. Oh I'll give him that. Hinata turned to the front door, but Naruto's hand grabbed her arm and stopped her. Hinata-chan. Wait. But Hinata's anger was at a level where few would have been able to calm her at this point as she snatched her arm away and reached the front door, but before she could get it more than partially open the door was slammed shut again by a clawed hand that she should have recognized immediately but didn't. Hinata whirled on the offending hand and came face to face with a just as angry Naruto. How dare why master. Naruto's lip lifted showing his canines as he growled lightly at her, and Hinata instantly became meek as her ears and tail drooped. F forgive me master. I. But Naruto's face hadn't changed as he towered over his mate. Bedroom. Now. The words were spoken quietly, but with such authority that everyone knew immediately it wasn't a request. Hinata nodded and with her tail still low, she walked to the stairs and walked to their bedroom. Haku came over and looked at Naruto, a quiet purr on her lips. Master. And Naruto's gaze fell on her as well, and she flinched slightly when she saw the fire in his eyes. You too. Upstairs. Haku nodded before she turned and bounded up the stairs and into their bedroom. Naruto looked at the assembled faces that were now joined by Shikamaru and Choji before he bowed slightly to them. Excuse me for a few moments. Kurenai made it as if she were going to step in front of him, but his glare and Anko's hand stopped her. Without another word Naruto ascended the stairs and entered his bedroom. Kurenai whirled on Anko with a look of anger on her face. Why did you stop me? They aren't his slaves. Anko frowned and shook her head. No, they aren't. And if you sat down and shut your women's lib mouth for once you might understand. Kurenai blinked in surprise at Anko's tone, but Anko didn't give her a chance to get started. You are a guest in Naruto's house, and you know fully well that Naruto wouldn't do a thing to hurt her or his other mate. What you don't realize is you were about to interfere in a situation that could have gotten you killed. At Kurenai's confused look Anko pushed her back onto the couch. Look. They aren't human anymore. They work by different laws and biological instincts. Sanadi was telling me all about it last night at the bar. He is their alpha. They obey him because it is ingrained in them and obeying him gives them pleasure of some kind. Like a good vibe if you want. If that vibe is disrupted then none of them are happy. And as you saw from Hinata's reaction, unhappiness or anger is a bad thing for them. Whatever is going on up there is their business, and you would do best to remember that. Kurenai frowned as she looked towards the stairs and mumbled, but I don't want her to get hurt. Anko sat next to Kurenai and shook her head. She won't. I know you care about her, but she isn't the same little girl you trained. She is a woman and she has her life to live. You have to let her live it whether you like it or not. Kurenai frowned as she thought she heard a yelp of pain come from the upper part of the house, but she couldn't say if it actually happened or if her fear had made it happen. Naruto came into the bedroom and found Hinata and Haku kneeling side by side on their huge pillow bed. In essence it was a large round futon mattress with pillows all over it and seemed to suit all three better than the bed they removed when Hinata first moved in. Naruto walked back and forth in front of them a few times, grumbling to himself. Haku and Hinata both followed him with their eyes and ears until he stopped in front of them. Hinata. I don't want you to ever disrespect me like that again. You flying off half-cocked is a reminder of why I spent so much time in the hospital in my youth. Hinata nodded, but he could see the doubt in her face. But Nerukun. Naruto shook his head though. No. There is no excuse for it. Take off your kimono. Hinata looked at Naruto in surprise, but then hoped he would not whip her as she undid her clothes and let them drop to the floor. Haku smirked and her tail lashed the air as Naruto pointed to the floor, and Hinata nodded as she touched her forehead to the floor. Naruto's resident perked up and smirked at himself. So you gonna spank her, whip her or something better? Naruto smirked as he nodded. I'm gonna do what needs to be done. The great fox nodded and his tails waved in anticipation. 
Naruto walked around behind her, and she heard the sound of his belt being undone, and she shuddered in misery as she expected the leather to fall at any moment, but suddenly her panties slid down, and she realized she wouldn't even be given that much protection. She felt Haku's hands lift her hips higher and was saddened, but she knew that Haku and even her were supposed to do this if their positions were reversed. Anada suddenly felt an intrusion as something large pushed past her nether lips, and she yelped in surprise. Looking over her shoulder she saw the smirking face of Naruto and an equally smirking Haku as he pushed his length completely into her. Hinata gasped and shocked her hips back into his as he started to slide out again. Master. What? Oh. Naruto grinned before he pushed back in again making her gasp as her eyes closed. I thought this would be a good reminder of how not to act when guests were around. I know you were pissed at Hina-chan. But you have to remain cool or we could create more problems for us in the future. Anada through the immense pleasure nodded as he started hammering into her. Haku decided she wanted to play as well and got under Hinata and began licking her and Naruto alternately while he pumped into her. Hinata. Master. She said between loud slurps. Hinata growled and began to moan and yelp over and over again at the feeling then as her orgasm gripped her she cried out, forgive me master. Forgive me. Naruto smiled down at his mate as he pounded it into her a few more times, then released deep into her being, with a distinct difference. I forgive you. He whispered before he pulled out and his seed spilled out of him into Haku's mouth, who seemed like she was in heaven. The fox lord grinned at him as he lay back down in Naruto's mind. Not as good as a spanking. But still acceptable. Naruto nodded with a smile before he looked outward again. Glad you approve. Naruto chuckled as he watched both of his mates, then sat down next to them. We will go and discuss this with Hiyashi tonight. I have a feeling there is more going on here than we see. Oh. Downstairs they all heard the muted slapping sounds then Hinata's muffled cry of forgive me master. Forgive me. And they all looked at each other in astonishment. I can't believe it. I never thought Naruto could ever discipline anyone. Least of all someone he loved. Sakura nodded at Ino, but they all looked at Shikamaru as he spoke up. Just because he was an idiot in the academy doesn't mean he would stay one the rest of his life. Kurenai looked pale as she considered what Hinata must have just gone through. Anko just shrugged, then sighed. Well Naruto is kind of a traditionalist. And everyone knows he has a lot of honor. Hinata knows you aren't supposed to embarrass the head of the house in front of guests. Especially in his own house. Kurenai looked sad, then nodded. Even with her feminist views she wouldn't have done it to Asuma when he was still alive. No one would fault Naruto for whatever he did to Hinata upstairs. It was his right. But the rest of the afternoon no one could figure out why Hinata wouldn't stop looking at her master and smiling with a blush. Tsum looked extremely pissed as she stomped back and forth in front of the hospital bed her son resided in. The total damage was a broken arm, four cracked ribs, broken cheekbone, broken and chipped teeth, a broken tailbone, bruised testicles, and a major concussion that Kiba still had not awoken from. Tsum looked at the door as Hana walked in and growled low in her throat. I want them. I want the bastards that did this to him. Hana nodded as she looked at her brother and winced. She had seen some grisly injuries and she had seen some ass kicking, but this was by far one of the worst she had seen in a long time. I talked to Akamaru and he said it happened at Uzumaki's estate. Supposedly Kiba went to get Hinata, but he went inside and came back out like this. Tsum frowned as she looked at her son again and knew that something was definitely missing from the story. But since Kiba couldn't give her answers, she would have to go to the secondary source. Go talk to them. Tell her I want an interview with Yuzumaki over what happened today. Hana looked confused for a moment as she looked at her mom. Why not talk to him yourself mom? I've worked with him before. While he isn't the brightest bulb in the pack, he is fairly easy to get along with and he's a damn good ninja. Tsum, still looking at her son, sighed. If this is just a mistake of some sort, then it needs to be clarified. Naruto is a favored one of them and insulting either of them could lead to problems. But if this was something intentional because of Naruto or because of Kiba's stupidity, then it needs to be dealt with. Harshly. Hana nodded as she turned and walked out of the hospital room, knowing full well that this no matter whose fault it was would not turn out well. The Ashi sat at his desk and mulled over the day's events, as well as the clan business for the day. While he was embarrassed over what had happened that morning, he was happy that his daughter was happy. It had been a long time since he could remember ever seeing that, and he hoped he could see it more. Already he noticed a change in Hanabi as even though she wore the high Uga mask, she had a bounce in her step, and this made him happy as well. The Ashi looked up and frowned as there was a knock at the door. Come in. He said as he compassed his face. The door opened and a servant bowed to him. Excuse me Lord High Uga, but you have visitors. One is your daughter Hinata. The Ashi looked surprised, then nodded at the servant. Let them in please. 
The servant opened the door all the way, and in stepped Naruto, Hinata, and Haku quietly stepped in and bowed to the High Uga Lord who returned the bow to them. This is an unexpected surprise. But his voice trailed off as he saw the seriousness in Hinata's eyes and the hard look on Naruto's. What has happened? Naruto leaned forward and handed the badly abused scroll to Hiashi, and the trio gave him time to read it and compose himself. When he looked up at Hinata his voice was heavy with barely restrained anger. My daughter. I promise you the Hyuga clan's honor. On your mother's grave I did not agree to this, nor did I know anything about it up until this moment. Hinata's eyes softened as she slowly nodded to her father before she sighed and her shoulders slumped. As soon as Hinata deflated, Haku turned to her and was trying to comfort her sister. I had hoped you would say that father. But if you didn't agree to this then that means someone has used your signature and the family seal to broker this without authority. The ashy nodded, but the fury was still in his face. I will find out who has done this to my daughter. They will pay. Hinata nodded and Haku continued to groom her, but Naruto was frowning. What feels the strangest here is that Kiba seemed almost completely sure the document was authentic. Either he had something to do with this and knows who drew this document up, or he is completely innocent in this, and somehow I doubt that. The Ashi nodded as he considered. I do not think there is an innocent bone in the boy's body. But one way to know if the document is authentic, despite the forgery, is to check the Hall of Records. The Hokage's seal is here as well, and I do not think she would have gone for this the way it is worded. She could not interfere in clan affairs, but this is giving him permission to rape Hinata if she refused him. The three looked shocked at the clan head before Haku blinked, then started grooming Hinata again. Hinata shook her head, and a tear slipped from her eye. I I never knew Kiba was that despicable. How could he condone such a thing? Naruto frowned as he looked at the clan head who sighed before he handed the scroll back to him. The boy is obviously unbalanced and you and my daughter are the object of his desires. The four remained quiet for a while, until another knock brought Hiashi's head up again. Yes. The door opened and Hanabi stood there with a small smile, but when she saw Hinata and the rest all looking distraught, she immediately wanted to know what happened. The others deigned not to tell her at this time. And while she wasn't happy about it, she accepted they needed their privacy in this matter for the time being. Naruto stood and was soon followed by Haku and Hinata, and all three bowed to the clan head who stood and returned it again. The door is open for you always and do not hesitate to come to me if something is wrong. Naruto nodded as Hinata went and hugged her father. Thank you father. I am glad you are not involved in this. The Ashi smiled lightly, then nodded. We will discover the truth about my daughter. Before they left, Hanabi blocked the doorway and peeked around at her father. Um. Could I spend the night with them? The Ashi frowned at this, but seeing the light in both Hinata and Hanabi's eyes he reluctantly agreed. Very well. But do not be a pest Hanabi, and do not pick up any bad habits. Hanabi grinned as she shook her head. Don't worry. I have no intention of having sex in public. The Ashi sputtered as she made a hasty retreat, and the others followed her out. The lord of the Hyuga clan sat heavily and held his head in his hands. Why couldn't I have had at least one boy? That night, Naruto lay on the mattress with Haku curled on one side of him and Hinata on the other side. It had been an insane day, but at least it was over. And hopefully tomorrow will be saner. The bedroom door quietly opened, and Hanabi stood there holding a teddy bear in just an oversized shirt and panties. Is it really okay, sister? Haku smiled at her, and Hinata did as well as the three gestured her into the room. Hanabi closed the door, then crawled down and lay between Naruto and Hinata, hugging the bear to her chest. Of course it's alright, Hanabi. Your family. Never forget that. Naruto said as he pulled the comforter on top of all four of them, then settled again. Naruto kissed her forehead, making her blush slightly before he kissed Haku on the lips, and then Hinata. Good night Hina-chan, good night Haku-chan, good night Hanabi-chan. Hinata smirked before she returned it to the other three. Good night Haku-chan, good night Hanabi-chan, good night Neru-kun. Hanabi grinned cutely as she chimed in. Good night sister Hinata, good night sister Haku, good night Naruto-kun. As the three settled down Haku suddenly sat up and yelled, good night John boy. Then lay back down again with a snicker. Naruto glowered at Hinata before he closed his eyes. I told you not to let her watch those reruns. Chapter 8. But the growl Naruto stretched and smacked his lips a few times before he opened his eyes. At first. He wasn't sure what he was looking at, but he was sure it was someone's head. As he began to ponder just whose head it was, a pleasant sensation in the lower region of his body made him smile. He would know that tongue anywhere and sure enough as he peered around the blocking extremity he saw Haku's brown tresses move as she slurped away on his fleshy treat. Feeling the same sensation along the other side he moved in the other direction and smirked at Hinata following her sister's example, lavishing exquisite attention to the slightly sleepy who was her mate. 
After a few lovely seconds of this Hanabi's pale eyes looked at him, a slight blush on her face. Um. Are they still doing it? Naruto chuckled before he nodded. Oh most definitely. And very well I might add. Hanabi blushed deeper but said nothing else for a time as Naruto sighed. The girls were now taking turns trying to get to the center of his Tootsie Pop. And honestly he wasn't sure how many licks it would take, but he wasn't really keeping count. After some more time passed Hanabi looked at him again and she squeezed his chest tightly with her arms. Um. Naruto-kun. Do you want me to? Before she trailed off with a huge blush that immediately made Naruto self-conscious. Naruto blinked in curiosity before he gasped again. Want to see Firecracker? Hanabi looked down for a second, blushing still firmly in place. H help Hinata and Haku. With you. She mumbled as she bit her bottom lip fetchingly, but Naruto's reaction was not what she had expected. No. No 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 no. And him shaking his head vigorously from side to side made Hanabi frown as she looked at him, eyes looking hurt and angry. The young Kanoichi, normally stiff and unresponsive, was suddenly very animated as she sat up and glared at him. Why not? Am I not pretty enough? Naruto blinked as he looked down at his mates, eyes pleading for advice. Hanada smirked at him before she licked the mushroom cap with a twirl of her tongue and answered him as Haku moved in to continue. Don't look at me Naru-kun. This is your decision. I'm just a girl. She said with a barely stifled giggle. Naruto frowned as he looked from Hinata to Haku, who snickered and mumbled, John boy. Before bobbing down on him with a loud slurp. Of course, the fox didn't help the situation. Fuck her too. Go on, give it to her. It'll be a good experience for her and another notch on your belt. Naruto glowered at the fox lord but chose to ignore him as he turned outward and tried to be as gentle as possible with the young ninja. Um? Firecracker. It's not that you aren't pretty, you're actually very pretty. The problem is you aren't like us. Half demons. Well I could go through the motions with you. And I probably would enjoy sex with you, you would be like an outsider. And eventually you would feel neglected and I don't want to do that to you. Hanabi frowned as she considered this, but in truth she really wondered what might be wrong with her that this man would reject the idea of them being together. I know my boobs are smaller than Hinata, but I'm sure they will get bigger, and besides Haku's aren't much bigger than mine. Haku was a modest B cup, while Hinata was a large C. Hanabi wasn't really self-conscious of her body, but she realized while she filled an A cup completely, the boys in her class hardly glanced her way. Look at Hanabi-chan. It isn't that you aren't desirable. Under different circumstances I would be happy to pursue a relationship with you. I'm very happy. But right now. I see you as a little sister who needs my guidance and protection. Not a potential mate. And to be honest two mates is more than enough for me. Hanabi blushed cutely at the reference and seemed genuinely relieved at his admittance. Well I did always want a big brother so I could be a little more girly. But she frowned slightly as she looked into his eyes again. But you and Hinata-chan and Haku-chan have sex in front of me. Like now. Doesn't that mean something? Naruto chuckled at the obscene slurping sounds coming from below him as the pleasure began to intensify, then he shrugged. Call us an odd family then. Doing this around anyone else doesn't bother me anymore, Hinata-chan is becoming more comfortable, and it never bothered Haku. It isn't that we have no shame or anything like that, we just don't worry about things like that because. And Naruto shrugged with a smirk. We aren't hurting anyone and who cares what they think. And Haku giggled and nipped at the testicle nearest her as Hinata did her impersonation of a clogged drain pipe and Naruto was the snake. Naruto could have continued talking to Hanabi, but he was in heaven and was close to an impending orgasm. Just before Hanabi got his attention again. So. You don't mind if. Naruto almost growled in frustration as he thought he was pretty clear on the subject. Hanabi-chan. I'm not going to have sex with you. Hanabi blinked, then shook her head quickly. No, I understand that and I respect your decision even if I don't understand the reason why. Naruto's frown was still in place as he looked at her. Then what are you talking about? At this point Haku chimed in causing the girl to blush again. Cheeky bum looker. Which all at once made Hanabi almost turn purple, Hinata to lose her grip on Naruto and Naruto to blink in surprise before he growled at Hinata. Damn it I said not to let her watch that old rerun channel. He groused at Hinata who only giggled again. But then the words and the meaning sunk in making Naruto's eyes open wide. Huh? You. You want to watch. It should have been obvious to Naruto, the scent of another woman was in the air, and her nipples were quite obvious through the shirt she had on. Never let it be said that Naruto was the master of observation. Especially when it came to females. Hanabi's eyes turned downward, and she nodded her head in the affirmative a few times, but couldn't seem to get her tongue to work as she squeezed her thighs tightly together. Naruto considered for a few moments as he wondered what Hiashi would do if he found out. Of course the man would go right off the deep end with no floaties. But they could always claim innocence, he hoped. 
Still the idea of his father-in-law trying to his dangly bits did not sit well with Naruto. Um. I'll agree on one condition. Your father never finds out. If he did I'm sure he'd blow a gasket and I really don't want to find out if you can reproduce without testicles. All the girls shared a giggle even though Naruto got a twinge of apprehension from down below. Hanabi's happy grin made him sigh with relief though as she nodded at him. Of course Naruto-kun. My father would never understand. She said with a little indignation. Naruto mumbled quietly. That both his daughters are closet perverts. Probably not. Hanabi's hand lightly smacking his chest while not meant in a bad way caused Haku to lightly smack the back of her head and waggle a finger at her. No hit master. She said in a matter-of-fact manner and Hanabi nodded solemnly. Sorry, sister. Naruto-kun. Naruto only grunted before he kissed her forehead. No harm done. Which helped Hanabi to relax her face again and she looked shyly at the demon container. D do you mind if I h hold you while? And in an odd display Hanabi gestured with her head at Haku and Hinata with a deep blush which Naruto had to admit looked cute as hell. After a few seconds of thought Naruto shrugged. Sure I don't mind. Hanabi grinned happily as she leaned over and wrapped her arms around his chest, but he lurched slightly against Hanabi as she hugged him tight and the pressure got to a level that he was sure he couldn't hold much longer. Hinata gave way to Haku again and smiled at her maid and her sister. Since Narukan approves, feel free to watch whenever. It is still a little embarrassing for me. Except when my heart is on, but as long as Narukan does not mind then neither do I Hinata got a thoughtful look before she smiled more at her master. Incidentally I think you broke my heart Narukan. I don't feel the burning need anymore. Naruto only smirked in response. I wonder why. He grunted. The fox lord in his mind snickered but said nothing. Hanabi looked at Hinata and nodded as her eyes kept darting to what Haku was doing. Neither paid much attention to what Naruto had said. Before much else could be said, Naruto gasped loudly and arched his hips up as he couldn't hold back any longer and his orgasm powered through his body, taking away his control as Haku slurped down the first two bursts, then swallowed with a giggle as she pointed Naruto and Hinata's face with a triumphant shout. Share. Hinata was caught by surprise at first as the next two spurts made a loud splat sound against her cheek and chin before she dove in and got her share of the precious fluid. Naruto was oblivious until he finally rode his orgasm out and glanced at the two fox girls with affection. Before the fireworks started. Sister waste. Haku said with a big grin as she pointed an accusing finger at Hinata's cheek. Hinata immediately wiped her cheek with her finger, then sucked it clean. See? No waste. Haku shook her head before she stared at Hinata and mumbled. Waste. Shame. Then cast her eyes downward as if ashamed to look at Hinata. Hinata put her feet under her and from the slight wiggle in her hips and tightening up of her leg muscles, Naruto knew what was coming. Oh waste am I? I'll give you a waste. Hinata sprang and took Haku down, who let out a shriek of protest before they began to wrestle for absolutely no reason at all, and Naruto snickered at their antics. Hanabi blinked in surprise as she watched the two tumble around, a look of concern adorning her face as she mumbled to Naruto. Um. Shouldn't we break it up? Naruto grinned at her before shrugging, hands going behind his head as he relaxed. Go right ahead. Hanabi didn't know why he was still smiling, but she was genuinely worried that the two might hurt each other. Obviously Hanabi had forgotten about Naruto's prankster nature. Hanabi frowned at him before she stood up and approached the two wrestling females. Now see here you two. Naruto suppressed a laugh as he did a slow countdown from five in his head. As soon as he hit one, both Haku and Hinata turned and grabbed Hanabi and pulled her into the wrestling match with a loud squawk of protest. Which helped her not at all. But the chuckle our hero got comfortable on his pillows and wondered if there was any money to be had in female wrestling. This was fun stuff. Especially when clothes got torn off. After the initial excitement died down, the four settled in for a big breakfast and family time. Hanabi turned out to be a superb cook. Even better than Hinata in some areas as she made a miso soup that made Naruto's toes curl. It was decided she should come over more often, all in all the morning had started off pretty well. And then of course there was the knock at the door that made everything go to shit. Naruto had a mouthful of mackerel just as they heard the tone of the sounding board on the front gate. Grumbling as he got up he mumbled a quick, I'll get it. Then grumbled louder as no one else moved before him. Opening the front door he trotted down to the gate to see an Anbu agent standing there holding an envelope. What can I do for you Crane? The Crane mask agent handed the envelope through the gate to him and bowed politely. Naruto-sama, Hokage-sama would like to see you in her office at 10 am. She said this was non-negotiable and my apologies as I quote, you tell him his ass better be here or I'll pound him into next week. End quote. Naruto paled at Anbu's words and wondered what he could have done wrong. Tsunade rarely used her angry voice on him. But when she did. Thank you Crane. I will be there with my mates shortly. 
the agent nodded then disappeared in a swirl of leaves as Naruto walked back to and through the front door of his house. Opening the envelope Naruto read the note briefly, then nodded to himself. Ladies get dressed. We have an appointment at Bachin's office in 30 minutes, and I have a feeling this will be ugly. All three women looked at him and he waved the envelope. It has to do with Kiba and the incident yesterday. Tsum and Hiashi will both be there, so I guess it only appropriate that the rest of us be there too. Anata nodded as she quickly put the dishes in the sink, then Haku and her hurried up the stairs to get dressed. Anabi looked at Naruto with a slight frown. Kiba. Naruto frowned but nodded slightly. Believe me when I tell you this is clan backstabbing at its worst. Anabi frowned and her face seemed a little downcast but nodded in return as she ran to the guest room to get changed. Naruto frowned as he shook his head. This was not going to be fun. On one side sat Inuzuka Tsum and her daughter Hana, representing Kiba he supposed. In the middle but leaning towards Naruto was Hayuga Hiyashi and his youngest daughter Hanabi. Finally to the other side of the room sat Naruto, Hinata, and Haku waiting patiently until they read through the scroll. After a few minutes Tsunade looked up at everyone and the temperature seemed to drop a few degrees. Let me get this straight. Hiyashi, you and Tsum had nothing to do with this and you Naruto and Hinata were unaware of this until yesterday. All three nodded quietly until Tsum spoke up. I would never sign a contract like this. Even within our own clan, if a male finds a female attractive he has to physically dominate her. And this practice is not without significant risk, as if the male fails his bid to dominate the female she is liable to castrate him if he is not strong enough to fight her off afterwards. Naruto paled again and his hands went protectively to his crotch, but he was pleasantly surprised to find Hinata's and Haku's hands already there protecting their territory, ears laid back and a fierce look on their faces. Tsum didn't notice as she continued. I would not condone one of our males to initialize Inuzuka mating rituals with a female outside of our clan. And what is written in that scroll isn't even one of our rituals. It is rape pure and simple. The Ashi nodded as well. Our clan has an old capture ritual for when we were still small and growing. It is not used anymore. But what is written there on that scroll is almost a bastardized version of it. Everyone perked up at these words, and he Ashi cleared his throat before he continued. The ritual calls for a man to capture a woman and take her to a Shinto shrine where they are married. But even then he must. Take her before the marriage is considered legitimate. The difference between this and what is in the scroll is the woman is supposed to fight back as fiercely as she can. Even if the man is maimed or killed in the process. Again this was only done among certain clans and anything done to someone outside of those clans was considered rape and punished accordingly. As I said it is a very old custom that isn't practiced anymore and I plan to have it stricken from active law as it is no longer necessary. Tsunade hummed quietly before she nodded. So it seems we have rogue elements in both of your clans wanting to get rid of Hinata and appease Kiba. Which makes Kiba look like the guilty party and also someone within my own organization that feels the need to use the Hokage's seal and forge my signature. All said in a calm manner. Tsunade's eyes were ablaze and everyone knew someone was going to have a new orifice soon. And everyone had their suspicions. Narrowing his eyes Naruto looked at the one person he hoped had nothing to do with this. And frowned as he saw that perhaps he was right. Well all I know is that Kiba was certain Hinata was now his. So he at least believed the document was legitimate. So I'm sure he knew who or at least one of the who's that helped do this. Tsum frowned but couldn't help but not also. It seemed that despite what she wanted to believe. Kiba was definitely involved on some level. In the time that these revelations were made he as she turned and looked at Hinata before looking ever so slowly at Hanabi who despite her hard upbringing and training looked very small and lost. Hanabi? He said in a quiet but firm voice. Her eyes remained downcast and she did sniff once or twice. Father, I didn't create this. But I may have helped it along. The Ashi's eyes hardened and everyone looked at her, but no one said a word as she took a deep breath. You were away on business and one of the elders came to me and asked if I wanted to make you proud of me. Of course. I wanted you to be pleased and to see me in a better light, so I asked what I was supposed to do to make this occur. The elder told me that if I could get the house seal and let him examine it, he would tell me how to differentiate between a real and a fake. The Ashi's eyes had not changed, but his posture did, and it looked less threatening toward Hanabi. Go on. Hanabi took a deep breath and let it out before she nodded. I got the seal and took it to him and he examined it, then he showed me the authentication mark, and that is used on the seal itself, so that any paper stamped by it can be verified as authentic. After a few minutes of him explaining, he showed me a fake seal and had me try and authenticate a document with it. Hanabi bit her lip before she looked up at the eyes staring at her. I didn't think this was a trick. I mean why would an elder of the clan try to abuse his power like this? In fact it seemed completely illogical that anyone would do this. 
so I thought nothing of it and used a fake seal and compared it to a stamp he had made on a scroll that had not been filled out yet. The two were obviously different, so telling them apart was easy. Tsunade was frowning at this as well as Tsum and Hana, but Naruto and the rest stared impassively as she continued her narration. After he had discussed this with me, he said he would talk to you about lessons for identifying other such forgeries. Hanabi frowned as she looked down again. He patted me on the head and told me that he was very proud and I was a good girl. Hanabi actually scuffed her foot against the floor before she continued. His words made me warm and happy inside, and I never felt like that before. So I didn't think anything about the incident or anything. Until today. Tsunade looked at the clan head, a frown still on her face, but it was obvious she wasn't sure what to say to this. It's your call Hiashi. I won't interfere in this if you can verify her innocence. Hiashi looked at Hinata and Naruto before he sighed and looked at Hanabi again. Call for Inoichi. Everyone's head popped up at this except Hanabi's, as if she knew what to expect. Hiashi's demeanor did not change, but all knew as the clan head he had to be sure, but as a father, this had to be a difficult decision for him. I do not do this to be cruel to my daughter. But I need to verify her guilt or innocence despite what I may feel personally. If she is guilty, I will turn her over to Yutsunade Sama for justice to be served. Hanada blinked in surprise, but Naruto was still focused on Hanabi and frowned slightly as he saw the tears slide quietly from the young Kinoichi's eyes. With a frown, Naruto walked over, then leaned down and sniffed Hanabi around her neck and shoulders, making her squirm slightly, but not move away. After a few seconds he stood straight again and rubbed the young Kinoichi's head. I don't think Hiyashi Sama is guilty. In fact I sense that she is broken over this and didn't realize the extent of her mistake. Hiyashi looked at Naruto for a moment, then nodded quietly. I see. Well I do not understand your abilities Naruto, I do not doubt them, and I agree with your words. But I am setting a precedent. Hanabi will be checked in this manner because Tsum's son will also be interrogated in this manner. There will be fairness all around or there will be none at all. Tsum looked thoughtful, then nodded. I agree as well. If Kiba is guilty then he should be punished harshly, and I promise he will be. Was all she said as Tsunade nodded. Naruto began to grin but forced himself to stop so as not to embarrass himself as he thought with glee. Kiba. You are Suo going to get it. Tsunade reached over and pressed the intercom button with a frown as she considered everything they had discovered so far. Shizun. Have Anoichi come to my office please. Shizun's voice came back across the intercom and Tsunade nodded as she looked at the small group in front of her. Well. What shall we do while we wait? The majority shrugged at her noncommittally, but Naruto's quiet exclamation made everyone look as if Haku had an idea of her own. Naruto had his hands gripping the waistband of his pants while Haku tugged on his legs. Haku. Stop. Haku only giggled at him as she continued to tug playfully. Master. The ashy tried to frown in his usual manner, but shock and embarrassment were beginning to win out over Tsum. Raised an eyebrow and grinned as the outline of Naruto's not-so-slim gym was obvious against his leg. Unnoticed by all was Hana whose eyes were large and staring intently at Naruto's covered protuberance, and her thoughts would shock most. Kami it's like he has a roll of kobasa in there. How does he hide that thing? These thoughts were thankfully not voiced as Sanadi smacked her face in her hand and grumbled before she stared at her adopted brother from between her fingers. Must you? I mean really you guys are like rabbits. Naruto grinned sheepishly before he formed his resolve. Haku. Stop it. The command in his voice made Haku let go of his pants, but the effect on her was surprising. As her hands drifted to her sides Haku's ears drooped immediately and her tail stopped moving and hung limp, and almost instantly Hinata's did as well, and she whined quietly at Naruto. The young tried not to, but he frowned, and the air in the room seemed to grow heavy in a matter of seconds as he began to feel a funk settle over him. Tsunade blinked in surprise as the atmosphere almost screamed depression, and even though Haku was pressed against her master's legs, a few tears ran from her eyes down her cheeks, surprising everyone in the room. Naruto leaned over and kissed Haku's cheek before giving her head and ears a half-hearted rub. But it didn't even produce a weak purr from the ice fox girl. Anada had also seemed to sink into a funk as she inched over and hugged Haku, her tail lying just as limp on the floor as her sister's, and her ears pressed flat against her scalp. Hanada leaned over and kissed one of Haku's cheeks as she also began to cry lightly, and they hugged each other, but anyone could see it was a half-hearted attempt that did not achieve what she wanted as Tsunade looked from the group to Tsum, who was frowning deeply and sniffing the air. It's almost like the air in a funeral home during a wake. Is this what you were describing at the bar Tsunade-sama? They shrugged helplessly as she turned back to Naruto and his mates, unsure of what to say, but the obvious change in the three began to bother her immensely. The Ashi leaned closer and whispered Hinata's name, but she didn't respond immediately, and Naruto turned inward as Sara began to close in. Old Fox. You didn't tell me it would be this bad so quickly. 
Ayubi stared at him curiously, then shrugged his shoulders. I am a full demon. And you are not. It is obvious it affects half demons faster than full bloods. I do not know since I have never encountered a Hanyu under these conditions before. Perhaps it is best if you do not refuse your mates if you don't have to. The fox finished by raising an eyebrow at Naruto who nodded silently before he leaned over and in a brazen manner, grabbed both Hinata and Haku's breasts and squeezed them making them both gasp and look at him. Naruto forced a smile to push away the sad feeling and fondled them again. Now. Wipe those tears. Master has something that will cheer you both up. Hinata sniffled and reached tentatively for him and Haku's eyes raised to his in hope, tears still running a marathon down her face. Am Master. She stuttered as Naruto's grin became more real, and Sanadi began realizing that this was something in their physiology that needed more investigation. As she sat there she decided rather than watch them suffer in pain, she would make a sacrifice for her favorite and his mates. Naruto. Use my private room. But don't make a mess. Naruto grinned as he stood up with a mumbled thanks botchin. And his mates immediately perked up with smiles and followed Naruto into the adjoining room and shut the door. Tsunade immediately threw up a privacy seal and growled at the room in general once it was in place without turning around. Not a word from anyone. No one said a word. But Tsunade was sure she heard a snicker from one of the women present but wasn't sure who it was. There were good odds it was Tsum. But Tsunade, while still a gambling addict, didn't want to change it for once. His eyes fluttered open and he looked around the room groggily as he tried to adjust to the light. Close the damn curtains. He said in a weak command and a nurse immediately complied. How are you feeling? He looked down at himself with a grimace before he looked up at her. Like shit. How long have I been asleep? The nurse looked at him and shrugged noncommittally. Two days more or less. When you passed out we were worried you wouldn't wake up, but we kept a close eye on your vitals and made adjustments to your medicine. The doctor will be pleased it worked. The man nodded as he raised his arm which was covered in bandages and frowned at it. It feels strange. Is everything intact as it should be? The nurse nodded at him as she looked over the chart. If you want I will get the doctor so he can explain everything that is going on and your condition. But you will need to finish recovering before we can fully evaluate your condition. The man slowly nodded as he flexed his fingers into a fist and looked at the arm as he turned it over and examined it from every angle. Yes. Get the doctor. I want to know everything. The nurse bowed before she strode from the room. Yes, Danzo-sama. Inoichi walked into the Hokage's office and took in the personnel sitting around the Hokage's desk. From the message he got from Shizun he assumed it was going to be a standard mind walk in order to ascertain someone's innocence. He didn't expect the Hayuga and Inuzuka clan heads to be there, nor their respective progeny. What was confusing him was the lack of a third party. Okage-sama, you need me? Tsunade nodded as she gestured to an available seat. Give us a few minutes Inoichi. We're waiting on Naruto and his mates. Inoichi nodded as he sat down and looked at them with a serious expression. Will he be coming soon? Silence reigned in the office for all of three seconds before Tsum guffawed along with her daughter as they fell against each other, unable to hold it in any longer. The ashy sat stoically, a slight blush on his face, while Hanabi turned away from him and sputtered once or twice to try and maintain her decorum. Tsunade. Shook her head and rubbed her eyes. Why me? She grumbled as Tsum's brain laughter echoed in the room. Inoichi sat confused at the various expressions but was certain he missed something in the translation. As the mirth died down the door to Tsunade's private room opened and Naruto stepped out with a grin, followed by Hinata and Haku. Who seemed to grin wider than Naruto and Hinata together. Inoichi blinked at the three before he looked at Tsunade who glared at him openly, seemingly daring the man to say something, but as all knew Inoichi was not a stupid man. He left his mouth shut. Tsunade, seeing the interrogator wasn't going to need to be brained, turned back to Naruto and mumbled. All better now. With a quirked eyebrow. Naruto, still smiling, nodded. Oh yeah. Smooth sailing now. Haku reached an arm around Naruto and cupped his goodies as she grinned at him. Master does a body good. Inoichi grinned goofily as he looked at the ice mistress and slightly embarrassed Naruto. Isn't milk supposed to be good for the body? Hanada bounced over to the couch they shared earlier and sat down. Oh. Haku knows what she means. The grin was still plastered to her face, and soon between giggles noticed with a sniff that the smell of sex was obvious on the three, so for her and Hana, there was no doubt to what happened in the room. In actuality the only one who didn't know was Inoichi, but despite his confusion he was beginning to catch on. The man cleared his throat and refused to head in the direction the conversation was going and looked at it again. Um. Who am I supposed to mind walking Lady Tsunade? She wiped her eyes again before she looked at the interrogator, then nodded to Hanabi. If you will, I need you to look through Hanabi Hayuga and interview her memories of. And she looked at the girl in question who quietly whispered a timeline to the man and nodded to him. 
leave no stone unturned. We are trying to verify her innocence in this, and anything you see will be important. Inoichi nodded before he stood up and gestured to Hanabi to sit in the chair he just vacated. Just relax. This won't hurt, but it might feel a bit uncomfortable if you fight it. Hanabi nodded as she got into a comfortable position and closed her eyes. Inoichi made some hand signs and gathered his chakra before he settled into one sign, and Hanabi stiffened briefly before she relaxed again with a loud sigh. The ashi, though appearing unconcerned, watched intently for any signs that spoke of Hanabi's pain, but she gave no outward sign. Tsum also watched intently as she had never seen the Yamanaka performed, except by the man's daughter back during the exams, and was curious what would happen when an expert used it. Naruto sat with Haku on one side of him, and Hinata on the other, and all three watched and their ears were locked onto the two as well. Not a sound other than breathing was heard as they waited what seemed like an eternity until Hanabi finally gasped, and both her and Inoichi opened their eyes. Inoichi frowned slightly, and Hanabi's eyes turned downward as she looked deeply ashamed, and everyone in the room feared the worst. Inoichi sighed as he went and stood by the Hokage's desk. I have reviewed her memories and while it isn't my place this whole scenario could have been avoided on the Hyuga's side if the clan head showed more care and concern for his family. The Ashi had the good grace to look embarrassed as he spoke up. I know of my past shortcomings Inoichi-san. Can you please tell us what you saw? Inoichi nodded once curtly before he began his narration. It seems all that Hanabi did was try to learn more so that you would be proud of her. The elder asked for the seal and explained to her what he wanted. Her entire interaction in this is purely innocent if not completely naive, and she had no idea what was being done or why. There was a feeling of relief that went through the room, though no one, but Hinata made a sound, glad that her sister was innocent, and did not try to have a serious hand in the plot. From what I have seen she has had no knowledge of what transpired until today. Tsunade nodded but looked curiously at Hanabi. Why then does she look so sad? Hanabi looked up and despite holding herself firm, the Hayuga mask of indifference cracked and eventually fell away. Because I almost caused my sister to be raped and taken by a boy she didn't even like let alone love. Turning to Hinata, Hanabi sniffled, her eyes pleading. Forgive me sister. I do not mean to insult you. But if that boy had used this back when you were still alive the first time, you would have been broken and you wouldn't have fought back. And your life would have been ruined and it would have all been my fault. Naruto frowned, but Hinata nodded as she stood up and walked over to Hanabi, then hugged her to her chest. Hanabi cried quietly against her sister while she shushed her and rubbed her back. I am not angry at you Hanabi, it wasn't your fault. Sad as I am to say this, you are probably right. Back then I was weak emotionally, and if Kiba had forced himself on me he probably would have succeeded, so I guess dying was a good thing, as strange as that might sound. The Ashi looked on uncomfortably as his youngest daughter cried against her sister. Emotions as strong as this were never good to let out in public, but hearing his youngest daughter cry made something inside of him almost physically hurt. It reminded him too much of his eldest and when she needed him the most and how he wasn't there for her. Hanada looked up at her father, but before she could react in any way he ashy stood and walked over and hugged both of his daughters at the same time. Hanabi looked up and blinked in surprise until she heard his baritone voice address them. It is alright my daughters. We shall overcome this and stand as we always have. Strong in the face of adversity. Know that this situation no matter who created it will be resolved and the guilty shall be punished. I do not say this as the High Uga Lord, but as a father who will do anything to protect the children he loves. Everyone in the room blinked in surprise including Haku, but minds and hearts settled once he ashy hugged his daughters again, and the scene of the overbearing clan head comforting his daughters was almost enough to bring a tear to the unknowing eye. This would have been a complete moment if not for Haku and her quiet interjection. The quiet sigh made Naruto turn and look at the ice mistress as she wiped her eyes. A Kodak moment was all she said and Naruto pinched a bridge of his nose and grumbled to himself. I'm throwing out the television. His eyes fluttered and he groaned in pain as he forced himself to wake up. He took an experimental sniff and noticed the immediate smell of antiseptics and an all-around clean and knew immediately where he was. Opening his eyes as best he could he saw white tile and growled unhappily. I'm in the hospital. So it wasn't a dream. The male voice next to him made Kiba blink and slowly turn his head. The young Hyuga male sat there and nodded in greeting as they stared at each other. Yep. You are in the hospital. I have to say that you definitely had your ass handed to you. Hiba, not sure who the kid was, spat out in anger at him. What the fuck do you know? And who the hell are you? The boy frowned in mock surprise before he waggled a finger at him. Now that will never do. Using such language is both insulting and degrading, and despite who you are I am sure you can communicate on a higher level than that. Hiba, still frowning, sat up a bit, then sank back down with a gasp of pain. The boy stood and helped Kiba back down on the bed. I wouldn't. 
your injuries are still very fresh and we can't have you dying just yet. Diba tried to focus on his words, but the pain was clouding everything. H help me. I need some painkillers. The man nodded as he took out a piece of paper and placed a pen in Kiba's hands. Alright but I need you to sign this. It gives the doctor's permission to continue treating you in case you lose consciousness again. Diba, only thinking of the pain, nodded and scrawled his name on the line. The boy smiled as he looked at it, then handed Kiba a pill and poured him some water and watched with a smirk as he drank it down. Great. I will leave this on your chart and a doctor should be by soon. Rest well. Diba only nodded and grunted slightly as he felt his eyes droop. The last thought he had was at least it was quick acting. But the smirk Kane walked down the hall then turned and walked down the steps of the nearest stairwell. One obstacle down, still a few more to go. Tsum, Inoichi, Hiashi, and Naruto, Hinata and Haku refused to go in, walked into Kiba's room to see the dog user lying in his hospital bed. It would almost seem he was sleeping peacefully if not for the reddish-black foam dribbling from his mouth onto his gown. They rushed over and performed a, but almost immediately after touched two fingers to his carotid artery, before she frowned and pulled the sheet over his head. I'm sorry Tsum. Your son is dead. The moment would have been poignant after Tsunade's declaration if Haku hadn't stuck her head in and muttered, it's worse than that, he's dead, Jim. Despite the seriousness of the situation, Naruto knew for a fact he was disconnecting the cable when he got home. For those of you who don't know that quote comes from an old Star Trek episode where McCoy examines one of the fallen red shirts and tells the captain that. Chapter 9. Tsunade's fist came down on the desk for the third time, causing it to creak and pop ominously before her voice, filled with anger, put the previous boom from her fist to shame. What the hell do you mean you don't know? You were assigned to patrol that floor. How is it that you weren't patrolling it? The guard in question had been enjoying a cup of coffee and a donut while flirting with his favorite nurse when his supervisor had someone replace him so he could come to the office. It just seemed like another normal day for him when he woke up that morning. But here he was now getting an ass chewing from the Hokage no less. To say he was ready to crap himself would be the understatement of the year. I was following my normal patrol route. Nothing was going on. There was no commotion or anyone calling for help so I stopped and went to the bathroom. Tsunade almost exploded again, but the chief of hospital security interrupted before she could. Didn't you get relieved first? The man turned paler but frowned as he shook his head. Chief. You were the one that put out that memo about us not calling for relief to use the bathroom. Tsunade's head slowly swirled like a cannon being turned to a target and she now glowered at the security chief. Oh you did, did you? Put out a memo for guards to abandon their posts. Where is your brain? Before the man could say anything in his defense Tsunade barreled over him. Wait. Don't answer that. I want you to stand up, turn around and bend over. I'm almost certain that my foot will find it then. The chief sputtered for a second, trying best to ignore the insult, but failing before he turned and reached into a drawer on his desk and pulled out a folder and slammed it to the desk in front of her. You give me a skeleton crew to work with then you question my methods. I was following your orders Lady Hokage. Tsunade glowered at the man again before she opened the folder and began to read the first document. Her frown deepened as she flipped to the next page and then the next one before she looked at the security chief. Budget cuts. Layoffs. I never authorized these changes. Who gave you these orders? The security chief frowned, then pulled out an envelope that he used often for inter-office communication. The last destination was the Hokage's tower. I think it was your assistant. Tsunade turned to the last page in the folder and scowled at what she saw. There, bigger than life on the sheet of paper was her signature and office seal. Tsunade was uncertain what was happening, but she knew she had to have a talk with Shizune. I want you to ignore these orders for the time being and get some more guards in here to patrol the floors, especially the high security wing. Her eyebrows came together in a look of concentration as she stared down at the documents before she closed the folder with a snap which made the security guard flinch. I need to get to the bottom of this. She mumbled before she turned and left the office, leaving two now very relieved men. Sonati's temper was one of the things everyone knew about and no one pissed her off. Unless you wanted to get pounded into paste. The guard after a few minutes was having thoughts of getting into a safer profession. Like tiger taming. Naruto was still frowning as he considered all that had happened. Diba was now dead and they knew there was someone in the Hokage's office and in the Hyuga clan at the very least that had committed what was paramount to treason. Using the clan head seal without permission was punishable by both the clan head and the. But using the Hokage's seal was an automatic sentence in the salt mines, which was a life sentence of hard labor or the death penalty. In certain circles none were sure which was the worst sentence, as the mortality rate for lifers in the salt mines was 8 to 10 years, unless you were especially strong. 
even Naruto as strong as he was and with the decidedly obvious advantage of the Kaiubi, did not give much hope for his chances if he ever was sent there. Which is why for the most part he was a good boy. Sort of. As the foursome walked back to the mansion, Naruto's thoughts seemed to collide and bounce off each other constantly, hence his thinking of the salt mines. The one thing he was sure of was that someone had manipulated the system in a shameful manner, and someone's life, Kiba's, was now forfeit. He didn't want anyone else to get hurt, so they had to get to the bottom of this soon and put a stop to it. Naruto-kun. I was wondering what you were thinking about what we should do next. I believe Hanabi is innocent, Hekinoichi san verified that, but that means there are still people who want to hurt me or people I care about. The hurt in Hinata's voice was obvious, and Naruto wrapped his arm around her and held her close, just as Haku came from the other side and hugged her sister as well, purring quietly as she groomed her. Hanabi still had a grip on Hinata's waist as they walked towards home, but her eyes appeared slightly haunted from the experience. Naruto knew they would have to do something for their little chibi. But in the meantime he had a mate to reassure. I know him. But we really don't have anywhere to start from as to who could be responsible. Hanabi only knew of the one council member that had approached her, and we know how that ended. Flashback. The Ashi's face was twisted in a look of both anger and frustration. As he was given the image of the councilman who was their only suspect. When Inoichi opened his eyes and saw the look on Hiashi's face, he knew no one would be happy in this situation. Hiashi sama I take it you know who our suspect is but. The Ashi took a deep breath and compassed himself before he answered. Councillor Peck of the second main branch family. As Danzo has always been a thorn in whatever Hokage sat in the chair Peck was the thorn in my father's and until recently my side. Everyone looked expectantly at the clan head as he gave them the reason for his consternation. As I said until recently, Peck died in the Hyuga clan hospital six months ago due to a massive coronary. Because of his status he was checked for signs of foul play, but the tests came back negative and it was left at that. Everyone around the room frowned before Tsunade interjected an obvious point. Is it possible there are others in his household that will know about this and could still be a threat? The Ashi nodded quickly, showing he had already thought of this. Indeed. If possible I would like Inoichi san to accompany me to the Hyuga clan estate so we can interview a few other members of his family. There are a few that I believe still hold some of the beliefs Councillor Peck had, and if that is the case I want it eliminated now before anything else occurs. Tsunade nodded in agreement before looking at Hinata who was holding Hanabi in her lap. Hinata, Hanabi. Are the two of you going to be okay? Hinata nodded once before she looked at her sister, who still seemed a bit upset about this whole incident, but she also nodded after a moment of thought. I I just need time to think about Lady Hokage. I know I wasn't always good to Hinata Nichin, and this makes me feel like I did something truly evil to her, even though it wasn't really my fault. I I feel responsible. And I don't like the way that feels. Hinata tried to comfort her sister, but even with the affectionate grooming Hinabi looked mostly miserable. Naruto opened his mouth to say something, but a quiet gurgle came from him before his mouth closed quickly. Tsunade blinked at him and leaned towards him from across her desk. Naruto. Do you have something to add? Naruto shook his head back and forth quickly in a negative manner, but his lips remained tightly closed. Tsunade blinked at him, but turned back to Hiashi and Inoichi. So you will let me know what you discover. I will also do my own investigation into the leak in my office so that I can plug it as well. The Ashi opened his mouth to respond, but Naruto grunted with a slight whine before his hands clenched the back of the couch. The Ashi raised an eyebrow at Naruto, but he bit down on both of his lips and shook his head negatively again. The clan head frowned, but addressed the still looking at the special, who seemed to be beginning to show signs of distress. Um. That would be good Lady Tsunade, and will soon be doing her own investigation into the elements in her clan. Tsunade opened her mouth to respond, but Naruto gasped and tried to keep a straight face, as now Hinata blinked at Naruto, but she didn't seem surprised or shocked by his behavior. She quickly turned back to the with a painted smile. Hokage-sama, aren't there security cameras that cover that part of the hospital and the entrance? Couldn't we see who entered and left the hospital and maybe identify the culprit who killed Kiba that way? Tsunade nodded with a slight smile at the young fox woman. I am glad you are thinking Hinata and yes, I am having all the surveillance tapes checked from the last time the nurse checked Kiba until the time we discovered him dead. There are no cameras in the room, but there were at least two in the hallway leading to it. At that point, Naruto gripped the back of the couch so hard he tore part of it off and Tsunade, having enough of his antics shouted at him. Well spit it out what the hell is wrong with you? It was at this time that Tsunade got a feeling of dread as she noticed the usually quiet ice mistress was nowhere to be seen. Naruto opened his mouth to speak, but his eyes got big as he stuttered. I. I'm. Arg. The roar momentarily deafened everyone in the room, but most noticed Naruto's right eye wide open and his left eye partially closed and twitching, 
hands clamped down tightly on the back of the couch, and his body ramrod straight until he finally stopped yelling and sagged with a silly grin on his face. But even so it seemed to echo in the confines of the office over and over again. Tsunade jiggled a finger in her ear, and Hinata had turned bright red before she turned her head away and tried to stifle a giggle fit that threatened to come out. Hanabi had also turned bright red but buried her head in her sister's neck and on closer examination her shoulders could be seen shaking ever so slightly as Hinata rubbed her back. Inoichi had also blushed as he knew exactly what happened but could only close his eyes in pained silence and the lord of the Hyuga clan sighed and shook his head as he waited for the inevitable explosion. Tsunade knew or at least had a feeling of what had happened now, her realization cued by a zipper being pulled up. And would have let it go if Haku had not sat up from behind the couch, Naruto was standing behind and wiped her mouth with a grin and said in a childlike voice, I like the creamy filling. Don't know if anyone else remembers that, but it was from an early Twinkies commercial. Naruto immediately clamped a hand over Haku's mouth, too little too late, as Tsunade rose from her chair like a specter rising from the grave. Her finger stabbed out towards Naruto, and her face was a mask of barely restrained fury. Out. 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 She screamed as Hinata and Hanabi made it to the door first amidst a burst of giggles. Naruto grinned as he pulled Haku away, hands still over her mouth. Oh look at the time. Call me and we'll have lunch. He shouted as an empty sake cup, a paperweight, and finally Tsunade's chair followed the two who beat a hasty retreat through the door, just as the chair crashed and shattered against the frame. The ashy cleared his throat, Inoichi did the same, and then the two silently left the room, both stepping carefully over the chair's broken remains without a backward glance, in case Tsunade's anger was redirected at them. Tsunade after all was gone sat on the floor behind her desk, and ten minutes after all the excitement stopped, Shizun found her laughing hysterically in the same spot she had sat down in. Not sure what to think, the Hokage's apprentice blinked at her mentor. Lady Tsunade. Have you been to the sake again? Her call. But the frown Hinata nodded as she considered. It still seemed odd to her that someone went to all of this trouble, and yet there were no clues as to who might still be involved. Her father would do his best to root out the problem, and she was certain that they would too, but it seemed now that the trail was cold, and the colder it was, the less likely it would be to catch the culprit. Until they struck again. The ashy sat back with a weary sigh as the sun began going down on one of the strangest days of his life. While discovering the odd physiological traits of Naruto and his mates was both astonishing and interesting, the fact that none of them were embarrassed about public sex, especially Haku, really baked his noodle. Despite the day's oddities however, he was able to be productive and question a large number of clan members that had been out and about during that time, but none were anywhere near the hospital. He only had a few more to go, but to be honest, he didn't think it would be anyone in his clan. While well, he was positive there were another few who were part of the plan to eliminate Hinata, it didn't seem likely any of the clan could have killed Inuzuka Kiba. But then who could have been behind it? He wondered to himself. The chances of one person being behind this were astronomical, but whoever it was left no obvious trail and Hiashi well weary was becoming frustrated. While well, he didn't want to think of it, in truth he was sure more than Counselor Peck was involved. The question was who? Hexon was still out on a mission, so Hiashi would have to wait until he came back, but the rest of his family passed a high Ugali detector, the Byakugan, without even a twitch. Perhaps the Inuzuka. Hiashi said while still frowning. He knew full well that someone had to have used Sum's seal and forged her name, so the possibility was that someone was still active in her clan. But the motive escaped Hiashi completely. Why set his daughter up in this manner? Hinata while being the clan heir, and much stronger than when she first began her ninja career, was nothing special. But even at that rate. Hinata was no longer an official Hyuga. Her status as clan heir was removed after she had died. So why go after her? The Ashi couldn't make heads or tails of it and had to keep tossing it around in his mind until the steward came in with another member for questioning. He would ponder more on it later. In the meantime he still had work to perform. Naruto had helped Hinata and Hanabi in the kitchen with the dinner. While Haku in the pretext of helping would go back and forth sampling everything being prepared. No one minded. This was a usual thing for Haku. The meal wasn't anything extravagant, but it was well made and delicious as they all sat and talked about the day's events and what they should do next. At one point Hinata smirked at Naruto before she lifted her chopsticks to her lips and enjoyed another bite of the evening's rest. Naru-kun. I was wondering what you thought about our future. Naruto frowned as he chewed for a few moments before he shrugged his shoulders. What do you want from Hina-chan? The farthest I thought ahead was that we could run missions together. Although Haku would miss television. And at this point Haku rocked back and forth for a few seconds and mumbled Wapner. Definitely Wapner. 530 wheels of fortune. In a deadpan voice before she lowered her eyes and giggled. 
Naruto glared at Haku who responded with a quieter snicker, but went back to eating before he turned to a smirking Hinata. Hanabi blinked. Unsure of the reference before she turned back into her sister and her mate. What I meant by Narukan is related to that. But what if they send you on a special mission alone? I mean we can't go everywhere with you. Naruto slurped up a noodle and chewed on it before answering. Well what do you want to do? I mean you aren't a prisoner. I wouldn't want you to stay locked up in the house all day. Naruto took a sip of his water, then spit it across the room as Hinata asked. What if I want to have babies? Aku clapped her hands and responded with two different voices, holy cow, it's a high fly ball to deep center field. I don't know Harry, I don't think it's got the distance. Naruto thankfully ignored her as he wiped his chin and looked at his mate. Well um. Of course Hina-chan. But we haven't discussed this before. Hinata frowned sadly as she looked at him, and he could feel the negative emotion settling in. You. You don't want to have babies with me Naru-kun. Naruto shook his head quickly before he smiled at her. No, that isn't true Hina-chan. I do want to have children with you and Haku. But we have to think of the baby's comfort. And of course. Haku broke in because she was on a roll. Their baby's comfort begins with love. Love's diapers, she sang cutely. Just before she ducked with a giggle as a soup spoon flew over her head. Naruto continued to glare at where she ducked under the table before he turned back to Hinata. As I was saying, we have to be concerned for the baby's comfort. Right now we have someone or some people plotting against us. And for no obvious reason. We need to be prepared for whatever happens. And of course. Now the fox had to put his two cents in. Baka. If that's what you really thought you shouldn't have Kum inside of her the other night. Naruto frowned internally before he shrugged. Couldn't be helped. We didn't know about this until after Kiba's stupidity. Besides, maybe Hinata isn't. The fox chuckled as he inhaled deeply. You wish. Take a whiff. Naruto got a sinking feeling in his stomach as he did and noticed a distinct change in the air. Something that made him shiver before he grumbled, aw damn. Before Hinata could answer Hanabi broke in with a thought, saving Naruto from having to explain. Sister. Perhaps you can go work at the hospital like you used to. Naruto-kun's friend still works there and she has a genin team to take care of also. You were good with your medical skills before. I'm sure you still are and it will keep you busy if Naruto-kun has to go out alone. Hinata smiled and nodded at the thought, but then Naruto frowned slightly. What about Haku? She would be here by herself while we were gone. Well Haku has gotten much better for a lot of things, I don't know if we can leave her unsupervised. The sound of an angry yowl made all three turn and look at the fox girl who looked sheepish and lifted a fork up and pointed to it. It poked me. Despite her outrageous claim, Hinata noticed Haku seemed to have a look of anger in her eyes. While not understanding, she filed it in the back of her mind under Strange, where she had already been keeping some things she had to investigate. Before anyone could proceed further, the sounding board at the front gate alerted them to a visitor. While Naruto was tempted at first to blow it off, Hinata's arched eyebrow made him shrug sheepishly and creep towards the front door. And he would have opened it if Haku didn't start singing off-key. Someone's knocking at the door. Somebody's ringing the bell. Do me a favor. Open the door and let them in. Naruto's fist clenched an inch from the door and he grumbled loudly before he grasped the handle and stepped outside. Surprisingly, a young man in the robes of the Hyuga clan stood there and as Naruto got closer, he recognized him and growled lightly. Good evening. Kane wasn't it? The young man nodded before he got to business. Yes it is. Tell me is Hanabi here? Someone at the Hyuga compound said she was visiting her sister. Naruto frowned at the way the boy said sister. It was like he had a bad taste in his mouth and had to get it out. Exactly what Naruto didn't need this evening. I'll ask Hanabi if she wants to talk to you, but I'm telling you now if you plan on coming anywhere near my house, lose the attitude or don't bother. Naruto turned and walked back to the house, without waiting for a response, not noticing the sneer on the young Hayuga's face, as he stepped into the house and walked to the dining area. Hanabi. There's a guy named Kane at the front gate looking to speak with you. Hanabi's eyes widened and she shook her head negatively rather fast. Naruto was sure she was going to get whiplash from it. Tell him I crap. Tell him I'm dead. Naruto, Hinata, even Haku blinked at this before they frowned at her. Huh? I don't think that would work well with firecrackers. Hinata leaned over and rested her hand on Hanabi's shoulder. What is wrong sister? Hanabi looked at Hinata and actually almost clutched the hand on her shoulder, surprising Hinata. I I don't like him. He reminds me of how father was when you were young. Cold, brutal, unyielding. He reminds me of some of the villains I've read about in stories. He pretends he is trying to help, but he really is trying to get something from you or to lower your guard. Naruto frowned as he looked at Hanabi. Where do you know him from? Hanabi sighed as her shoulders lumped. There was a social gathering at the compound a couple months back. I met and talked to him there. 
He impressed me at first because he was very talented in the gentle fist, and our conversations were mostly about training and skills. But then he started talking to me about getting together, maybe even having a marriage contract made up. But I wasn't interested in him that way. So I stopped talking to him, but I never stopped being polite. You know. Not too friendly, not too mean. Naruto understood, and so did Hinata and Hanabi continued. Well it got to where I finally had to tell father so that he would back off. I don't know what he said to him, but I hadn't seen Kane for a while. So I wonder why he is here looking for me now. Naruto frowned in thought. I know what you mean. I had a run-in with a little prick while I was in wave with Haku. I thought I was going to have to kick his ass, but Sakura put him in his place before I had to get physical with him. Hanada, still frowning, leaned towards Naruto. Do you think it's possible he could be involved with what is going on? Naruto frowned as he glared back to the front door. I don't know for sure, Haim. But it might be possible. Hanabi blinked in surprise. Huh? That doesn't make sense. Why would he do such a thing? Naruto took a deep breath and let it out with a sigh. It's no secret how your clan regarded Hinata when she was still alive. If they thought they could get someone they could manipulate as heir, then they would be all for it. Hanabi shook her head, but Hinata answered with a hard edge to her voice. I was not weak. I didn't want to hurt people I cared about. Naruto nodded and stroked her hair with her ears a few times. I know him. And I wasn't calling you weak because I never thought you were weak. I am only remembering what I was told by Kakashi Sensei when I asked him. If they thought you were too weak to run the clan, then of course they would want to get rid of you. And if you are married to an outsider, you would have had to be with him, preventing you from taking your place as head of the Hyuga clan. Meaning Hanabi would have been named the heir and future clan leader, and you would have been branded with the caged bird seal. Hanada and Hanabi both blinked in surprise as the pieces began to fall together, but neither knew for sure if this was the case or not. Naruto frowned, but decided it was best to get rid of the little prick. Unfortunately when he looked out the door, there was no one at the front gate. Naruto blinked in confusion, then shrugged as he closed the front door. He wasn't sure what was going on, but he started to like it less and less. Hanei cursed quietly before he walked swiftly away from the special Jonin's house. He hadn't anticipated that Naruto would play intermediary between Hanabi and himself, so he couldn't do as he wanted. But it wasn't critical at this time. He knew he would have to complete what he was assigned, or he would have to hear it from the man who had orchestrated everything until now. If Hanabi was still at the estate, he could get her fairly easily, but with her in Naruto's protection as it were, and no one knowing the extent of the Namika's estate's defenses, he would have to wait until she was back in the compound. Or alone. While everything seemed like a perfect plan originally. With the death of Peck and the old Warhek in seclusion, he was basically running on previous orders. Not necessarily a bad thing since he worked well alone, but there were things he couldn't do on his own without backup, and right now he doesn't have any. And then the return of Hiashi's oldest daughter would have been an incredible setback, if not for the antiquated ideas of the Hyuga clan elders. As long as they were in charge they could continue manipulating things, and soon the only thing in their path would be smashed flat and paved over. But the grin he ducked into an alley and opened a secret entrance at the end, already anticipating what would come next. Most likely by tomorrow, it won't matter who tries to stop us. If things work like they are supposed to, no one will be able to stop us. And a new generation will be made stronger than the last. With an almost ridiculous sounding cackle, the Hyuga team journeyed deeper into the underground complex that housed the organization that wasn't supposed to exist. Anzo sat up in bed with a smirk as he looked down at the new arm that looked strong and healthy. Compared to the rest of him, the arm was obviously out of place, but even so it responded to his mental commands like it was supposed to, and he was almost giddy, as he could not wait to do what he had always longed to do. Visions of putting all the weaklings in charge of the village under his thumb, or in the worst cases beneath his heel, was what drove him now as he saw himself as being hailed stronger than the Yandane, smarter than his hated rival Saratobi, held better in all ways to any of the previous. In fact he could already attest to that because he was still alive while the others had met their demise. Of course the strongest and smartest was destined to be on top. Even if it did take time, Danzo had an incredible amount of patience for his plans to finally come to fruition. And the time was almost here. As you can see Danzo-sama, everything seems to have fused and healed well. You should have full control of the new limb with little or no problems. Now over the next few weeks as we tested. Danzo slashed his hand downward with a grimace as he turned to look at the doctor. A few weeks. I don't think so. The time to strike is now and everything feels fine. Waiting any longer would be a waste, and while I have been patient the entire time, it is now time to move ahead. The doctor blinked but nodded at the man. Of course Danzo-sama. It is as you command. However I respectfully think you should at least give it a few days of further testing, so that we can make sure there will be no adverse effects. 
Anzo swiped his hand down again, and the doctor stopped talking as the old Warhick stood from his bed. No. Everything will proceed as planned. The announcement of the Kaiubi Jinchuriki's ascension to the council will be tomorrow, and tomorrow, instead of the world bearing witness to that, they will bear witness to the birth of the new god of Shinobi. The doctor didn't quite frown, but it was enough that Danzo noticed and took offense at it. Slowly Danzo turned to look at the doctor, and he smiled before he flexed his hand into a fist, and a set of eyes opened on his arm, and a red flash of light made the doctor freeze and stare blankly at the old Warhawk. A few seconds afterwards in a dead voice the doctor mumbled. I understand and obey. With a slow precise movement the doctor picked up a scalpel on the instrument tray next to the bed and cut his own throat before he fell to the floor and bled out. Anzo smirked before he pulled a bathrobe on and left the room with a mumble. Perhaps you should have listened more and talked less. No one else was in the room, but the words were meant more for Danzo's amusement than to actually impart wisdom. For what wisdom can you impart on a corpse? Zoom's fist came down on the table very similarly to Tsunade's earlier outburst in the security office at the hospital. I know full damn well someone is involved in this, and I want answers. She glared around the room at some of the pack members that were not out on missions, and most would not meet her eyes. While there were no obvious guilty sense in the room, she was aware that someone had to know something about what was going on. All right then. We will do it the hard way since no one is willing to step forward. Soom wrapped her arms around her back and stalked the room glaring at everyone including Hana who while not guilty, was a little afraid of her mother. She had only seen her mother this angry a few times, and each time was a little harder to not flinch than the previous. This time would be no exception. Someone used my seal and forged my name on a marriage contract between my son Kiba and the Hayuga girl Hinata. That in itself is inexcusable. But the terms of the contract were as close to permission to rape without actually saying the words. Soom turned her back to the table and the small group of clan members before his voice lashed out at the room in general. What is the law? She said in a harsh bark which was immediately answered by all almost in unison. Do not take what isn't yours. Soom smiled as she turned around again and took everyone in. Indeed. That is as it has always been and shall always be. Yet someone tried to change that by giving Kiba permission to take the Hyuga air by force. I want to know why. She shouted and most of the members either whined or whimpered in a way as her kai washed over them until one brave member looked at her. Is it possible Kiba could have done this on his own? Zoom shook her head almost immediately at the member and growled out, Kiba was a lot of things. But I can tell you for sure that cleverness wasn't one of them. While I loved my son I knew well his faults, and I will be the first to say he wasn't the brightest lamp in the house. Some of the members chucked but most understood her jibe at her own flesh and blood. While Kiba had become strong physically, he was extremely hard-headed and often failed to look before he leapt as the saying went. After a few moments soon began again. While I understand some of you hesitate to speak out, let me remind you that this is not about individuality. It is about the whole. And what is the law of the pack? Most of them all answered again almost simultaneously. The pack first. Soom nodded again, a pleased smile spreading across her features. Indeed. So if that is the case. Who knows what is going on with this plot so that we can snuff it out at its source. No one stirred at first, but before she could speak again a single hand rose slightly from the table. Pack mother. I am not sure. But I may know something about what has happened. Soom looked at the girl who spoke up before she nodded at her. Then please child. Do not be afraid, enlighten us so that we may know the truth and how we can fix this. The girl nodded before she stood. I heard one time my father talking to another man. I didn't see who the other man was, but his voice was kind of deep. And maybe he sounded old. Anyway they were talking about some plan they had to finally be able to run the village the way it needed to be run. The girl shuffled her feet for a moment but stood firm as she looked into Tsum's eyes. I swear I don't know what they were talking about or what they planned and since nothing had happened between then and until recently I had forgotten most of it. Soon pinched a bridge of her nose and tried not to growl in exasperation. Wasn't your father the one that disappeared on that mission to demon country a month ago? The girl frowned but nodded affirmatively, which made Soom wish to call me that something would go right in this mess. All right. Thank you for that information. The girl in question sat back down again and Soom looked around the room. Does anyone else have anything to add? But no one raised their hands or volunteered anything she frowned again before she sat at the table herself. All right. I will call you all again when the time arises. If anything comes to mind or you find new information no matter how trivial, let me know immediately. The honor of the pack is at stake. The various members nodded and gave their affirmation before they quietly left the room leaving Tsum and Hana to brood. After a few minutes of silence Tsum looked at her daughter. The ones that accompanied the run to Naruto's house. Hana frowned before she shrugged. All of them were there because Kiba told them he might need help to fetch something of his that Naruto had. 
none were aware of what this thing was, only that Kiba was insistent to back up. There were rumors to be a few Hyuga there also, though I do not have confirmation of this yet. Tsum nodded as she scratched her claws against the table in thought. Hiashi will provide whatever information he could come up with. I just hope it is enough so that we can solve this. Someone has gone to a lot of trouble to wipe away the traces. Too many people are coming up missing, and now no one knows why or who is involved. We need answers. And we need them soon. I have a feeling this will get worse faster than any of us expect. Hana nodded quietly, and neither woman knew how right the Inuzuka matriarch was. Naruto frowned as he lay quietly in bed. A brief note to Hiashi gave them all the reason they needed to not let Hanabi out of their sight. Hiashi was unable to question Kinei as he had not returned to the Hyuga estate. In fact, he was supposed to be under house arrest pending a disciplinary hearing as to the events in Wave Country involving Naruto. But that tidbit of information, Hiashi asked Naruto if Hanabi could stay with them for a short while until this was all sorted out, and Naruto instantly agreed as he didn't want to see anything bad befall his mate's little sister. Unfortunately. Hiashi had drawn almost as much of a complete blank as the Inuzuka family had. It seemed besides Kanei, there was no one left that knew what was going on, meaning they dealt with someone who was paranoid as hell or knew the value of keeping conspirators silent. Whoever it was had left only a trail of bodies behind so that they couldn't get the answers they needed. With a deep breath and a sigh, Naruto looked at all three ladies who lay cuddled in bed with him. His precious ones. Hanada the maid he had always wanted and now had. Hanabi the cute little sister that while originally was abrasive, had grown on Naruto to where he thought of her often. And Haku who while driving him mad at times, loved him with a passion both physical and emotional which at times made the special shiver in pleasure. And groan in pain at others. At least she didn't tackle him anymore. At least not for a while anyway. While they didn't know what was going on, they knew that they would all stand firm against whatever was coming. They were family. And nothing would change that. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.